Why, hello. It's not my birthday, you goblins, I swear to God. It's not my, it's never my birthday. I was never even born. You'll never prove it. Not even once. Today is going to be insane. I have so many things to do today. My brain is mush. I've been awake for 12 hours. My day is just beginning now. There's so much to do. My god, there's so much to do. It's not my birthday. We know you have legs, that's a lie. You'll never prove it. The bottom half of me has never been rendered on stream. You'll never know what it is. I could be a squid down there. You don't even know. You don't even know. Playing Helldivers again? No. Not right now. Too much to do. Too much to do. I could be a squid centaur, that's true. I could be. I could be. That is true. A squid can be a centaur, chat. My bot sympathizer? No. We'll never prove it. It's like we figured out the new curse quest. No. Would a squid centaur have a spine? Hmm. Hmm. Ferret stream computer isn't strong enough to render legs. You don't know what I have in there. I could have put a like a Ford F-150 engine in that computer. You don't know. You don't know anything. That that computer could have 600 horsepower. Yeah. You don't, you don't know anything about it. You don't know anything at all? Yeah, I'm just gonna start choosing, like, car words. I don't know anything about cars. <laughs> Hundred streams straight! Jesus. That is outrageous. What did it give you? What did a hundred stream streak do? What did it give you? I need to know. How many channel points did it give you? 450 channel points? Jesus, that's so many even then. Carbonator? Yeah, yeah, your car's carbonator. Right? That's- it, it carbonates the car. No. It's not a carburetor, it's a carbonator, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could give people badges for reaching certain tiers of, of stream streaks. I wish you could have a chat badge. Six months in advance, thank you. It's very nice of you. I lost my streak due to the tourney. F. How am I doing? Doing good. I'm drinking something that isn't water, Chet. It's cursed, I know. House closing today? No. I wish. It's on the 11th now. It's not more st TV static, no. I'm drinking an Arnold Palmer. That's right. It's tea mixed with lemonade. Good. Yeah. A rarity. A rarity. Old man drink. Yeah, I'm drinking an entire adult man. No, not Lipton tea. No. Not Lipton tea. <laughs> Look, it's me. I exist. So, I, uh... Shay wanted all these energy drinks, because Shay drinks an energy drink every single day. 
And I decided, well, I'm going to get something weird because we're at 7-Eleven. And I was like, yeah, my hair's doing a thing. Well, I don't give a shit. Whatever it's doing. It's it's called liquid death. How could I not? Look how shiny it is. It's got like a skull all over. Like, why wouldn't I? Right? And it's called an armless Palmer instead of an Arnold Palmer. I have to, I had to drink it. I had to. And it's delicious. So I feel nothing about it. Also, also, it's only got six grams of sugar in the whole thing. So it's not even sweet, which is perfect because I hate, I hate sweet. Yeah. My hair's doing a thing. I don't give a shit about it. I don't give a shit about it. Liquid death is good, dude. Yeah, six whole grams in the entire thing. Most of the drinks, like, dude, I, I tried to get a freaking cranberry juice early today. I had 44 grams of sugar, and I was like, I'm not drinking that shit. Like, it's, it's, it's basically jello at that point, right? Yeah. Ugh. I don't know. I don't know why. It's way too many. It's way too much. Ovaltine is sweet. Ovaltine has a ton of biotin in it. That's why I drink that shit. The song gives me anxiety. Good. Because it's a combat song, and it should. Because that's its whole intention, is to make you anxious when you're fighting a dude. And you don't even know what dude that is yet, because it's not in the game. Soon it will be. It had caffeine. What had caffeine? This? No. No, this doesn't. It's got water and a gov nectar. I guess it's got a little caffeine, because it's got black tea. But it's not like an added ingredient. It's just part of tea. Yeah, no, 44 grams of sugar is freaking nuts, dude. Ugh. Too much hair. I have hair, and it's dry, so it's staticky. Early stream? Yeah, this is the new time. I'm actually starting stuff up. So, today, I have to leave at exactly 9 a.m. At 6 a.m., we're doing a sponsored stream for two hours. So, I'm going to be playing at least two to three hours, right? I may do the sponsored stream a little bit earlier. A little bit so I can get like four hours in because I like I like that the sponsored stream segments are only supposed to be for two hours but I'm gonna be real with you if somebody's paying me money to play their game I generally want to give it a little bit more time than that because two hours is not a lot of time so I like to play it for like longer so I might start it at like 5 a.m and just play it you know for four hours and do that thing so I might do that I might do that then however the uh the game is gonna be stolen realm it's right here it's already there and um after that, I have to go because the house is a problem now. Because somebody didn't do their job, and I don't know who it is yet, but I will find out. And now the closing doesn't happen until the 11th. And on top of it, the seller is enraged. And because the seller is enraged, for every day, for every 24 hours past the 11th that we don't close, they're fining me $750. Which means we're not going past the 11th. And I'm going to shit on somebody's desk to make sure that we don't go past the 11th. Because, my God, I am mad. It is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know who screwed up, but I'm going to find out. I'm mad about it. And that's, that's the day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they're doing that, but they're mad. They're pissed. Yeah, they can't do it. Yeah. Let's go on with the house. It was supposed to close today, and I'm pretty sure it's a lender screwed up. Pretty sure it's a lender at this point. We're going to find out. Somebody screwed up, and I'm mad about it. I'm gonna flip a grunt, dude. <laughs> yeah, flip a grunt. What the hell happened? Idiocy. Basically, basically, I signed all the paperwork. I turned it on. Here's what it is. I'm a streamer. No matter how much money you make as a streamer, no matter how well you do, th the bank goes, what the shit is all, what? Where's your 1099? I'm like, dude, I don't have, where's your W2? I don't have that shit either. Like, I'm I'm a streamer. All my money comes from weird locations. They're like, are you a drug dealer? And I'm like, I'm not a drug dealer. And they're like, prove you don't work for the cartel. And I'm like, I can't. So I had to give them all this weird paperwork. I had to do this thing called sourcing where you have to like prove that you're not a drug dealer a million different ways. And they're like, what about this little, where did you get this dollar? I found it on the street. No, you didn't. That's from the cartel. And like, you have to keep doing this over and over again for like ever, for every transaction that's ever existed the last seven years of your life, basically. And it's just, God, it's, oh God damn it. It's so annoying. So I had to do that. And then finally they're like, all right, we're going to approve the loan, but we're going to screw it up right at the end. So then you're going to get the seller angry at you and it's going to be your fault somehow. And that's that's my life right now. That's... Yeah. 
It's not good. It's not good. What is this? Would you say work emails are turn-based combat? Email is turn-based combat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Email is 100% turn-based combat. You know when email is the most turn-based combat? Is when you are actually like a freelancer and you're trying to fight with your commissioner to get money. That's, that's turn-based combat right there. That's what it is. That's 100% that. I used to do that shit. It's horrifying. Talking is turn-based combat? No, it's not. You can yell over each other. That's just PvP, dude. That's live-action PvP. Email is turn-based. You've got mail. Roll for initiative. No, whoever sends it first gets initiative, dude. Are they you selling the demo to launder your drug money? Oh my god, dude. No. That's really all it is, though. Is like... Streaming is such an odd thing for revenue. Because... Like, when you, when you run your own business, right? You end up getting a lot of different sources of income. Like, there's stuff from the merch store. There's stuff from, like, YouTube. There's stuff from Twitch. There's stuff from Discord. There's, like, all these little tiny places all over the place. And anytime that's going on, the bank goes, What the hell are you? And I'm like, I make things on the internet. And they're like, What does that mean? I come from a time before the internet when we all did things on typewriters. And I go, you're, t you're too old to understand the economy, old man. Just, just let me buy the house. <laughs> That's basically what happens now. And I've talked to other streamers about this and they're like, yeah, it's the same. It's the same for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. The bank is old. The bank is too old. Yeah. The future is now old man. So I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Also cool update. Uh, the corporation exists. I now own 10,000 shares in a company in which I am the CEO, the secretary, the director, and uh, there's a lot of titles. I have them all now. They're all me. Um, it's weird. Yeah, the Thorporation is real. I sent out a an announcement to the moderators. We're going to be hiring five of them on full-time to start with, so that's going to be a thing. And I sent out the announcements for that. I need them to respond. Moderators, you have to respond. And uh, the, yeah, I multiclassed into, oh, God. I multiclassed in the corpo tree. I screwed that up. I can't. How do I take my points out? <laughs> I don't, don't want to have my points in that. It's too late. It's, I've already put them in. It's, there's no there's no reroll, is there? It's just... I can't respec it. I, I can't find the tree to respec. Where's the button? They forgot to put the button in, chat. The devs haven't... The devs haven't put in respec yet. Can I respec in the middle of a forest? Can I do that? Just run away into the forest? Is that... That's an option, right? Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> Poor UI design. Not okay. You specced into Corpo back in Eve. True. Hmm. Actually, odd thing. Everything that I signed, I signed a ton of paperwork. Everything that I signed in there, all of it was from Eve. Every single thing that I did to build the corporation, all of it is Eve Online. It's exactly the same. And even online, when you build a corporation, which is like a guild, you have to give yourself your own, like, stock so that no one else can take it away from you. It's the same. That's exactly what happened. I own the stock in the company that is me. But the company is not me. It's a different person that is legally distinct from me that has its own bank accounts that I'm not allowed to touch. But when I do touch them, I have to say that I'm on behalf of the company giving my money to me. Or the IRS removes my organs, right? That's kind of how that works. Yep. Ah, <laughs> oh, corporate. It's a nightmare. Legally distinct entity. Yeah, it is. It is actually a legally distinct entity. The corporation is treated as a person. What are you talking about? Running a corporation. It's a nightmare. There's two things in life that you have to remember. All right, Chet, there's two things. You can't outrun the IRS, and it's always DNS. That's Those are the two golden rules in life. N you can't outrun the IRS, and it's always DNS. That's it. That's what it is. Inter internal organ removal service, yes. When it's BGP, that's just DNS plus, and you know it. 
What is DNS? It's always the IRS? Yeah. Is the IRS a DNS? I would say yes. For your money. Yeah. You're early. I am starting at a new time. As per the announcement. You can outrun DNS? I don't think you can. I don't think that's true. I feel like you can't outrun DNS. Do you think subs? I try to. There are just so many of you that I try to do it mostly when somebody gifts like five or more because there are so many, dude. Like, you have to understand, within the last minute, there were 14. I cannot... I would I would just be saying thank you the whole time. I do I do everything like... There's another one. I, I could do every... There's so many. <laughs> That's... I do everything I possibly can. Also, uh, whenever you guys do over 500 bits or more, it goes into the queue. Which there's already 20 in the queue. Which means I need to hit this button. And then it eats it. The Great Goddess Freya has obtained the Cursed Quest. And then we have to give the Cursed Quest to the Great Goddess Freya, because you were the first one. Congratulations. Answer TTS. Great Goddess Freya. Uh... Oh man, Rebel Ross is playing Democracy right now. And he invited me to go play. I could be in Democracy mode right now, but I have so many things to do. I hit level 50, by the way. He does respond? I always respond. Absolutely. I do as much as I... Like, I'm going to be real with you. By the end of the stream, there's going to be about 10,000 people in here, and there's going to be another 2,000 over on YouTube. That's usually every single day. I try everything I possibly can to respond to as many people as possible. It is impossible to do everything. It is impossible. But I will always try my best for you guys. Always. It is insanely hard to do. There are so many people. So don't be upset if I, I miss you. I'm not ignoring you. I promise. It's just a lot of people. So much for democracy. Dude, I love democracy. So also, I actually put out a tweet summing up my, my irritation from the other day. Because I was pretty mad at the game. I was actually really upset at Helldivers 2. It broke the spell on me a little bit, which was like, I didn't want to play the game. I didn't want to play it. So I was pretty irritated playing the game after the recent changes, but this event is a very nice addition. Unlocking new content through special community events is always a huge plus in my book. It was actually awesome. This is a really cool event. What they did was they actually had one of the planets get taken over by robots, and when you take it back over, we're going to get our awesome robot mechs, right? Cool as shit. Really awesome event. Love that. I think that's a fantastic way to introduce new content. I think it's a brilliant way for them to do this. Awesome. Really good job. Then everyone was like, you're an idiot. You, the meta breaking is wonderful. You you must be like a railgun user. And I was like, shut up. You're dumb. So for all the people in the comments talking about meta breaking being a good thing and that I'm wrong, I don't use the railgun and I'm not irritated by that change. The change to armor did not unlock additional gameplay options. Heavy armor has an insane lack of mobility, which absolutely outweighs the bonus to survivability in all scenarios outside of defense missions during high-difficulty play. This leads to a new meta in Helldiver difficulty, which is essentially use light armor, run in a circle, cast stratagems. My hope was that the armor fix would unlock new gameplay, not enforce a boring meta like this. Also, as cool as the flamethrower chart changes are, the fantasy of that weapon doesn't come through for me. Normally, I would see a flamethrower as a chaff remover, yet it doesn't stagger hunters, a.k.a. hunters turn into fireballs that leap on you. This isn't great feeling. And finally, there's a bunch of sane people in the comments going, hey, you're right. <laughs> They're going to do something about all the heavy spawns? There's so many heavy spawns. Ridiculous. Did you see how antagonistic some of the devs were about the update? I'm not surprised. Um... There's a lot of really vitriolic responses in the Helldivers community. They they made a game that's very difficult, right? When you have a lot of difficult gameplay, you get a lot more toxicity a lot of the times. You you do. Like that's that's usually how that goes. Sweaty game means sweaty player. Sweaty player largely lends itself to toxic player. This happens a lot, right? This is a pretty normal thing. You're not going to get that level of toxicity in say Palia for instance, because it's not a sweaty game, right? League of Legends, however, very sweaty. Very toxic. Happens. Happens a lot. Pretty normal. So, kind of sweaty gameplay at the end game there. Toxicity is kind of, you know, normal there. Which is why I was trying to be like, I don't like this. Here are the constructive reasons that I don't like this. Please do something about this, right? And it, as long as you are doing that, where you're communicating with developers in a way that is sane you'll likely see better results. And on top of it, 
I want to set the tone for how to do this in a way that's like, I am bothered as a player. Here is why I am bothered as a player. Please pay attention to this, right? And if I can set that kind of a standard of communication, I'm hoping other people will mimic it, and then we'll have better developer-player relations across the industry, right? Even just in a small way, as much as we can possibly do. Make sure an actual YouTube video on it. I might. I might do that. Or I might just keep tweeting on the internet, you know? And telling you guys about it live. Was the level 10 at the top? What is the level 10? Level 10? What level 10? What? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Was that the wake-up timer? Maybe. That might have my, my alarm to say, get out of bed. Oh, the hype train. Yeah, that's the hype train, my dude. Yeah, that. Holy shit, it's level 10. Wait a minute. There you go. No, it's a, it's a real hype train. That's actually a hype train going on. So, you didn't realize this, but... I made a new UI, and that UI is specifically the hype train, so you don't have to rely on Twitch's UI anymore. Hmm. How toxic did Eve get? I'm going to be very clear with you. Um, anybody that is trying to use out-of-game, real-world information to try and get us an advantage in Ashes of Creation, I will remove you from the community instantly. And so will any of the moderators, so will the entire Ministry of Truth. It is absolutely not allowed. And the, one of the biggest things that happened in EVE Online was toxicity that stemmed from, I'm going to use real-life information, doxing these other players to be able to get an in-game advantage. If that ever happens inside of our guild, not only will I remove you, I will report you to the developers and ensure that you get banned. End of. It's one thing I do not want coming from EVE. Fifty gifted subs, my god, dude. Noah, thank you very much. Oh, love the song. Wait, context? Sure. A long time ago, there was an EVE Online player that wanted to win in an engagement. They chose the FC of an enemy corporation, and the way that they handled this to try and get that enemy corporation to not have their fleet commander, which is like a, a raid leader, uh, on the field was they dressed up as a construction worker, went to the guy's house, and cut the power to his home right before the engagement. This is not an isolated incident. EVE Online is some wild shit. Yeah. Welcome to EVE. Which is why I have these harsh rules. Because people are insane. I beg your finest pardon. You can't handle my finest pardon. <laughs> yeah, no, people are nuts. They're, they're scary as shit. So, I don't allow any of that kind of behavior inside of the guild. We've actually already removed people from the guild for starting that kind of behavior. And I knew it was going to happen. We have no tolerance for it. Yeah, it's a legit crime, yes. Why stream early? New hours. Starting at midnight, ending at noon. Except for today, starting at midnight, ending at 9 a.m. Love this song. <sighs> also, I have a cool announcement. You guys ready for this? You guys ready for this? Mm hmm? I'm doing something really cool going forward. Check this out. So SideQuest Media, the people that I work with that help me with all the business management stuff and all the sponsorship related stuff, they are going to GDC. At GDC, they're going to be talking to indies and I'm going to be showcasing indies on the stream. If you are an indie developer and you're going to GDC, reach out to them. So this is something that I've wanted to do for a while. They're going to facilitate it. So I'm going to send you guys this tweet. Please spread that around. It's a really cool thing. I want to use this very large platform of goblins and help indie developers out. I think it's something really important. I think it's something I'm, I'm going to be very excited to do. So, yeah. Yeah. My body is composed of 98% silver Doritos. That's true. What's been the highlight of everyone's day? You. Now what are you going to do? Now you're over there on the other side of the computer blushing. 
That's right. It's true. It's true. What am I drinking? Liquid death. It's an armless palmer. Yeah, I never have things like this. And it's only got six grams of sugar. Because it's only sweetened with agave nectar. So it's like super low sugar lemonade and tea. Which is nice. And it comes in a metal can, which I don't like plastic, so I'm happy with this. Isn't that coffee? No. No, no, no. It's tea and lemonade. Armless. That's correct. It's an armless palmer from Liquid Death. It's got a cool skull on it. It's almost gone, too. Do you drink coffee? No. Mmm. Fantastic. Metal will be lined with plastic. You're lined with plastic. Actually accurate and horrifying. Yeah. It's a mana potion. It is. I'm casting wizard magic. The peach one is really good. I only had the, the lime one. I used to drink lime one all the time. It's really nice. I wonder if I can get liquid death. It's just kind of good. The armless palmer ones are good. They just taste tasty. That's about it. How do you palm with the arms? Don't worry about it. Secret. Stop casting wizard magic. I don't have any counter spells. Would you like a counter spell? Here, I have something for you. Ready for this? Just wait for it. Here, wait, wait. I got it. I got to make sure to tap all of these. One sec. There's two. I've tapped. I've been playing these throughout the stream. You didn't know about it. And I'm tapping them. There's all four of them tapped, right? And the there's your counter spell. That's for you. That's for you. There it is. That's right. That's for you. Of course I'm a blue player. What do you... You think the social engineer wouldn't be a blue player? Please. You know what my job is? Playing Magic the Gathering? It's making sure you don't get to play Magic the Gathering. That's... That's what I do. That's the only thing I do. I don't even have to put anything on the board. I just have to stop you from putting things on the board. That's my job. My job is to ruin your game. Even if you win, it will be a hollow victory. One in which you hate it to get. Gotta love blue. It goes against your game dev standards? Ruining your game for me is hilarious. My objective when playing blue is to remove your ability to play the game. That's it. That's the whole objective. I hate blue and I love red. That's fine. Everyone hates blue. And I'm fine with that. The moment they see the island go down, they're like, oh. Why? That's a lot of... That's... Hold up. Wait a minute. That was a lot of subs over that train. 113 gift subs and 12,744 bits. You guys are outrageous. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. You are awesome. I don't... <laughs> you guys do this all the time and it blows me away. So thank you. Seriously. It's outrageous. You guys are outrageous. I'm going to switch back to the normal music now. We're going to get avocado. Oh. Outrageous thing. Try Gale's redirection. The moment you say Gale, I think of a man who eats magic items and if you don't feed him, he explodes, killing everyone in the universe. It's great. Thank you, BG3, for ruining the word. <sighs> I hate that dumb wizard. All he does is explode. Give any insight as to why games take so long to get transferred from console to PC? It is incredibly expensive to port a game. And sometimes it is much harder than you would think for control methods. Depends on what you're making. It absolutely depends on what it is that you're making. Oh, what was I doing? There was a thing that I was working on. This is done. We don't have to care about that. We don't need armor contents for this. I think Jake did something. Did Jake do something? Let me go look.
And yeah, yeah, I heard about Akira Toriyama. That's very sad. Very sudden, very sad. And, uh, that sucks. Really sucks. Everybody I know is very upset about it. I know... I know many, many different people inside of the, the animation industry and the gaming industry, and that was a shock to everyone. So it's very sad. Really, really sad and shitty. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's anything more to say about it, frankly. Yeah, it, his, his work really has. Yep. That's really sad. He changed the game, he did. World will miss him. But something about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the ads to be over, actually. I'm gonna wait for this. How the ferret's doing? Fantastic. The booze crew free? They're not yet. Soon. Shay is feeding Henry. Also, Henry did have a double ear infection. Not just one ear. Both of his ears are so infected that it traveled to middle and inner ear. We were right. It's a full ear infection in both ears. Thor angry. Yeah, double. Both of them. Yep. He's had them so long that he's developed what appears to be neurological symptoms as a result. Because his vet didn't check his ears. Anything in the cat on the yeah, the CT scan? Yep, that's exactly what it found. My anger for the vet is enormous. Can you give me some Thorporation shares? No. All of them are securely within my mind wallet because shares are meaningless things do not exist in real space yeah not a tumor so yeah now henry henry the ferret does not have a tumor in his brain he has uh two inner and middle ear infections he also had an outer ear infection on both ears he underwent uh cleaning for both of them today with a what is it? it's like a, a liquid that they used to melt all the wax out it was horrific like it was horrific really gross so it basically means that the vet was a dumb piece of shit there's no other way to put it frankly where they went directly to it's probably a brain tumor instead of checking the damn thing's ears you know the basic things that you do as a proper veterinary so that's cool that's fantastic um likely brought on by extreme mite infestation in the ears leading to this and it would have to take his whole life basically from about six months to two years now it would have to have been an infection that was there the entire time for it to progress to this level um they did say the owners did say that he was always a little wiggly a little wobbly and that you know they thought he was just like that so no no if, if your if your pet is a little wobbly there's something wrong <laughs> so there's that and then also there's the vet that just didn't look at the animal in any sane kind of way. Which is neat. So yeah, I'm a little mad. I'm a little angry about that. But um, he's getting the care that he needs now. He will be okay. The biggest concern that I have is we are working on fixing all of this. He has to be on heavy antibiotics throughout it. And he's very thin. He's having trouble with uh, body heat, so we're trying to fix that at the same time. And he's so wobbly that he's a danger to himself when moving around on his own. So we've got him in his own kind of padded room sort of a thing uh, for his enclosure, and he runs in a circle and just bashes his head on everything in the nearby area. 
Uh, he was also doing something called head pressing, which is they take their head and they smush it against a wall, and this can cause damage to themselves, so we had to give him a padded room for that too. He was doing this because he's got an insane headache because his ears are so bad, right? But basically, he's he's completely deaf right now. I don't know if he will recover in that regard, but my hope is that the, the neurological style symptoms go away when his inner and middle ears clear up, and it's going to take a while. So heavy antibiotics... Um, we may have to, we may have to, uh, anesthetize him, anesthetize him. So put him under anesthesia and then do like a cleaning thing for him as well on top of everything. Cause he's just so wiggly, right? So it's, it's a lot of shit. It's a lot. Pain will go away, right? Yes. Um, it's just, it's an inner and middle ear infection. So you can't just, you can't just fix that. You can't just pull stuff out of it, right? It's, it's internal to the structure of the ear so with that in mind it's going to be a lot of antibiotics and other stuff there it's, it's going to take a long time right it's going to take weeks maybe months to fix all of this um is cat or noodle cat so one of the ferrets in the rescue so for those who don't know i actually run a ferret rescue here in washington state with shay shay does all the medical side stuff and i do the research and nutrition side stuff for the ferrets and we have 33 ferrets in the rescue we're trying to scale it up to 100 ferrets which is why i'm buying the new house so we can make it larger right his balance is just shot at the moment. Yeah, he he only turns left most of the time because his the inner ear uh, works with balance, right? So because he's got an ear infection in both inner ears, the, the the dude's got no balance. He doesn't even know where he's going. He's unaware of the direction that his body is moving, and he just you know like just in a bad bad way, right? He's not an ambi turner. No, not really. Sometimes he'll turn right, but it's not normal, and he. He's so excited to do things. He's so excited to move that he just goes well bumping into everything. And so we have to put him in a little padded box. But basically we got him his own little own little carrier thing, his own little padded room thing. And uh, he just runs in a circle. And sometimes he gets stuck on stuff and we have to help him, you know. He's only two years old. He's a little guy, you know. So it's, it's we're trying to fix that, right? He's super strong spirited. The, last night I actually had to... I had to take him into a little bed and then put him on my chest and then hold him because he was so cold because his his body has lost a ton of weight because the infection is actually like ravaging the shit out of him. And I just had to hold him so that he wouldn't get too cold because he would have died, right? So like, yeah, I just laid down and just did that for like two hours because dude's got to have the heat. So we've got him a little heat pad now to try and fix that as well. And we have to create a gradient inside of his environment so he doesn't overheat. And there's just all kinds of stuff. It's super shit. Like, it's really bad. And I'm, I'm very angry at the veterinary for not catching this, I don't know, over the last year and a half of his life. And it's a basic check. So it's like rather insane, frankly. His blood work is fine, but his um, neutrophils are quite high. Not dim high, but I am like, he's fighting infection over his whole body. So when you have a long standing infection like that, that's gone to that extent, it's spreading into other areas, right? So, like, he's under antibiotics, he's got all this stuff going on, and, like, that's everything that's happening, right? No, not sepsis. It is not sepsis. It is just his body is fighting heavily against this. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Will he recover? We think so. We think he will recover, right? We 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 know the full route of everything that's gone wrong. We know what's happening here. And now, now it's a matter of, was it caught in time to save him, right? And... Yeah, if you're wondering what it looks like, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when a ferret has an issue like this, just so you can understand. And it's a, it's, it's a little sad, but this is, as you can see, he runs in a circle, right? This is back before we understood what was going on, but that's what it is. So he just runs in a circle because he can't control his balance and he's not sure of the direction that he's going, right? He is. He's super skin and bones, but like, he's so active. Like, look how fast he's going. And he just doesn't understand. Yeah, his tail is just going in random directions because he doesn't he doesn't know what's happening. And this is what happens when they have that. And it was either when you see something like this, first thought is neurological. You think it's a brain issue, right? Second thought is ear infection. They didn't check for the ear infection. They just went, oh, it's probably brain cancer. It's probably a brain tumor. <laughs> it didn't do anything. <laughs> so they never checked they never checked the basic thing which is like what are his ears like oh his ears are full of like a mile of garbage <sighs> insane to me yep bet you that quick for money oh i'm well aware 
it's pretty good when you fire your own vet. You're like, nope, not working with you ever again. And it's, let me tell you, it's a financial detriment to these companies when this kind of a thing happens because we run a rescue with 33 ferrets and they're never getting my business again. Ever. 100% fired. You have the scan pictures? I don't have them. Shay does. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that vet is Chad MD. I'm so thankful I'm friends with my vet. And just text him and be like, is this normal? Yeah. Early stream? Yeah, we're starting at, at midnight now. Justify that's big, big miss. It is, because it's such an easy one, man. It's such an easy one, and it's wild to me. Have you tried Dark and Darker? Yeah, I don't like it. And it's not because the game is bad. It's because I don't like the gameplay. I think the animations are really slow. It's just not my thing. That's all. You ever go to TwitchCon? Yeah, I'm actually planning to go to both TwitchCons this year. It's like a whole thing. Yeah, it's not my style. Was this vet at Shay's practice? No. No. It was an entire other company. And it was an emergency vet. Exotic vet. And it took a long time to get there because it's like an hour away. Yeah, if you're talking about the TwitchCon in the Netherlands, yes, I am going to that. No, dipshit vet is not my normal vet. Nope. How do you like No Man's Sky? I think it's a much better game than when it launched, but I don't forgive them for li to lying to the community at launch, and I'm waiting to see if Light No Fire, their next game, suffers the same fate. If they lie to us again, I will never play anything from Hello Games ever again. If they don't lie to us again, then they've proven that they, they learned from their mistake and won't do it again, and I'm fine with that. How's the new wave losing on? Doing good. They're doing good right now. Do you have a replacement vet? Yeah. No, we're fine. Waiting on this to load up. Kabam! Whoop. Whoop. Do you like Warhammer 40k? I love Warhammer 40k the most. And also, if you want to make a Warhammer 40k fan mad, just call it Warhammer 40,000. Just do that. Oh, do you play Warhammer 40,000? Makes him mad. Makes him so mad. Warhammer 401k, because you got to take money out of your 401k to get the minis, right? Right? <laughs> like, I don't know. I love Warhammer, dude. One of the things I actually really like about Helldivers is I feel like, like a low-tier dude in Warhammer. I'm just out there in the field. I'm I'm pretty much expendable shit, right? You know. I love it. So like Warhammer Guardsman, dude. Yeah. I just feel like a garbage guardsman in the Warhammer universe. Warhammer 40. It's very funny. I'm building Warhammer at the moment, nice. You tried Rogue Trader? No, I haven't tried Rogue Trader, and I haven't tried Bolt Gun or whatever it is. I, I played a shitload of uh, Dark Tide. Shitload of Dark Tide. I played Vermin Tide a lot before that too. What is this, Mystic Nemesis? The ten gifted subs. Thank you. That's very nice of you. You're awesome, dude. Was Dark Tide good? Yeah, I like Dark Tide a lot. I play a Psyker, um, so that they can, you know, eventually feed me to the Emperor. But uh, they haven't, they haven't done that yet, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean eventually? Well, you know, like the psychers in Dark Tide are allowed to go on and like do stuff and it's fine and then eventually they feed you to the Emperor when you when you're ripe or whatever. I'm not ripe yet, so it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing voice acting or narration? I've done a little bit of that for funsies. We've had some fun with it. Let's see 500 kilograms of democracy. I do like 500 kilograms of democracy. That is very fun. I do enjoy that. Also, I've gotten dramatically better at the game. I don't know how many of you guys saw me on Iron Mouse's stream today. I was playing on Iron Mouse's stream for a little bit today. I wasn't streaming over here, but I was on I was on Iron Mouse's stream. And uh, I've gotten a lot better. A lot better at, at the game. A lot. And um, 
I'm basically unkillable, and I also know how to... Yeah, I carry hard now. Super, super carry hard now. So one of the things that I learned that I can do is wear the scout armor, run around the map, and pick up every single one of the little gray objective things, little bonus ones. I have 960 super credits just from picking them up in the game. <laughs> That's just from finding them over the last, like, three days. So, I I am doing that. Yeah. And Helldivers, yeah. What are we supposed to do with credits? Uh, so, super credits are used for the, the like, the real money store. That's, that's me getting real money currency for playing the game well. Yeah. What do we do with samples? Use samples to upgrade your stuff permanently. There's passives on your ship. Greetings from Italy. What's up? What's up? Cheater? No, it's not a cheater. It's not a cheating thing. That's you playing the game well. That has n there's no cheating there at all. Optimizing your gameplay is a part of that. 100%. Favorite Warhammer 40k faction? Orcs. I, I think the reason why is because they're actually a fungus. And also they're a wish machine. So, if you... If you don't know about orcs in the Warhammer 40k universe, something that's really ridiculous about this is orcs are actually like an extremely psychic race. And the reason why they're so interesting to me is because if you get enough orcs in an area and they all believe something together, it becomes real. Which is really interesting to me. So what you could do is you could actually get a whole bunch of orcs together and put them in a box and then put on like a screen... And then that screen is like their leader or their god or anything like that and make them like the god is like, I, this thing is real now. And then you've created a wish machine. Because if they all believe it, then it becomes real. So like if you take your fingers and you go bang, 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 and they actually think that it's a gun, they will actually die. Because they believe that they've been shot and they die. This has actually happened in Warhammer 40k lore before. Yes, that's real. That's a real thing. So orcs are wish generators. If they be they're idiots, but if they believe something, it becomes real, which is hilarious to me. So I actually really like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. If it's yellow, it blows up bigger. If it's red, it goes faster. They believe those things, so they actually paint their missiles with yellow. And if they if they paint the missile with yellow, it really will explode larger because it's it's yellow now, which is Really dumb. If they believe something is a bomb, it is now actually a bomb, too. And in fact, they've even found, like, some of their machinery. And they found the machinery, and they're like, none of this makes sense. How does this even work? It works because they believe it works. Because they're incredibly psychic beings. They're just dumbasses. Which is my favorite. I, I, I love that idea. It's just so absurd. And also, they, they reproduce, like, fungus, which is weird. Orc spores. Orc spores. I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah, they're weird, man. Are we going to see in democracy today? Maybe. I've got limited time today. Yeah, no, I, I actually, I really like the orcs. I think they're very fun. I think it's it's really interesting design, and it adds it adds to the universe in a in a jokey, silly kind of way, but also in a oh god, that's if you really think about it for a moment, it's horrifying, right? Like it's actually a terrifying thing. Yeah. Your mic is peaking? You're peaking. Yeah. It's because I'm yelling. I'm just yelling at the microphone. That's all. Wand and rot. Grandfather waits us in there. No, you Nurgle supporter. I'm on to you. But on Necrons and Tyranids, what about them? I like orcs. You know, I'm going to be real with you. If all the orcs believed that there were no Necrons in the universe, there wouldn't be. Which one do you think is going to win? All I got to do, all I have to do, is convince the orcs that all the Necrons died. That's all I have to do. Just once. And it's over. Yeah. It's pretty easy. Orcs are dumb, dude. Streamers early, starting at midnight now. Going forward. I actually need to update the schedule. I'm going to do that right now. You have to convince one orc of this? No, the more that you convince, the more powerful the wish becomes, basically. Orcs would be a disaster with conspiracy theories? I, I think it's kind of funny, because at that point, you just have... 
you have like any conspiracy would be real. The orcs would make the Mothman real. Yeah. Why do you start so early late? I don't know, because I do. <laughs> it used to be for the analytics. Now it's just because I do. The Mothman is real? Maybe he is. Maybe the Mothman is actually real. Maybe if we convince the orcs, he'll be even more real. I could convince the orcs that you're the Mothman. And then you would actually be a Mothman. Actually. Yeah. What if, what if I convince the orcs that the Earth is actually a cube? It would be. Cube Earth is real. I wish to be Moth. You know, I'm okay with this. I'd be a Moth, you know? I'm fine with becoming a Moth. Oh, I can't believe you guys are getting these 90 streak... Feldy with a 90. My god. That's so long. Alright, let's see here. Uh, what was I doing? There was something I needed to do. Oh, yeah. Updating the schedule. Where's my schedule? Where did it go? There's a schedule thing on the Twitch, and I don't know where it went. I have no idea. Stream. Channel? Found it. Schedule. I need to update this. Yes. For 12 hours. Save changes. We're updating it every day. I'm updating it all. I'm updating it all, chat. It's happening. So, the new schedule is now 12 hours a day. Every day except for Thursday. Starting at midnight. From midnight to noon. Every day but Thursday. That is how I'm going to stream from now on. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. However, today, it's ending at 9 a.m. Was it always 12 hours? Most of the time, yeah. Can you handle that? I've kind of already been doing it. <laughs> Nothing has really changed. I'm just putting it on paper now. Isn't that a little much? Go look at my schedule for the last, I don't know, seven years. You'll find it's basically the same. I'm just now making it official. Yeah. So I'm doing an official time block that is half the day every day. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I used to do 24-hour streams quite a lot. Yeah, it's been like that forever. Yeah, just people are, people are just now finding out, right? What time zone, though? Uh, PST. It's all going to be in PST. So I'm actually setting up the schedule right now for this. The, um, the Wednesday, Wednesday game stream. You know, I don't know how to spell Wednesday without saying Wednesday. I don't know why. I have no idea how to spell shit unless I say it weird. Yeah, same. I feel it. Okay. Alright, I'm doing it. I'm changing the schedule, Chet. It's happening. Yeah, the idea is that I do 12 hours a day, every day, except for Thursday. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to hit as many times as is possible. Also, I realized something. I like streaming a lot. I, I really do. I, I haven't really found a lot of other streamers that like doing this as much as me. The only other person that I know that does is Iron Mouse. That's pretty much it. Like, out of everybody else, Esfin too. You know, it's, it's like me, Iron Mouse, and es Esfin. People that just stream like 10 hours plus regularly, you know? There's not that many people that do. No, no, like like 10 to 12 hours a day. Like six days a week. No one does that. And I like doing that. That's just kind of what it is. Does XUC do that? Let me go look. 
I actually don't know how often he streams. Is he also a stream mutant? Let's find out. No. No. He streams, like, a lot of these are, like, five hour, six hour, four hour, two hour, three hour. Yeah, I'm talking, like, 10 to 12 hours. I'm talking, like, 10 to 12, like, actually 10 to 12 hours. 12 hours is rookie numbers? Oh. He's on kick a lot? Oh, yeah, I won't stream on kick. I won't be doing that. He goes to kick halfway through? Okay, that makes more sense. That's why I was confused. It's like, that's on. Thursday. Do you guys want to know what I did for my Thursday, by the way? I had eight hours of meetings straight. That was my Thursday. <laughs> it was awful. It was so bad. I was like, hello, I would like to democracy. And then I was like, oh, but I have another meeting. And then I would play democracy through the meeting. And then the meeting people were like, hey, so what's going on? Like, what did... What are your thoughts on this? So I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely dropping a 500 kilogram bomb into this meeting right now. One, oh wait, sorry, wrong, wrong comms. One moment. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of that. And when do you sleep? I sleep, so this is my day every day. I work for 16 hours a day. I have three hours of free time. Most of it's spent with the ferrets. And then I have five hours of sleep. I do this every day and I feel great. Hey. So I do this every single day. This is my normal day. Not yikes. Don't you yikes me. I've been to... Don't you chat MD. Just because I have a schedule doesn't mean you have to have my schedule. I do 16-3-5. I've been doing this for ages, right? Forever. And the reason that I've, do, I've done this forever is because I don't need more than five hours of sleep. I don't. I don't drink coffee. Don't do energy drinks. Just drink water. Very rarely I get something like this that has, oh God, a whole six grams of sugar. My God, it's insane, right? But with that in mind, like, to be real with you, I just do the five hours of sleep. And the reason that I do this is because it works for me. And that's it. And I've gone and done sleep studies and things like that to try and find out, hey, is this a detriment to me? And no, I just drop into, I drop into REM sleep really fast. It's a mutant. I'm just a mutant, right? Normal. Don't you yikes me, Chad MD. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. When do I eat? In here. Sometimes, and I'm going to be real with you, uh, like today, I eat jambalaya about 10 minutes before the stream started and I just like as fast as I possibly could just sucked it into my face like some kind of weird mutant don't you yikes me don't you do it you don't see a patient chat md you see nothing you see nothing this is my schedule you can't take it what's jambalaya it's a lot of stuff together with sausage meats don't you yikes you can't yikes this you can't do it do you want to know what happens when I get six hours of sleep do you want to know I wake up pissed off it's true, by the way. If I sleep six hours, I wake up mad. Every time. Every time. I have some weird-ass dream, and then I wake up angry. The other day, I slept for six hours, and I had this dream where I had to go somewhere, and someone I brought my computer, and some man stole my computer, and I had on very slippery socks, and I was unable to stop him from stealing my computer, and I just slipped around everywhere, and all these Zoomers laughed at me. And that was my dream. My dream went on like that for hours of me just slipping on like a mall floor or some shit. And with all these young people laughing at me while this man stole my computer. It took a comically long amount of time for him to steal my computer. And that was the dream. That was the whole dream. Not even a joke. That's what it was. I don't even, I don't even wear socks 99% of the time. I hate, I hate wearing anything on my feet. So I had these really slippery socks in a mall. And a man was stealing my computer and these young people were laughing at me. I sleep five hours. Anything beyond that, I get weird-ass dreams. And I wake up mad. Every time. I don't know why I have dreams like this. I don't care. I don't want them. <laughs> That's a symptom of sleep debt? No, it's not, Chet MD. No. I listen to my doctor, not to you. Not to you. You're sleep debt. So flip-flops? No, dude. I just don't wear anything on my feet. Just walk around. Where am I going to go? I don't go outside. It was like 25 degrees today, Fahrenheit. It's 36 right now. You're pregnant? You're pregnant. It's true now, actually. Yeah. I did the hands. That means you're actually... You, you're pregnant now. Yeah. I know. It's rough, isn't it? 
I need to go fix some things. I forgot to set something up. Uh, we may start this early. I think I'm going to start this early, actually. Gotta let them know. Hi, Bezos. Download. Put this on the thing. Edit the things. I'm adding a thing to the thing. So I can thing while I thing. There we go. Where'd it go? I know it's in here. Where did you go? There you are. Done. Bam. Submit. I think it's done? I think so? Nice. Stop editing panels. We good? That's good. That is part of it. Uh, dot, 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 dot. Going into all the stuff and setting it all up. It's happening, chat. Because we have so many things to do today. There's so much stuff. Man. And then what is the what is the thing? What is the command for this? Almost got everything done. We have so many things. There's so many things happening today. Got all this stuff set up. Have you played Cuphead? Yeah, I love Cuphead, dude. Yeah, I love Cuphead. I just woke up literally one minute ago, and I'm here. Congratulations. What's this song called? Cave Wave. Would you like to see the environment for it, actually? Who here has never seen the Cave Wave environment? I feel like it's going to be a lot of you. Who's never seen this room? One moment. I need to find... Where's my save file? Let me pull this up. Animus. Vapor Cave. And location is going to be 32160. So if you've never seen this before, this is going to look kind of funny. I really like this environment. It's secret. It's a secret environment. Never got the timing right? It's good timing. Feel like Synthwave should be playing right now? You'll hear it in the game. You'll hear the music. Yeah, Cave Vaporwave. It's the Vapor Cave, dude. It's a secret. There's many secrets. This is like... It's not even... Good luck finding it. Just grab it. Good luck. Secrets in Harbin? I know. Impossible, right? Cave Wave is my favorite. 
It's very fun. I really enjoy this this song. Is this live? Are you awake? Yes, it is live. I am awake. Amazingly, anytime you see me live on stream, I'm actually live on stream. Surprising, I know. You'll grab this. We're going to change this to Harpound. Behold. There it is. It's got all this nice water. And that nice fade-out effect. Do you want it, Chet? Do you want it? Good. 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 Now, how did I get over here? Hmm. 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 Nice. Sorry about it. Yes. Hmm. Good luck. So. Oh, God. Wrong button. This character is actually a Kickstarter backer character. And, um... We made this environment for the Kickstarter backer. The whole thing is is like their character. And the funny thing is, is you see how it's like going underneath and above the water? I was trying to find a way to make this happen because that's a, a flat layer, right? So let, let me show you how I did this. I had Shay make the, like the animation for this. And then I was like, well, how do I do this? Well, I just... I cut it in half. <laughs> So there's half of it in the top and half of it in the bottom. And then I was like, God, I don't really want to set this up where I have to fix this and like realign it. So I'm just going to just cut it right in half. I'm just going to cut it in half. Yeah, just cut it in half. And we don't even use the other animations. We just use those ones. But we wanted we wanted them to be able to see every single one of these. And uh, so we, we cut every one of them in half. There we go. And there you go. That's the one that's actually in the game. Yeah. There's another one, too, that's coming up that isn't in the game yet. And uh, let me find that one real fast. This is a secret. And it's Basil. Basil is actually a little... He's a little chameleon man. He's got a top hat. So that's another secret dude. And then he's got different facial expressions where he changes colors based on how he feels. And that was fun to make. He's also got a very large hat. It's enormous. Yeah. He's pretty good. Also, his eyes go wild, as you can see. So the whole time he's talking, he's just wildly going around, dude. Who lives inside the hat? More of his own head, I think. It's very large. He's crying. Look at his sadness. Look at him. Eat his tears, chat. Eat them. Well, they are delicious. Also, I think we actually made it so that his tear hit the, the bottom. Yeah. Hits the edge of the screen. A little mask there. Oh, also, he um he had like a really interesting power. Because I, I wanted to add him to the game in a way that was very fun. So his room, he's got all these like games of, of chance. Because he likes games of chance. And um he doesn't actually walk to different areas of the room. He fades out when you walk away from him. Because he's a chameleon. So you can only see him when you're nearby. And he like fades in and out. Because he blends into the environment as a chameleon. Which is just fun to do. Yeah. We need stickers. I know you need. You want stickers. I know. We're going to have more stickers. They're already up on the merch store if you want to get other stickers. Yeah. So this ended up being really fun. Here. Let me go pull them up. This room like isn't done. It's like 100% not done. Let me see. 320, 200 and whatever. 320, 200, whatever. And we'll do this one as Animus Basil. Basil is another one of the Kickstarter backers. Another secret Kickstarter backer. Hat not big enough? His hat is fine. You leave him in his hat alone. Yeah. What kind of game is Heartbound? It is a chooser and adventure RPG. It is very experimental. Did you make Kickstarter? We didn't. We got 385% funded. Game exploded. Game exploded. And it was long before, but yeah, look, see? 
And that's just fun to do, right? Where he like fades in and out as you get close to him. So that way I didn't have to animate him being anywhere. And instead we could just make him more interesting, right? And it's just fun to do. Yeah, simple, effective, and fun. And fits the character. Placeholder chest stuff. Placeholder roulette stuff. He's got placeholder stuff, dude. Placeholder desk stuff. <laughs> placeholder stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's an early access. Yeah, so what I do is I just release new content for it all the time. Um, there will never be DLC for the game for content DLC. There's never going to be a prequel or a sequel. I'm just going to keep adding it to the game. If I ever have an idea that I want to put in the game for storyline that isn't explained in the game, I just add it to the game. And I just, I've just been doing that for years. There are thousands of routes in Heartbound. Massive amount. Do you gamble? No, I don't. When will the game be finished? Well, I can show you this. One moment. Behold. What is this? Stop that. Go away. So this is everything that's done in Heartbound. You can see we have English, French, Brazilian, Portuguese, Spanish, Russian, Japanese, and Portugal Portuguese. Um, this is every room in the entire game and what is finished for every single one of those. You can see that we've got a lot of things that are missing in Russian. And the reason why is because our Russian translator actually lives in Moscow. As a result, we can't update the game in Russian because we can't pay our Russian translator because of sanctions. So that sucks, but I, I'm just waiting. Uh, a lot of people in Russia can't actually buy the game as a result anyway. So we're just going to wait until the, whatever, right? Is this what I do? Yes, this is what I do. This is what I work on when I'm not on stream 99% of the time. So right now I'm actually in the middle of making this environment right here, which is incredibly enormous, right? Um... And these are the last two environments that need to be done for Animus to be finished. These areas down here are extra areas, like that basal room that you just saw. That's all right here. Mostly finished, right? 2025 release. We're actually planning on releasing it, almost all of it, this year. You know, because I only have this much left. That's it. And the hardest thing for me is this chapter is very hard. Like, Animus is a very difficult chapter. And the, the reason why it's so difficult is because it deals with interpersonal relationships. And there are so many different ways that can, those can go. And I really wanted to give you guys an opportunity to explore friendships and, and enemies and the way that you treat people and how that actually affects others and everything like that throughout this. And that's not an easy thing to write for, right? And like, that took a long time. Also, I got COVID in the middle of it and it took me two years to recover. So that sucked ass, right? But uh, with this, with the tower, the tower is very straightforward. This took me three months to make. It's very fast, super fast to do that. And then... With Jotunheim, Jotunheim's going to be very fast as well because that's very straightforward. Jotunheim is really interesting because if you look at this, it's actually two halves. Based on your choices, you will get one or the other half. You don't get both. You can break hearts in the game? Yes. You, you have to understand something. What happens when you treat someone really badly? Someone that's really nice to you. What happens when you treat them badly? They leave your life, right? They disappear. Well, that happens in Heartbound, too. But much more directly. <laughs> uh, yeah, you burn the bridge. Yeah, a little bit. And I really enjoy that. I enjoy taking those types of interactions to an extreme. I enjoy having that kind of stuff. And it's it's fun for me, right? It's it's fun to do this. This is like Diablo now. It's, an, it's a choose-your-own-adventure RPG. Uh, Heartbound is a visual novel. Yeah, very similar. Incredibly similar. The reason why is because it was a comic book. When I was 16, I actually wrote a comic book called, it was Heartbound. And I wanted to make it into a game one day, and I've made it into a game now. I do a little programming, writing, and design for it. Shay does the art and animation, and Stein does all the music and sound effects. All the music you hear on the stream, this, all of this is from the game. All of this is from the game. Is there a battle system? Yeah, it's actually based on WarioWare. So the game, the major inspirations I have for the game were the Mother series, which is why we have the art that we do. Uh, completely based on like Mother 3, things like that. Um, we Secret of Mana, because Secret of Mana was the first game I ever felt like an emotional attachment to. That was a big one for me. And the combat is completely based on WarioWare. Also Secret of Evermore, which is why we have the dog, right? I did all the writing, yeah. I do all the writing in the game. And if you're wondering how this works, like let me let me show you how deep the writing goes. Who here has never seen anything with Heartbound before? At all. Never seen anything. So... Okay, a lot of you guys have never seen anything with this. Let me pull this up for Road Judge. This is one room out of probably about 300 rooms in the game. 
it is a massive, massive amount of content in every room. What you're going to see is a very small sliver of the game that you have to do very specific actions to get to, and likely 99% or more of the player base will never see. And I can say that about every route in the game. All of them. I wanted to do something that is actually hard for people to find. I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to do that. You know, it's, it's important for me to make things that not everyone's going to find because then more of you guys will be able to find things that are interesting to you. Yeah, your choices are actually meaningful. That's the idea. So like, I got sick of things like Mass Effect. I got sick of things like Fallout 4, right? All that stuff sucked. And it, it's not good to me. What is this? Oh, the Eve subscription thing. Yeah, you heard from a trustworthy thread that devs acted against an alliance within the game using in-game mechanics to determine to the alliance only to fix. Yeah, that was that was our alliance. I was the alliance leader of Strybug Clade. And it, it made me stop playing the game. I immediately left it. And I, I played it for 15 years. So yeah. Yeah, it sucked. Made me upset. That's why I don't play Eve anymore. I'm still mad about ME3. Yeah, no, it made me upset. So I was like, well, how do we how are we gonna fix this, right? I wanted to make butterfly effect the game. Does it mean that every option is available? No, but does it mean a shitload of them are? Yes. So let me let me give you an example here, and I'm gonna play Rhodes music over this. So you guys have an example for this. This is Raging Shadows, which is the fight music for this encounter. So with this in mind, this music playing, in order to get to this point, you have to throw away Baron's food. You have to feed him garbage. You have to pick up the axe in the beginning of the game. You need to throw the axe during the first encounter, right? So you've already set the route on being just an awful human being. Then you go to Animus. You treat Emilio badly, abandon him in the mines. Then you have to choose to go to lunch with Rode, which you have two choices there. You can go to lunch with Fern, or go to lunch with Road. You have to say no to Fern, even though Fern's the one who invited you to lunch in the first place. Go to lunch with Road. Then you're placed with three different options on this, right? Those three different options are, no, I don't want to hang out with you. Or, yes, I do want to hang out with you. And then she asks you, hey, how do you feel about my crush? And you say, I don't like your crush, right? Or the last one is, you do want to hang out with her. She says, how do you feel about my crush? And you say, well, I like your crush. But what if your crush doesn't like you? So now you have three different routes. You have the abandoned route, you have the hatred route, and you have the broken confidence route. Pretty shitty, right? All of these are bad. Then you have to go to Avocado, and you have to treat Avocado badly, thus taking you to this area. Inside of this area, you meet Emilio again, and you have to tell him, yes, I actually do intend to treat you like shit. And then you go and meet Rode, finally. You know what happens when you meet Rode now? She finally has the confidence to fight you. So, now that she finally has the confidence to fight you, you have these three different routes. The way that you treated her before changes all of the dialogue for the entire encounter. All of it. Everything. So, you have the antisocial route, you have the hatred route, you have the broken confidence route. All this dialogue, you're not going to see this. Based on the choices that you made, it changes everything. And let's say, let's say you get there and she finally has the confidence to fight you, and then in that moment, when she has the, the will to fight you finally, you stand there and die. You just let her win. You never touch the controls and you just let her win. There's a route for that. Because she knows. And the win isn't meaningful to her then. In fact, it's even worse. It's much more devastating when you do that. Because you just rip them apart and then you say, all right, do whatever you want. I'll just take it. And then they feel like a villain. That's a route in this. Or a route when you you lose and Rode is at 1 to 20% HP or 21 to 60% HP or 61 to 100% HP. Totally different content. Or you win, right? But you have 26 to 100% HP or 25% HP or lower. Or you decide to kill her at the end because you win. You get three shots that you have to take to really double down on your choice there. And there's different content for every one of those. And at any time, you can choose not to do it. Now, the really interesting part is if you get all the way through this, and during one of the combat rounds, she bites you in the head, which is one of the fight, one of the encounters that she can do, right? One of the things she can do in the encounter. And then you decide not to kill her. And by the way, there's all this other dialogue here that I haven't even talked about. There's a shitload in here. So she bites you in the head. You decide not to kill her at the end. And then she'll make this joke. Oh, yeah. Wash your hair. You taste terrible. 
That only happens if you do that specifically. So the entire game is about every minor interaction. Everything you have ever done, all of it matters. Not just a couple of things, not just the big things, not just the things that you choose yes or no on, but everything, all of it. And that's the whole point. If you're wondering what all of it means, well, it means this. It means all of it. Everything you've ever done throughout the game. How long it takes you to answer a question. What object did you interact with first? Did you talk to a character first? All of it. And all of it is exposed to the community at any time I give this out freely. And the reason why is because in order to find everything, there's a massive alternate reality game behind the game filled with cryptographic puzzles and ciphers that I created specifically to add additional content. So if we go over to this and we do Heartbound Wiki and we look this up, you can see right here, there's a massive ARG behind the game as well, which I also created. So you can look at things like this, like Second Breakfast. This is one where I taught them how to read lettuce. You actually define this as a base64 encoded file directly from the game that saves into your save file area. And then when you open it up, it ends up being a field of lettuce. But what you'll find is that that lettuce actually goes in a row perfectly. So it's actually 0 through 9 numbers, which means this is a number grid. Which means that that number grid never goes above 26, which means it's actually A through Z. You don't need to do this to play the game. This is extra. This is a bonus. In fact, this goes even farther. Or if I open this up... You can even talk to one of the characters over Telnet on our server. There's Oscar. I've done a lot with this game, my dude. There's a lot of shit in this game. Yeah, Telnet. Telnet with a bash script behind it. Ooh, spooky. Would you like to play? Nah. <laughs> Heartbound Iceberg, you don't know the half of it. There are things in the game that no one's found. There are things in the game that no one has ever found. Every once in a while, someone will be streaming this on, on Twitch, and I'll go over there and I'll talk about the game, and I'll ask them, hey, do you want to see a secret? And I'll reveal a new secret to them that even the moderators that have been here for five plus years have never seen. It happens all the time. It's really funny. How many of you have found the goose? You know the ducks you had to get in the tower? Who here knew about the ducks but never found the goose? You know there's a goose in the tower? You know there's a whole other section of dialogue if you find the goose? There's a goose. You find five ducks and then there's a goose. There's a hidden goose. And if you get it, they talk about it. Do you want to know another really weird one? Let me pull this up. Where is this? Where is, where is server hop? Does this sound familiar to you? Who's old like me and finds this song oddly familiar? It's all the instruments from Seinfeld's opening song. That's right. Same instruments. We do this all the time because it's hilarious. Oh, here's another one for you. Inside of the tower, I made something for you, Chet. It's been there for years. And I find it hilarious. I just... I need to show this to you. Let me find it. One moment. Wait, that's the wrong one. I'll, I'll be able to click eventually. Alright, there we go. You see this? You see this room? I want you to... I want you to look at the cups, Chet. I just want you to look at the cups for a moment for me. I would explain it, but I seem to be at a loss for words. Hmm. I wonder what? It could be anything. It could be anything. You know how much I've hidden in this game? This game is me. 
Uh, this game is every horrible pun. This is every dad joke. This is me put into a video game. And long after I'm dead, I will exist through this game. That is the point. I don't get it. That's fine. You haven't been on the internet long enough. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Eventually, you will understand. Today is not that day. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're probably too young for it. It's fine. Ask your parents. There you go. Just say, hey, hey, dad, who was on the internet before me? What does it mean when someone says, I'm at a loss for words, and it shows me a, a four panel thing? Don't worry about it. That's it. No, it is not that. Danny Man, it is not. Kronos <laughs> is amazing. Oh. This game written in Java? No, you are, though. demo is free. But yeah, uh, so if you're wondering about this, this is what I work on generally. The game is sitting at, let's see, we're sitting at 96% positive reviews with 100% positive reviews recently, so thank you for that. And it is $10, and it's almost always on sale. In fact, I need to go put it on sale again for the next Steam sale, so I'm going to do that in a minute here. And uh, yeah, it's $10. Bucks. It's, it's always going to be $10, bucks and we actually, we make it cheap regionally as well i do so if you're from brazil it's like 60 percent off it's 20 brl in brazil you will find that regional pricing is as aggressively cheap as i can possibly make it i am allowed to set whatever prices i want so yeah would you recommend hell divers 2 yes game is fun game is super fun how much is the demo it's free also and this is a very serious one don't buy the game and i know that's a weird thing coming from a developer don't buy the game play the demo if you don't like the demo, you probably will not like the game. It is a very experimental, choose-your-own-adventure RPG. It is not for everyone. Most games aren't for everyone. So play the demo. If you like the demo, you'll probably like the game. If you don't like the demo, you probably won't like the game. And then I don't want you to buy it just because you like me. I want you to buy it because you, you want to play the game, right? Dude, the kidney, you don't have to sell kidneys. You don't have to, the demo is free. The demo is free. It's free. Do you know that there's actually people out there that believe the demo costs money now because of you? Did you know that? I was reading Reddit posts the other day where people actually thought it cost money. And they were like, oh, a developer's selling a demo? That's disgusting. And they were like, really mad? You guys are onioning people. You know that, right? You're actually, you're actually onion. People are eating the onion because of you. You're doing this. People are believing that the demo costs money. Goblins. Every one of you. Actual goblins. Blows me away. No, it doesn't cost money, you goblin. Oh, God. There's something on my glasses, dude. Terrifying. Did streamer say how much the demo is? It's free. It's free. Um, onions are yummy. Eat them. Wait, how many? How many of you guys unironically? How many of you guys unironically eat onions like apples? Because I know some of you do, and it freaks me out. I don't understand that. That life is weird to me. Onions are so rough to eat. Don't say crunchy. Some of you are Shrek. Some of you are unironically Shrek. I know you do. I've seen it. I've seen people do this. It freaks me out. Yeah, you're Shrek. Shrek is 23, by the way. He came out in 2001. That's right. Shrek the movie came out in 2001. 23 years ago. Chat. Yeah. 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 That means Donkey's probably dead. <laughs> how, how long did... Wait, hold up. How long do they live? How long does a donkey live? How long does a donkey live? 27 to 40 years. That dude's almost dead. Because he was an adult, wasn't he? He's probably dead by now. He was a full adult, wasn't he? Donkeys live a long time, actually. I didn't realize they lived that long. Donkey. He's magic? Nah. Bleh. Just because he wifed a dragon 
doesn't mean he's magic. All right, he's just a donkey. Doesn't work that way. Ter tell us the hair routine. I don't wash my hair until it gets greasy, and then I wash it. It's like every three days. I washed it today. Magic talking donkey. I mean, uh, magic. Uh, could be magic. Might be magic. Might not. Might not. Are you Asmongold? Not washing hair? No, I wash my hair every three days. I am not a follower of Nurgle. You know, I'm not. I wash my hair every three days because when your hair gets a little bit greasy and then you wash it, your hair retains shininess and it looks good. And if you wash it every day, it dries out and gets shitty. And then it's sad. So I don't do that because it's gross. And I don't like shitty sad hair. So I just do it every every three days. Yeah, you shouldn't wash it every day. Bowl shampoo and whatever. Everything. No, dude. I don't use conditioner. I wash my hair with like this weird coconut slime that I get from the shitty market up the street. And that's it. It was like four dollars for a, like a half a gallon of it. You know, just water. Ugh. Grandfather Nurgle loves you. Yeah, but you know, nobody around you loves that you love Grandfather Nurgle, right? You know, it's like not great. It's like getting trapped in the you know in an elevator at a convention. Just all the time. Why would you want to live that way? Nobody wants to live that way. Don't do that. Wash yourself. Wash yourself. Hi, Bezos. I had to turn the ferrets on. They're not on. There we go. I should probably do some of the alerts, shouldn't I? <laughs> That's a mistake. Also, Great Goddess Freya, I have to give you the cursed quest. I haven't done that yet, have I? I'm a clown shoe. Hold up. God, I have so much shit to do. So much shit to do! So much shit to do. Do you ever just have so much shit to do? You ever do that in your life? I'm doing that. I'm doing that right now. The Great Goddess Freya. Oh. Stealing one of the alcohol crew. I see him. Scotch. How's it going? You're not awake yet, are you? Can you say hello? What you doing? You cute? Can you see them? You cool? I'm gonna hold you like a baby now. As you know, you don't touch me. I want to go. Sniff the ferret. Always. He's so cute. The, uh, the alcohol crew are meeting the rest of the ferrets today. They have, they have passed quarantine. So, the alcohol crew has passed quarantine. They're now going in there with the rest of the ferrets and they're meeting the other ones. So if we go pull this up right now, on Ferris at Live, they're having playtime right now. And they're meeting everybody. Look at them. Going crazy. Going crazy. Going wild. Mocha is here, as you can see. And Mocha's having a freak out. It's like, who are these new people? Who are all these new ones? And all the babies are over here. And they're like, what is, what is going on out there? I don't know about this. I don't know about that. Banana's like, no. Leave me alone. I'm leaving. They're going wild, dude. Yeah, you want a lawn cat herd? You don't. They're expensive. <laughs> they also shit constantly. Look, look at them sniffing butts. Ferrets sniff butts to find out who who each other. Oh my god, so excited! Look, at 
They're so sad because for the last two weeks they've been in quarantine. They're not allowed to do anything in quarantine. They stay in the cage and they kind of chill out, and that's what they do. Yeah, butt conga. Who are you? Smelled the butt. I want to know who you are. It's Loki being like, who are you? I have to smell your butt again. Constantly. Are there any ferrets in Heartbound? There will be. Yeah. Need mic on camera? You want to listen to them? We haven't done that, and the reason what there's a couple of things. One, Shay and I are constantly cursing when in that room. End of. Like, f ferrets are constantly doing things that they're not supposed to be doing. They're constantly trying to dig on stuff or shit on things, and it's just, it's just Shay and I cursing constantly at the ferrets. Two, and this is the more extreme one, we have four ferrets that have Wardenbergs. Wardenbergs generally makes them deaf, and when a ferret is deaf, when they fight with other ferrets, which ferrets fight constantly for social hierarchy, they scream like they're dying. So it is a lot of blood-curdling shrieking that sounds like an animal is being killed, and it's horrific. It is really horrific. In fact, one of the new ones named Pepper, her fighting style, every Wardenburg ferret has a weird fighting style, like mouse windmills her head, which is strange. But, uh, oh, wow, look at all the toys. But also, um, yeah, so, so the new one, Pepper, her fighting style is to open her mouth, put it near the other ferret, and scream like she's dying rapidly. And she just does that, and the other ferret gets afraid and runs away, so she thinks she won the fight. And that's... That's kind of how it is. <laughs> it's, it's real weird. Yeah, it's like a banshee attack. It's really... It's a weird one. It's a weird one. Yeah. yeah Thor, you're right. I don't want a long cat hurt. Yeah, they're they're exotic animals, man. And they're, they're tough to take care of. They're incredibly expensive. They have a lot of medical conditions. And there's a reason that we get so many at the rescue, and it's because people can't take care of them. You know, so if you want to help us with this, you don't have to sub or throw bits or anything. Just watch the channel. There's a thousand and thirty two people on here right now. Those people are actually helping fund the channel just by watching ads. We run ads on the channel. It makes a ton of money. It pays for everything that we do. And we have a lot of ferrets as a result in the rescue. And I'm actually going to be adding more panels down here. And we're going to be updating the website soon because I have all of the new panels. Is that one limping? No one's limping. They, they do this thing called um, war dancing where they move oddly. As you can see, this is a war dance. You saw that as he was jumping by. And those war dances are so they can confuse an opponent because they're like, I'm I'm going to fight you. I'm going to do it, right? And they do that specifically because it's it's supposed to... Yeah, it's called a war dance. They're called war dances. And they, they do that to confuse opponents and, and say, I am ready to fight, right? It's a... Yeah, he's doing it there. Watch. Oh, God. Wait. Wait for it. See that weird walk? See the little weird, weird jumps and things? That's a war dance. It's a, it's a good thing. It's a happy thing. Uh, they do it all the time. Ferrets are brutal little animals. They're like little little warriors, basically. And they're constantly fighting with each other. They're constantly like vying for hierarchy and who's, who's the coolest social warrior and everything like that. They're always fighting. Always. Sounds like it'd be a great anime. They are fantastic for an anime. I would, I would agree. So when you see their, batch, like their back arch up and they start jumping, that's, that's what that is. Look at them go. He's so excited. Everybody's so excited. Oh, Mouse wants to. Mouse wants to investigate, and Mouse is the queen of the group. So she's probably going to kick some asses, which means she's, she's going to beat people up. That's basically how that's going to go. Is Mouse still supreme? Yes. Mouse is the strongest, and it's mostly because her fighting style is to turn her neck into a windmill and to headbutt other ferrets, and they are very confused by this because she has Wardenbergs and fights strange. It's very, it's weird. It's like watching a giraffe fight. It makes no sense. If you've never seen a giraffe fight, the male giraffes swing their whole head around and use their top of their head as a battering ram, and it's horrifying. They're just a million pounds of neck muscle, right? And she does that. She just, oh, foul. Right in the soup. Oh, ran right through the soup. There's soup everywhere. I don't even think Shay saw it. Into the soup, dude. Soup ruined. Foot soup. Hey, Shay. Foot soup. She's like, oh. <laughs> Puts the soup up. Foot soup. Foot soup. Happens all the time. So this is Mocha. 
Mocha actually has disseminated idiopathic myofasciitis, which means his immune system is attacking his body and killing him. When we first got him, the only thing he could do is slightly move and poop on himself. Now he runs in place. We've got him basically in full remission. He's doing awesome. He's doing fantastically. This is the kind of stuff that we do. He's actually on chemotherapy to help suppress his bone marrow, which stops him from producing neutrophils, which is part of his immune system. So he is regenerating faster than the damage being done to his muscles and soft tissues as a result of this. We've got his bone marrow suppressed in such a way that he can still produce red blood cells, but he's not producing as many neutrophils, which means he's basically Deadpool. Yeah, he's become Deadpool. We've made him into Deadpool, and now he gets to live a normal life, which is cool as shit. Yeah. Although he's a ferret, so I would call him Deadpool, because he just poops on everything. That's, yeah, that's pretty true. Yeah, Deadpool. Yeah. He does a fantastic job, though. So, like, Mocha's kicking ass. The only thing that Mocha got out of this is because we constantly fawn over him. He's turned into a pretty little princess that thinks that he can fight anyone, but the moment they fight back, they're doing something wrong, and he cries about it, and then he lays on the floor and he whines. And uh, I have no sympathy for him. Fight, you are a ferret. That is how it works. They all fight. But yeah, he attacks them, and when they attack back, he cries. I saw the foot soup. It was rough. <laughs> Who did that? It was Scotch. That's so good. Foot soup. Who's going next? Oh, let me see. Hi, Mimosa. Are you nice? Are you good? Girls are always mean. Are you, are you a mean girl? Are you one of the mean girls? Are you going to fight the other mean girls? There's a whole club for mean girls. You know that? You going to get bad manners? Is Onion going to teach you to be bad? I bet she is. I bet she is. All right, good luck. She looks like a small, fluffy... She's so confused. Like, this is what anyone would look like if she was born. That's true. Loof. What are you doing? Look at this. She's biting it. Oh, okay. That's fine. She'll have soup in a minute. So all of the ferrets are one at a time going and meeting the other ones. And um, girls are the meanest. The reason the girls are the meanest, they're smaller than the boys, but they are much more agile. So because of this, the boys always lose to the girls in every fight because the boys can't turn. And usually what ends up happening is the girl will jump on the boy's back and bite him in the neck and he just goes, ah, ah, and there's nothing he can do about it. He can't do a damn thing. He just starts screaming and running with like the girl latched to his neck on the back and like they ride him like a bus and there's nothing he can do about it. So the boys don't fight the girls. They're terrified of the girls. And the girls fight amongst themselves, but they're real mean about it. Like they're super just vicious as shit. So... Yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. And the boys fight it, fight each other, but they're happy about it and they're really excited. So the boys will fight, but they're not mean. The girls will fight, they're very mean. Yeah. The girls are scary. Girls, yeah, Xena Warrior Princesses. A little bit, you know, but also kind of like, I don't know, they're just vicious. They're real vicious. That's why Mouse, Onion, and Salsa are like the Mean Girls Club, where they basically just kick everyone's asses constantly. And uh, they'll also bite me, which is the thing. Mouse won't do it, but but ev all the other ones will. Are ferrets colorblind? No, so they're not colorblind. They can see uh, black and white and red, which is weird, right? The reason they can see red is because they're obligate carnivores, and when a prey animal is bleeding, they attack that location. Yeah. So they will go after blood. It's one of the few... It's, it's, I think there's a slight other color range they can do, but they go for the red. Yeah. They're obligate carnivores. They can see an infrared. About one third of them can, usually. It's a rare it's a rare trait. It's a genetic thing. Not all of them can. Some of ours might be able to, but they don't seem to react for it. Yeah. They're land sharks. They're obligate carnivores. Yeah. They can take down animals three to five times their size with relative ease. Uh, rabbits are generally what they kill. Rabbits are much larger than them, and they can take down a rabbit really easy. Um... That's why I don't mix them with any other types of animals. Yeah. Yeah, most don't see IR light well, uh, or if at all. But some of them do. Some of them do. They've done studies where they've proven that some of them can see infrared. Oh my god, look at this. Look how excited they are. See, when you see the tail getting real poofy like that, that's bottle brush tail. It means they're really happy. They're really excited. They can kill cats. They can. Yeah. I don't mix ferrets with cats. I don't mix ferrets with dogs. It's just too much risk. Yep. Too much risk. Where'd you learn all these things about ferrets? Some biology education or something? Research. I All I do, so part of what I do for the rescue is I do research on nutrition. I do research on um, medical treatments, new medical treatments. And we form new treatments for the animals as a result of this. 
And then Shay is actually an exotic vet assistant and works directly with these animals at the clinic. And we work on it together. That's what we do. Yep. They can kill dogs? Yes. Dogs can also kill them. In fact, something you have to understand, ferrets are, while they are very hardy, they're very fragile in some ways. And if a dog throttles a ferret, like shakes them, even for a moment, they can die. And it's, it's just not worth it. You know, it's just not worth it to take the risk every time they interact. Because if a ferret, if a, if a dog's instinct takes over and they're like, a small animal, shake him, uh, you've lost a family member, right? So it's like, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it, you know? My ferret escaped and killed my three chickens? Yes. Absolutely they would. They're very good. They're very efficient killers. Incredibly efficient killers. It's not zero defense. Around the neck... Ferrets are incredibly tough. The face and the neck, they're wicked tough, dude. If you want an example of this, like Grandpa, who's one of the ferrets that we have, we actually had to get um, a cyst removed on his neck. And in order to stitch him back up, they had to use this really thick gauge needle and it bent going into the skin because their, their neck is like heavy leather. It is incredibly dense leather. It's very hard to pierce. Yeah. Very, very hard. That's that's like they're armored, man. Is breeding a concern? No, they have to be fixed because female ferrets. Um, if you don't get them fixed and they go into heat, uh, which is like you know they they start bleeding, normal stuff like a period, right? They uh have about a thirty percent chance of bleeding to death. So you have to get them fixed. If you don't, they will die. Each time they get this, they have a thirty percent chance of bleeding to death. Yeah, ferrets are super. Why? Nature's way of saying you should have kids, and if you don't, you die. Ferrets are brutal as hell. They're incredibly brutal animals, dude. It's it's not something to screw around with. Do you have a macaroni box? We actually have a rice bin. We use the rice specifically, and we use rice that is uh, pre-washed and specifically does not expand, non-expanding rice, because of the fact that macaroni can break and shatter and turn into shards that can injure them if they swallow it or chew on it because ferrets are dumbasses. The rice won't. They can pass the rice safely. It doesn't add any carbohydrates to them and they don't digest it before it leaves their body and it doesn't swell up and can't cause impactions. We want them to do the digging action in the rice because it, it builds strong muscle, you know. Get them a remote control car. We actually have a remote control crab that crab walks across the room which is very funny. And they hate it. They want to eat it. It basically does it like once or twice and they're like, and they just destroy it. It's very funny to watch. Crab. Yeah, they do love the crab. They do. Teaching them rust. One, no, teaching them to kill rust, which is fine with me. Yeah, rice is also good for their fur and oils, etc. Like the dust. Yeah. We just don't use the macaroni. It's just too dangerous. When you have this many animals, so many things can go wrong. So it's like, important to understand like not to take a risk and i'm very risk averse how many ferrets do you have i run a ferret rescue yeah so we have 33 ferrets in the rescue we're actually going to be expanding this up to 100 ferrets by the end of the year hopefully anyway can you put one down your pants no i wouldn't do that no that sounds like a very specific fetish you have there google may be for you but i don't want to know about it yeah won't this get out of hand no because we're hiring people so we're pretty much at capacity for what Shay and I can handle ourselves. We're going to be hiring people to help run the rescue with us. There's, we're reaching that limit now where it is something that we have to do. It's something that's important. And hiring someone to help on with that would be really helpful. So when we get the new place and we start building the rescue, because we're actually going to build a building for it, then we can start looking at options for that. <laughs> Who are you? My Tai. Hi. You know you're going to go meet everybody? You're going to bite my nose off? Because you always bite noses, don't you? You love to bite noses. My Tai likes to bite noses, but she's very cute. You have a little white stripe on your head. Do you have Wardenburg? Perhaps. You might. Oh, oh. Oh, that's <laughs> She was. She was going to bite me. She started doing aggressive licking on my wrist there. They do that just before they bite you. So she was going to bite me. What is Wardenburg's? So Wardenburg's is actually a, a genetic condition that causes a spreading of the neural crest. It usually makes them deaf. It is usually identified by a white stripe up the head. Yeah. So on the back of the head, on the front of the head, 
Uh, it comes with behavioral issues as well and sometimes will lead to juvenile lymphoma. So juvenile lymphoma, we have to catch within the first six months and it is likely a case in which they won't survive. Usually kills them by a year and a half if they get juvenile lymphoma. It makes them more commonly able to get it, but it doesn't mean they will. So none of ours that we've had that are Wardenburgs yet have had juvenile lymphoma, but they almost are always deaf. It's, it's a very common. Humans can get it as well. Yeah, humans can get it as well. I crave Ghost. Ghost is over here and non-interactive with the rest of the colony. And the reason why is because she can't she can't interact with them. And you get diseases. It is not a disease. It is a genetic condition. Humans get it as well. Let me actually show you this. So if we go over here and we go to Wardenburg's syndrome, uh, and we go look at images, there's actually a content creator that has this. Let me go pull this up. Does anyone know who Steph Sanjati is? Steph Shan Sanjati. Ever seen this person? She has Wardenburgs. White stripe up the forehead. Exactly the same. Yep. Yep. She talks about it all the time, too. Very, very common. So if we go and look at Wardenburg syndrome in ferrets, it's exactly the same condition. We have the exact same thing. Ferrets get the same thing as us. And I'll show you an example of what happens to ferrets with Wardenburg syndrome. This is a ferret. This is a ferret with Wardenburg syndrome. You can see he's got the white stripe here going all the way up. Eyes are wider set. Face is a little bit more round for this. Likely deaf. Yep. Normal. Humans get the same thing. In fact, somebody with a darker complexion. Let me show you this. This will interest you a lot, I think, if you're interested in these types of things. People with darker complexions, their skin will actually lack melanin for that. If you have Wardenburg syndrome. So this child has Wardenburg syndrome, and they get the white stripe on the skin and on the hair. Isn't that interesting? Really interesting. Yeah, super striking. Really interesting. Sometimes uh, people with Wardenburg will actually get heterochromia too, where their eyes will be different between the two eyes. So they have two differently colored eyes. It usually, the reason that they go deaf a lot of the times is because it, it causes inner ear malformation. And and that ends up being like a, it ends up in, in deafness or partial deafness a lot of the times too. So not always full deafness. Partial deafness is more common. Deaf for the humans too? Yeah. Really, really common. You got a cursed quest request? I don't think you handed it out. I know, I know. I have to do it. I have to do it. I've got it back here. It's hiding. So yeah, I wanted to talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Do you recommend getting a ferret? No. Uh, ferrets are generally seen as a lifestyle animal. You can't just have one. They're obligate carnivores, which means they have very restrictive diet where they can only eat meat, bone, and egg. That's very hard for some people to handle that. You, you can't just feed them cat food and walk away. They'll actually get kidney stones and die. Super rough shit, right? Um, the next thing is, on top of it, they're very social animals. Incredibly social animals. Yeah, they eat bone. They'll actually grind the bone down and eat it. They're great at that. But um, they're incredibly social animals, which means you can't just have one. You need three, usually at a minimum, to create a proper social atmosphere or they get depressed and die. It's very sad. And then on top of that, um, you, you need to have proper environment for them. They need a ton of care. They need a ton of activity. They are not a cage animal. And you have to make sure that that environment is properly temperatured because if, it, if they're over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, they can spontaneously die because they can't, they can't actually regulate their body temperature. They, uh, they don't sweat, so they just die. Why kidney disease from cat food? It's actually specifically kidney stones. A lot of cat food will have what is called pea protein in it from peas. And um, whenever you have pea protein in a food, they will get kidney stones. That's just how it goes. And you, you have to get them a... We, what we do is we give them freeze-dried food that is 100% meat, bone, and organ meat. 100%. And soon we'll, we'll likely start making our own. Uh, so I'm getting an industrial, when we move to the new place, I'm getting an industrial grinder. We're going to be talking to uh, local farmers to get as much in, like meat and everything that as we can. And we're going to work out the tarring rates so that we can actually make sure that they get a proper healthy diet and keep heart health as a result of this so we can have ground freeze-dried food. No fish, fish is not normal for them. You can technically, but it's not normal for them. Salmon is fine a lot of the times. My ferrets love shredded chicken. Chicken's fine. Yeah, super good. Super good. But you have to remember, a big part of ferret diet is they need 500 milligrams of taurine per day to enable proper heart health. 
no foods reach that limit. Do you follow a specific diet? I do not. No, I'm, I just eat whatever. Marshall's brand ferret food. I don't like it to be honest with you. It's good. So Marshall's brand ferret food is actually really good for older ferrets because as ferrets age, they start getting more and more GI problems a lot of the times. So when they're around four to five years, we usually transition them over to a Marshall's ferret diet specifically because it's easier for them to pass without having weird problems. When they're younger, they need a lot more of this raw food diet so that it can help them quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah, 500 milligrams. Milligrams. 500 milligrams of, of uh, taurine a day. Not 500 grams. Did I say grams? I hope not. Wardenberg's explained. Yeah. Yeah, it's taurine. Taurine. Ferrets are banned here in QLD, Australia as an invasive species. Makes sense. Yeah. No, not kilograms of freedom. No, not 500 kilograms of taurine for the ferrets. No. 500 kilogram ferret. Just, you just call it in and the democracy happens and then it shits on everything and explodes. Can they solve a cockroach problem? No, they don't need, they're not insectivores. No, not good for them. Um, Titan, which is generally the carapace of most insects, will cause an impaction in a ferret and kill them. Ferrets. They eat very specific things. What is taurine? Taurine is a, a compound that is actually used in heart health. It's actually that we use it as well. So it, it helps your heart to function. Ferrets need about 500 milligrams a day of taurine. They get it entirely from their diet, right? So you have to balance intake food with the amount of taurine that they need. So we use taurine supplements for this. And that's, it's super important to understand that that's not like an easy thing to do, man. It's really not. It's part of what I do is the nutrition for them. I have to do a lot of math to make sure that this is good. It's in Red Bull? Yes, but you can't give a Red Bull to ferrets. <laughs> Do you cook the eggs? No, raw food. Raw food. All right. The great goddess Freya, are you there? No matches. The curse quest person left. Shit. Alucard with $2 said rip to the goat Akira Toriyama loudly crying, loudly crying. Yeah, I feel it. It sucks, man. Rough way to go, too. Out of nowhere. Wait, come back. I'm here. Wait, are you here? Wait, you're here? Why is it saying no? You are here! Alright, Great Goddess Freya. Do you want art, cooking, or interpretive dance? You have to choose. Choose. I'm sad, are you? No. I'm not sad. About it. And the reason why is... As someone who makes things on the internet, as someone who makes games and shares experiences with you guys, Akira Toriyama is the same. Even though people like this pass on, we all will, the things that he created, the stuff that he worked on, it impacted everyone. Everyone across the entire animation community, everybody across the entire anime community, everyone, everyone who consumes content, video games, dude. Like, look at Dragon Quest. That dude's immortal. And I think that's pretty fantastic. And I... It's hard for me to mourn a person when their legacy will live forever. Dude's still here. That makes sense. Yeah, he died. It's a weird song to come on right after that. I'm going to switch songs. <laughs> there we go. That's much better. Uh, so, Great Goddess Freya, which one do you want? They chose art. Ooh. Creation is a small measure of immortality. It is. It's something you guys all have to remember. We have limited time here on Earth. We do. We don't. People don't like to face their mortality. But you don't have to be mortal. You can make something. And when you make something, that thing will outlast you. Even if you don't realize it. Even if it's something really dumb that you don't care about, right? Someone else may see that and they may want to make something. Now you live forever. What's up? Which one's whiskey? Which one's spud? Spud whiskey. You win. Good yeah. Job. 
Spud's fatter. He's fatter, and then also his nose is lighter. I'm so rich now. Look at me. Oh, it's wonderful. Look at them all. Wait. I'm so rich in ferrets, Chet. Yes. You're so big. You're so big. Here you go. <laughs> uh, Spud and whiskey, dude. Are they trained mounts? Yes. I ride them into battle. So you want art? Actually, Great Goddess Fre Freya, if I can speak. I know exactly what I want you to draw, but Bezos is here. Shit. One moment. Is this where I learn to make games? Yeah, go to develop.games. The website that I made. It's totally free. There's no ads, no anything. I wait for ads, by the way, so I'm waiting. Does this guy ever sleep? Yes. Five hours a day. You will always find me on the internet. See, here's, here's what you don't understand. I've lived on the internet most of my life. That's right. That's right. So, I am, I am what we call terminally online. I live on the internet. But I came from the old internet before everyone cried on it. So I don't cry on the internet. I just live on the internet. And I laugh at things. And that's what I do. Yeah. I am the... I am grandfather internet. Yes. A rage comic? Before rage comics existed, friend. Before smug anime faces. Before image boards. Back in the old BBS days. Right? Before that. Before Ventrilo harassment. Before IRC. In the days of the mud. Ages ago. Before you could ruin dad's computer with lime wire. Yeah, I'm old, old, dude. Before you yelled at mom not to answer that call because your character will die. Muds are great, dude. Muds are great. Oh, X-Fire, Jesus. You remember back when AOL came in the mail as a disc? Before that. Before. You have an ICQ. I do. I don't remember what it is, but I got it. You mean the AOL coaster? Yeah, dude. Alright, so you want art. Good music for this. Great goddess Freya. Here's what I want you to make. Alright. You are going to draw a hydra. But not just any hydra. That hydra needs to be made out of ferrets. The more heads, the better. You can have as many ferret heads as you want on this hydra, just a lot of them. However, this hydra needs to be a mount. And I need to be riding that mount. And while I'm riding that mount, I need to be making... Let me find it. This face. There it is. That's the one. That's it. I need to be riding a ferret hydra into battle. With this face. Can you do this? Grey Goddess Freya. Fantastic name, by the way. How does the curse quest work here? Just like what you're seeing right now. Wouldn't it be multiple faces? No, no, no. The, the ferrets are just the ferrets. You will be voting on these curse quests soon. I'm actually going to create a day where we just do that. Where we just have a day of, of curse quest. Were there programming curse quests? No, I started to get rid of those because they take forever. They take forever, my dude. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see if they've responded. I accept danger, danger, high voltage. I love Electric Six. And I got to see them in concert once, and it was really weird. It was... <laughs> it 
it was incredibly weird to watch them in concert because I was in this tiny... Yeah, dude, I love Electric Six. I was in this tiny venue. I was in this tiny little venue. There was like maybe 30 of us there. 30 people in the crowd. And there's like a stage. And then there are all of us like right here and standing. And they were just... They looked blasted out of their minds. Just complete. And he was singing the song with like words that I never... Like he was not singing the song that exists. He was just singing things. It kind of related to the song. It was a, it was wild, dude. <laughs> it was something else. That shit was awesome. I had a good time. It was fun. He was definitely having a good time. The contract is sealed. Yeah. Dude, no. Electric Six Gay Bar is a very funny song. Yeah, it was a local show. Yeah. I was in Orange County at the time. Um, I also got to... I got to meet Macaulay Culkin that way, actually. So, Macaulay Culkin had a band called uh, Velvet Underground. No, it's called the Pizza Underground. That was based on the Velvet Underground. It was like a, a silly cover band, and they they sang Velvet Underground songs as if it was like pizza, like it was just like a parody thing. And I have a shirt somewhere which is the Pizza Underground, which is like a dude with like a big pizza for a face. And we went to that venue, same venue. There's like thirty people in the crowd, and there's like fifteen people up on stage because it's Macaulay Culkin and all of his friends. So it's just like, there's there's like half as many people on stage as there are out in the crowd, which is ridiculous. And um, it was it was fun. It was just like a fun, he actually got pizzas for everybody in the crowd. So like they made negative money on that, that event for sure. Because I got a ticket, it was like 10 bucks. And I got a full large pizza for myself. Everybody got a full large pizza. And we're all just sitting there hanging out with Macaulay Culkin when he was singing about, you know, pizza. And then he came down to the crowd and like hung out with people. It was fun. It was awesome as shit. He's a cool dude. He's a really cool dude. Yeah. Love the hell out of it, dude. That was that was a wild experience. It was cool as shit. Was it cheese pizza? No, dude, it was not. It was really good pizza. Mine had um, mine had mushroom and artichoke heart and something else. I can't remember what it was. It was it was like good, good pizza. It was really good pizza. Yeah, oh, that was awesome as shit. Yeah, it was really good. Like the, the primo pizza, you know. Wasn't he a drug addict? I don't know his personal life. I don't know. I got to see... He, I got to see him as a rock star giving me pizza for free. It was nice. I don't give a shit what he does outside of that. I'm gonna keep my cool experience. What is the best kind of pizza? Yes. My, my executive answer... On the best kind of pizza is yes. That's the best kind of pizza. Ananas is not a thing, chat. It's not a thing. It's called a pineapple. You cease. Cease this at once. It is a pineapple. And ananas is, is one letter away from bananas. Ridiculous. Ridiculous word. Ridiculous. Absurd, even. Thank you for the $77.77 for the moderators. You kick ass. Oh, by the way, um, cool announcement I was talking about at the beginning of the stream. I actually just announced this out to the moderators as well. The uh, Thorporation is now a thing. That's right. The Thorporation is real. As a result of the Thorporation being real, uh, I am hiring on five of the moderators full-time. That's, the that's the first step for this. I'm going to choose lead and then two from us two from eu right oh god i forgot the two two from eu this will be kind of our trial run so we can fix everything out right and then after that i'm going to try and bring on as many people as we can afford because cost is going to end up being a thing and then from there uh us ones are going to get benefits EU ones, we have to figure out how to do it legally because Europe is... Try hiring someone from France. Let me tell you. It's a, it's a nightmare. It's what it is. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it's a... Oh, boo. When I say you, that's... Yeah. It, I, I know you guys had your Brexit, but it's the same. Right? It's It includes includes that. That is you, little ham. Try hiring someone from, from Germany. It's the same shit. Germany and France are so restrictive on this shit, and it's just a nightmare. So we're trying to figure it out. We will figure it out. But this is kind of the idea for this, and um, my hope is that th this is kind of what I want to do. I'm going to accept as many sponsored 
streams as I can so that the sponsored side stuff pays for all the moderators. So the more sponsored stuff I do, the more moderators we can have into that. And that's sort of the idea is I can just do it that way and then it makes my life easy. Makes it really simple. Yeah. Why do you have long hair? Because I stopped cutting it. Good question. Definitely a, an important answer. Yes. Yeah. I know. Surprising, really. Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? Why did you stop cutting it? Because I don't like cutting it. I'm... I'm just lazy. That's literally... There's nothing... <laughs> I'm not making a statement. I'm just lazy as shit, and I don't want to cut my hair. Do you, do you know what? Like, have you ever cut your hair? Have you ever gone to a place to get? It's expensive. It wastes time. And then sometimes it doesn't even come out right anyway. So screw it. My style is just not doing that. And now everyone looks at me like, oh, that's the dude with long hair. Whatever, man. And I don't have to go through the whole ritual of cutting it and making it look like shit and paying money for the, you know, the process. Easy. I don't have to cut it myself either. I don't have to waste time doing that. Easy. Simple. Just long hair. Done. And sometimes people think that I'm a hippie. Sometimes they, people think I'm trying to be a rock star. And sometimes people mistake me for a girl. And that last one is the funniest shit on the planet. There are people that will come into the stream and they're like, oh, I thought you were a girl from the thumbnail. And then the response is usually, did you learn something about yourself? Has this awakened something within you? You're going to have to go tell your friends now. Yeah. You've discovered something about you. Unfortunate. Unfortunate it had to happen this way. Especially with me on the internet. Because you can't hit her on the bartender. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Also, the funniest one that's ever happened with, it was, um, I was actually at dinner with my then girlfriend. As funny as this is. So I'm sitting here. She's sitting over there. And the waiter comes from this side. And as he's here, he goes, How are you doing tonight, ladies? <laughs> And I just turned to him and I go, I'm a dude. And he went, oh, and he like face went red and he was so upset. And he was like, oh God, oh God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I was like, it's fine, man. It's totally fine. Like, don't worry about it. This, this happens all the time. I got long hair. I get it. Right. I get it. Don't worry about it. And this dude, this dude goes, okay, I'll be right back and I'll get you guys your menus and shit. He leaves and we had a new waiter. And I was like, what happened to the other guy? And he goes, he was so embarrassed. He couldn't be your waiter anymore. funniest shit I've ever seen. I felt so bad. I was like, dude, tell him he can come back. And he's like, nah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> felt so bad for the guy. Yeah, no, it happens a lot. It does happen a lot. Very funny to me. I tipped the second waiter extra. I always tip really nice. I, I don't like... I know this is weird. I don't like tipping culture. I think that you should just pay your employees. The, the idea of, like, tipping is gross to me. Um, it seems very odd in the United States that, like, someone can be paid so shitty and then they have to make the money off of tips. It it feels like you have to be, a, like, begging while you're also doing a full-time job. That makes no sense to me. I think it's gross. I will always tip, but I don't think that system is appropriate or good, frankly. I don't want that person to be out just because I don't like the system that they are trapped in. That's not their choice. But I, I don't I don't think it's good. I really don't think it's good at all. And um, yeah, that sucks. That's really shit. You say your dead girlfriend? No, I didn't say that. What? I said my girlfriend at the time, my dude. Where did you get dead from that? What? What inspired you to start a ferret rescue? Um, we started having ferrets here in, in Washington State. One of them died of a heart condition. Her name was Snails. And I realized that we had bought her three extra years of life and I wanted to do that more. Yeah. You were dead too? What's the matter with you? What happened to you? Weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think tipping culture is kind of gross. I, I've never really liked it. I think that we should just pay people appropriately. And I, I think that if you if you want to include that, because it's it's already a a, a bill, right? It, it is an expected thing here in the U.S. to tip for 20% most of the time. And I, I think that's a very odd thing. That's an odd request. And it, it leaves the customer at odds with the server, where the server has to overachieve in order to get a tip that may not even be there. Because some people, they'll overachieve, and then on top of that, 
they just don't get it. A lot of the times I'll see on the on the thing, it'll be 15% for the low end, 20% for the middle, and then 25% for the high end now. And I just think that's that's disgusting. It, you just pay them more. And I understand food service is like super thin margins, but like, holy shit, if Europe figured it out, I'm pretty sure the United States can too. It, it freaks me out. And I think the thing that's, that's really bothered me is, um, I think it was about two, three months ago, we went to a fast food place and they had a cup in the drive-thru for tips. And I was like, dude, why is this happening this way? That's weird. That starts to get into the world of weird because like there's no... There's no, like, I'm not sitting at a, at a restaurant. You're not, like, doing the waiter thing. Like, why is this happening now? Yeah, drive through had it. And I it freaked me out. I was like, I'm not interested in that at all. I, I didn't tip there because I was like, that's very strange. Yeah. What if we been tipping minimum wages? What if we had a minimum wage that actually was a minimum wage that you could live on instead of, what is it, like, in the U.S., like, seven fifty an hour? You can't live on that shit. It's like $15,000 a year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's some scary shit. Seven twenty-five. Yeah, that's insane. That's fourteen thousand five hundred dollars a year. Seven twenty-five. Uh, the the way that hourly wages work is if every fifty cents an hour is a thousand dollars a year. After if you're working a forty-hour week, yeah. So seven twenty-five or seven twenty-five would be fourteen thousand five hundred. Seven fifty would be fifteen thousand dollars a year. That's stupid. That doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah, Fed is 725. States can make their own hire. That's true. Here in Washington, if you go and work at McDonald's, the starting wage is $20 an hour. That's not even a joke. That is the starting wage in Washington for McDonald's is seven is $20 an hour. What was your first job? My first job was actually doing freelance shit. I, I was always one that wanted to do his own thing. I don't like mowing other people's lawns. So my first job was doing freelance shit. Then I got a six-month stint at Blizzard because my dad worked there. It was a totally nepotism thing. And uh, I was ass at it. I was complete garbage. So I felt ashamed of that, and I went back to doing freelance. I did freelance for five years to learn as much as I possibly could under my own, you know, learning, under anything that I could do on my own. And uh, I learned programming. I learned 3D modeling. I learned texturing. I built my own stuff. I learned how to interact with the community. I learned how to run commissions. I, I learned how to get ripped off. That happened a lot because, you know, you're doing everything on your own. I moved out, lived on my own. Uh, then I went homeless because I, I did business wrong. That was cool. And I was homeless for a year. I lived in, a, in my car for a year. And then I came back and I applied at Blizzard with all the new knowledge that I had. And right as I was running out of money completely, I got a job at Blizzard as QA. And, uh, it saved my life because I would have just stayed in my car. That would have been awful. They didn't know I was living out of my car. Yeah, there was nepotism there. The six months, that was nepotism. And it made me upset. So I made sure not to do that again. Nobody knew that my dad had worked at Blizzard for 23 years until I was leaving QA at Blizzard about four years into my career. I made that a secret. I specifically did that because I did not want doors to close on me based on who he was or doors to open for me based on who he was. I wanted that based on me. No, nepotism is not fine. It it screws with your ability to proceed because there are things that will happen for you and against you that are outside of your control that are not your fault. And I don't want that ever. It, it completely ru would ruin everything, frankly. Because how would you know that you actually accomplished something? How would you know that you were afforded an interest based on your actual things rather than something else? It's just sucked. I was not a fan of it. So I made it secret. I specifically made it secret to stop that from being a thing. And in fact, it was very funny. I remember when my boss found out about it. As I was standing at the statue, the the big wolf statue in the center of Blizzard, right? The the one on campus, the big cool wolf statue with all the the uh like all the uh what are they called? Core values around the center of it. And I was talking to my dad. My dad walked away, and then my boss came over and said, like, "How do you know Joey Ray? What were you talking to him about?" I was like, "That's my dad." He goes, "No, it's not." I go, "Yeah, it is. Go talk to him." Like, what do you? Yes. You've figured it out. After four years, you finally know the truth. I just never talk about it because it's not relevant to me working here. That's the point. And he was like, like his brain exploded. Like I could watch it in real time. Like the light go out of his eyes and his brain shooting out of his ears. It was really funny to watch. Yeah. Different last names or something? No, same last names. There's a lot of people that have the same last name there. There was actually, there was a girl that I worked with for a while who had the same last name as me and people thought it was my sister. And I was like, I'm not related to her. <laughs> that's very funny yeah your dad is a big guy in blizzard my dad worked for blizzard for 23 years he was the cinematic director for them 
uh, everything from back when it was Silicon and Synapse and then Chaos Studios and then Blizzard Entertainment. If you ever played Rock and Roll Racing, uh, most of the art in that was done by my dad. Going every every cinematic you've ever seen for Blizzard, my dad was the the lead of the team for that for every cinematic you've ever seen. He actually left. God, I don't even know how many years ago at this point, but he was there for twenty three years, and then he went over to Jagex, and now he works on old school RuneScape for Jagex. He's a creative services director or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, let me let me show you something. You've all you all know who he is. You've all seen him, every one of you. You don't realize it, but you've seen him, and I've, I've showed this off before. I've actually like talked about this pretty publicly too. Let me find this. God, there's, I'm looking up pictures of him, and there's pictures of me now because I've talked about this so much that it became like news. It's quite funny. So this is my dad. And no, that's not a joke. There he is. He actually worked on that episode with the team and they turned him into a character. That's not a joke at all. That's 100% real. It's not a resemblance as uncanny. That's actually him. This is his room. That's his lamp. These are his statues. This is him. Yes. And in fact, let me go pull this up. Make love, not Warcraft cast. He worked on that episode because in order to get the in-game cutscenes, they actually, yeah, it's, it's all his shit, dude. Yeah, same wrist brace and everything, too. In order to work on that episode, they needed to have in-game cutscenes, so the cinematics team from Blizzard had to work with them to get that. And you can see him right here. There he is. ta -da! With the rest of the team. Also, in this image, they actually photoshopped out his middle finger, which is really funny to me. He's actually flipping off the camera, and you can see the blur on it right there. Yeah, they removed his middle finger. Deeply hilarious to me. Because he flips off everybody in every photo that he ever takes. 99% of the time. funny yeah no so that's that's him man there he is you now know he who has no life is actually a real human being in fact one of the funniest things about it is the dude who cosplayed him didn't know he was a real person either and then my dad met him at blizzcon and he was super f afraid like the guy was really afraid that like oh no oh, i'm so sorry my dad's like that's hilarious keep doing that <laughs> Uh. Jagger is lucky to have him? Yeah. What class did he play? I think he played a hunter. I think all he did was play a hunter. Is his dad still with us? Yeah. I had him on stream not too long ago. I guess, I guess it was months away at this point. I had him on stream. I think it was in October last year because he came to visit from the uk and i had him on stream for an entire stream and people just asked him questions and uh there's a bunch of clips of it up on youtube you go see it there he he's much older now he's got gray hair on his face and he's trying to grow a beard which my family line will never grow a beard i, I keep telling him to stop it just shave it off shave it off yeah he was the chat a month ago yeah he shows up his his uh account name on here is your joy which is just an anagram for his name you'll see him as your joy all over the place you should call him. No, he's probably sleeping. I don't know what time it is in Europe. I have no idea. Do you think I know time zones? He lives in the UK, yeah. Right now he does. 10.30 a.m.? Dude, 10.30 a.m. on a Friday. He's probably going into work. Or being a slug human. I'm not calling him right now. No, I'm not doing that. No. Most of the time I don't even call him. I actually, Do you know how we call each other? We use Discord. So we don't have to do international pays. Like we don't have to deal with it. We just use Discord. It's like, whatever, now it's free. It's hilarious, actually. Where's he live? I'll pop around. Oh, yeah, let me just dox my dad. One moment. That's a great idea. Let me just release his name and his address and his social security number right on the internet. Let me do it. Probably all his SQAs too, right? What's his mother's maiden name? I need it so I can be a better fan. <laughs> Oh, uh, why are you like this? You can be any other way. No. Succubi Dry with 500 bits said, Hey Thor and chat. It's your girl Aya back. Hello. To call you all amazing and make sure you drink water. Goblins need water. I haven't... I haven't got any water. I need to get water, I think, immediately. Can you dox God? I did it. 
There he is. You have God's address. Figure it out. I'm gonna... I'll get... Next Bezos, I'll go get water. Yeah. It's been two hours. Get, uh, next Bezos. He's here in five minutes. He's rapidly approaching our location. Killer Squid 2603 with 500 bits said, While I am a fan of more stream time, make sure to take care of yourself and your needs first. Your schedule of yes. 16 hours of work is fine, but you get yep. less work done when on stream since you go on tangents. Make sure you have time to do all that, and the ferrets, and some relaxing off time. Don't want the awesomest streamer to burn out. I won't burn out, and here's the reason why. I've already scheduled this, and I've set it all up in a way that I know that I can handle that normally. It is not me pushing for extra. It is me basically formalizing what I was already doing. Making sure that I am setting it up in a way that makes sense for me, makes sense for the moderators. We have a scheduled time. We know exactly how long I'm going to be on, exactly what I'm going to be doing. And as a result of this, it makes it easy. And I've tested it. Yeah, I've tested it all out to make sure, is this enough time for me to do things? Is this enough time for me to do whatever, right? And like, can I, will I burn out from this? Will this cause a problem? Do I hate streaming after this? Do I hate working after this? Do I hate working on things? Like, I have tried this in little pieces to test every aspect before going, okay, this works. You know, it's important to understand that if you are changing your work behavior, you need to test it. You need to test it. You need to make sure that what you're doing works for you. So I do this slowly over time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's important it's important to do that. If you just jump in and shit, you're like, I'm gonna do it all. Right. I was like, don't. Yeah, don't do that. Try it. Try it in little pieces. Like I was talking to Primogen about it. Primogen wants to increase his amount of streaming hours. He's like, I'm just gonna do ten hours. I was like, don't. Because he normally streams two hours. I was like, change it to three hours. And if that works, change it to four hours. If that works, change it to five hours. If that works, change it to six hours. Right. Just keep increasing it until you find the level that is just right for you. And that's important. It's crazy important to do. Because if you increase that shit really rapidly, you are going to burn out. End of. You will. You are going to overwhelm the shit out of yourself. You have to You have to slowly, gradually get there, right? And like, even then, it's not even just being able to stream that long. It's being able to interact with your community that long. It's being able to talk for that long. That's not easy to do, you know? It's a, it's a difficult thing. And then on top of it, it's incredibly important to know that you need to make sure that your moderators can be on that long. We actually have shifts to the moderators that are coming up. Kronos is actually the lead moderator, and he's handling setting up shifts for the mods so that we make sure that we have full coverage of the entire time. Because I can't expect a moderator to pay attention for 12 hours. That's not fair to them. No one has a 12-hour work shift. That's shit. It's insane. So splitting up between multiple mod teams means that mods will cycle in and out throughout the day, and we always have 100% coverage on the stream, but it's different people. Hey, now they don't have a problem. So, like, there's a whole infrastructure that has to go along with me doing something like this, you know? I work 12 hours twice a week. I work 12 hours six days a week. <laughs> Actually, I work 16 hours seven days a week. There's <laughs> no escape from that. I actually work another four hours a day off stream. Yeah. Yeah. Mods are asleep post sevens. I don't think they are. I don't think it's true. Military disagrees with 12 hours. That's fine. Do whatever they want. 70 hours a week? Nice. I, I actually, there's a very funny meme that I've seen. It's like, until you work 80 hours a week, lower your tone when talking to me. And it's just like a gruff dude, you know? It's like <laughs> I actually love that meme. I love the shit out of it. Do you pay these hardworking mods? Yes, I do. Yeah. In fact, I, I just got finished. We now have a corporation, and that corporation is going to allow me to hire on moderators full time. Um, one of the things that we actually do on top of this is I is this. Let me go pull this up for you. This is actually super important to me, is paying people who make this possible, right? So if you guys give any money over pally.gg, 100% of that goes to the moderators. It's actually split evenly among them, so they, they absorb 100% of that. I get 0% of that, always. And that's super important to understand, is all of that goes to them. And it has since November. I was originally doing this as like a, a, a timed thing, where I was like, oh, it's mods giving, right? And we're going to do everything until the end of the year. They're going to get 100% of the donations. And I was like... What if we just made this permanent, right? So the way this is going to work is when we hire on moderators full-time, those full-time mods will not be on Pallet anymore. They'll be removed from this, so they're not double-dipping. And then the people who are not hired on full-time will get more of a cut of this, which I think is super important to understand. And I, I think that's a good thing, right? So like as we go forward, I'm trying to set this up in a way where all the moderators are getting paid effectively. There's not animosity between the mods, and there is a 
basically a standard level of, of what they need to do and they're communicated with appropriately. As such, um, Kronos is now lead moderator. So the lead moderator position is basically he is helping manage all of the moderators and making sure they're always on task. They know what's expected of them and what they need to do. Is there any Aussie mods? We have mods in that time zone, but not specifically Australian. Yeah. And a mod city. Yeah. It's, you have to understand, like, you're a team. There's a team of people. And we have to interact with that team of people as people, you know? And sometimes people burn out. Like, I'll give you an example. Jake? Jake did hundreds of games in the game jam. He reviewed hundreds of games in the game jam. And that's a shitload of stuff. And, like, some people were really upset at the results of the game jam. Anytime you do something that involves money, anytime you do something that involves prestige in any way, uh, there were people that, that gave death threats. There were people that acted like jackasses. There were people that just, like, said F you to the mods and all this kind of shit as a result of the results of the game jam. And, like, that sucks. Yeah. No, it sucks. It's horrible, frankly. And, like, is it going to stop us from doing it again? No. Is it going to make us more efficient next time? Yes. Is it okay? No. All those people got banned, by the way. Every one of them. Banned from the community, 100%. I'm going to go get water. And I'm back. Do you like Tim Tams? Yeah. I do Tim Tam Slams, my dude. Get some Milo. Tim Tam Slam. Delicious. How can you become a mod? You cannot. We don't have any applications open right now. Honorary Aussie? My dude, you don't know the half of it. Let me show you something. I don't like sweet stuff. I don't. So I'm going to show you something right now. You'll understand. Let me find it. Now you understand. See that? See that? If you can still see the toast then it's not enough. I eat Vegemite every day. I love the shit out of Vegemite. What is that? It's Vegemite, dude. Australians know. Australians know. And I use sharp-ass cheddar for that tiger toast, dude. 100%. I've been doing that shit for years. In fact, if we go in here and we look at this, I'm going to show you proof of this. The day that I finally had Vegemite. Because all the Australians are, you got to try Vegemite. Let me find it. February 6th, 2018. I tried Vegemite for the first time, and now I can't stop eating it. Thank you, Australia. February 6th, 2018 was when it first started. That's right. I've been eating Vegemite for six years, and I can't stop eating it. It's delicious, dude. Yeah, that was the moment. And the first comment, the first comment here was disgusting. <laughs> 
Uh, Americans don't eat this shit. They don't. I love it. It's delicious. I'm going to eat the whole thing. Tip $20 to the moderators. Thank you for that. That's very nice of you. Disgusting. Also, I have to say this right now. Um, Marmite is shit. Vegemite is king. I don't make the rules. It's not my fault. It's not my fault Marmite is bad. It's not my fault. You can be upset. You are only mad because you are angry. And you are only angry because you are mad. It's true. It's true. What's the difference? There isn't one. All right. Need to make sure the environment is working on this now. All right, next. Shandroman with 500 bits said good morning Thor and chat. Good As morning. we live a life of ease every one of us has all we need sky of blue and sea of green in a yellow submarine. <laughs> Happy Friday. It's playing now, thank you. Thank you for that. Suck you be dry with 500 bits said also I fart got this. Seven, 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 by the demo seven, 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 seven. You could be any other way. Why? Why are you like this? Why are you like this? Arise. We need to add circle madness. Okay. Lighting time. Lighting time. Yeah. Well, uh, blah. I do that there. That's weird. I don't know why I did it this way. It's very odd. I guess that works. I guess there's nothing wrong with it. It's demo free on itch. It's free on Steam. Just go get it on Steam. Free on Steam. I like that Galaxy Unpack, dude. Something about that animation is neat. I don't know why either. It's weird. Even though it's an ad. Like that's an ad for Samsung Galaxy or whatever. But it's a neat animation. I want it to make sound in my brain. No, it's free on Steam. How's the house going? Today I have to end the stream at 9am. It's not the time that I normally want it to be. And I have to do that because I have to go and I have to call the title company and scream at them. And then I have to call the loan company and I have to scream at them. And then I have to call... I think that's it. I think that's all I have to do. And I'm going to have to do that. And it's going to be a lot of screaming because I have to wire transfer a whole lot of money out of my account at exactly before 1 p.m. today. And I have to call them at 9 a.m. Because everybody dropped the ball but me. So now I have to I have to deal with it. And I'm unhappy about this. <laughs> it's not good. Varaletstra underscore underscore with 500 bits said I shall keep being annoying about when we get a Dungeons 4 stream. P also because of you I keep working on my world building. Do it. As for today's game if you heard of it. MMORPG Tycoon 2. I have not heard of that one. MMORPG Tycoon 2. I didn't even know there's an MMORPG tycoon. Let me look this up. What? Single player world builder game about creating the greatest MMORPG of all time. Yours. A single player game about creating an MMORPG.
Okay, that's cool as shit, actually. How have I never heard of this? You design an MMO for NPCs to go through? That's freaking rad, dude. Oh, I, I, I have to play that now. That's cool as shit. What an interesting idea. When did this come out? Let me find this. January 6th, 2020. This came out January 6th? I've never even heard of this. What are the reviews like? 86% positive. Let's see. 3 5 2024, they finally released a roadmap for the game. Downvote that they finally released a roadmap. Okay. Long awaited dungeons update. Early access. That's a lot of content. Wow. This is a really interesting game. Last update was December. This update was March. They're doing like a three month cadence for that. October. Yeah, it's like every two to three months. Looks like they get some dev update stuff. And some minor things. Fixing the monster AI. This is cool, man. Like, this is really cool. Building a full dungeon system that is not easy. Is there no MMORPG Tycoon 1? Does it not exist? Let's see. Did they release another one? What? Did they take it off the market? I'm going to link this in chat. This is cool as shit. I really dig this. Yeah, no, that's great. Start with two? I'm just going to play two. You played it for some time? How many hours you got in it? Because this is cool, man. Funny that it says that it's similar to Timberborn. I actually really enjoyed Timberborn, but I felt like it was too easy. It was too simple for me to get, like, into an equilibrium on Timberborn. That kind of made it not fun anymore. I loved that game, though, for a little while. It's very fun. Timberborn is slightly harder now? Really? Oh, yeah, no, I definitely do. There we go, wishlisted. First one was 2008? Oh, that makes sense. Have you played Oxygen Not Included? Yeah. Hmm. I'm interested in that, though. That's cool as shit. Thank you for showing me that. Sherlock Paro with 700 bits said good day for and chat today I would like to recommend the game Star Sector it's a top down 2D space game where you can command your fleet into epic space battles and try to conquer the universe. It's not one Steam so I will provide a link. HTTPS colon slash slash frac- Let me look at this. Star Sector. Star Sector. I think we've actually seen this before. I think we've talked about this. Yeah, Star Sector is cool. This game is like super dense in terms of content. It's wild, dude. Like I always I always thought this was really neat. Let me pull this up. Just to show you like some of the combat shit. This is nuts. It's like a huge game, too. Yeah. They added late game stuff in the recent version? Yeah, I just, I like, I really like this, to be honest with you. It's just like so over the top, you're like covered in turrets and all this kind of shit. I just love it. Is Harbin gonna have a Switch release? Eventually, yeah. Link? Yeah, I'll put it up there. Star Sector's cool, man. I actually really like Star Sector. I think it's a really interesting game. Pull it up. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. Cool games for you. Tons of mods to that game? Yeah, yeah. Lots of different ways. I just think it's neat. I love this kind of stuff. I love, like, modular design in ships. That's something I really enjoy. Really enjoy that. Huge time sink? To be real with you, that's fine with me. If a game is a huge time sink, I'm in.
Dude on Switch, I can't wait. Yeah, that'll be a while though. So like my plan is once we launch Heartband fully, after that happens, we want to launch on Switch, right? And that's like super important to me is that it, there's some time between the PC game and the Switch game because like I understand that there is, there's going to be a lot of bugs. There's always going to be a lot of bugs. And I think that's important. Huge time sink equals great value? Sometimes. It matters if the time spent is enjoyable. That's important, right? That is really important. Yeah. There will never not be bugs in development? Yeah, but we got to iron out as many as possible. Did you go to the ferret emergency place to scream at them? I already handled that, yes. There will be lots more screaming. Lots more. Because it did turn out that he had it. So Henry does have two ear infections. He, uh, he's he got... So the ear is actually sectioned off into different sections. You've got the exterior ear, you've got the middle ear, and you've got the inner ear. He has an inner ear infection on this side. On both of these, it's exterior ear, middle ear, and inner ear all have infections on both sides. So he has likely been building this up over the last 1.5 years with their regular vet not catching it ever. Insane to me. Just insane. So we've got him on heavy antibiotics. He's having trouble right now in terms of his weight. His weight is very low because he's fighting infection super hard. We're syringe feeding him and we're, I'm worried he's going to die. I'm really worried he's going to die. He runs in circles because of the ear infections. We're constantly worried he's going to die. Yeah. Was there a vet before? Yes. And then the vet that we took him to also didn't check his ears first, which is like, what the hell is the matter with you? This is basic shit. So I'm very mad. Yeah. Yeah, he's, it's not neurological problems with his face. It's neurological problems overall. The neurological style problems that we thought were that, it's actually he has no balance because he's got a full infection of both ears. Had it in with the bill. It's about $3,700, and I'm going to be very angry with them. Legal angry because they signed off on his ear health. Meaning that they said that they checked it, and they didn't check it. Not happy. Yeah. Do ferrets carry infection to humans? Not in this case, no. Yeah, I know. We know about it. With Akira. We talked about it earlier. It's rough. Yeah. Wait. EA just released all their CNC games on Steam? No shit. You have to be lying to me. One moment. Command and Conquer. All of them? Because I know Red Alert's been on there for ages. All of them, though? No shit. No shit. Oh, my shit. Oh, my shit. Oh. Look at it. Look at it, chat. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. I have played every one of these except for Tiberian Twilight. I actually never played Command & Conquer 4. <laughs> Red Alert was my jam, dude. I never played Command & Conquer 4. Was it good? Was it actually good? How much is this? Dude, what? It's $10 for all of the Command & Conquer. Are you shitting me? Is this a joke? That's a joke. Hold up. I'm linking this to chat. That is freaking ridiculous, dude. $10 for all of Command & Conquer. Done. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? It's 50% off, too. What the shit, dude? I'm going to be real with you. Um, Stop here. That's kind of how I felt about that. Just I don't even know about this. I never played Command & Conquer 4, and I've never heard good things. Are they all compatible, though? I don't know, dude. Probably. Who gives a shit? It's $10 for like a billion hours of video game. Command & Conquer is awesome, dude. It's it's some of the best shit on the planet. Even skip Red Alert 3? What, what did you just say to me? S don't... Do not skip anything with the words Red Alert in it. What's the matter with you? Who made you this way? 
Skip that. Skip that. Red Alert 1 is my favorite. But still, how is, is Red Alert 3 bad? Really? Check the Eula section? Why? Uh, where's the Eula section? Uh, it's not good, but it doesn't, it's not bad. Dude, you're getting it for a dollar, right? How many games is this? Hold up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. You're getting each game for fifty eight cents. Who gives a shit if it's good? <laughs> it's crazy, dude. It's everything Command & Conquer ever has been for 58 cents a game. Like, come on. That's crazy. That's a crazy deal. Yeah, it's a crazy deal. I'm definitely getting this. I'm buying this right now. One moment. I'm not even going to wait. That's crazy as hell. Yes, view my cart. Buy it. That's insane to me. I love Command & Conquer. It's not even... It's not even $10. It's $9.88. It's even less. It's even less. That looks fishy. Got released yesterday. It's not fishy. It's Command and Conquer, my dude. Will it be end to use? I don't. Yeah, mine came out to like 1092 because I live in Washington and they applied 10% tax. Ugh, tax on digital goods. Yeah, I love I love Command and Conquer, dude. Love the hell out of it. Steam has a problem with Steam game sales impressionism. What? Are you trying to say impersonation? Yeah, there's no impersonation happening here. That's that's. Command and Conquer, my dude. I literally moved to Oregon to avoid tax. You fool. Live in Washington. Thus, you have no state income tax. And then, shop in Oregon, where there's no state sales tax. Why would you move to Oregon, you fool? Now you pay income tax. Why would you do this? Why would you do this? We're bordering each other. You've done it backwards. You've done it backwards. Yeah. I know, I know, Catboy. Your name is an amazing, amazing name, by the way. This will listen the final cut? Okay. Neat. Do you have a P.O. Box? Yeah, do exclamation point P.O. Box. Next. Sabaledge with 500 bits said, Hi Thor, I'm a self-taught dev, but I really need some theory like in algorithms and concepts you don't get to learn on the go. Can you recommend the book or the best way to get that theoretical part, please? Need some theory like in algorithms and concepts? What specifically though? If you're just trying to learn algorithms and concepts, in what regard, right? So like, what are you trying to learn? Yeah, Primogen does some really good stuff for algorithms, but it really depends on what it is that you're building, right? Each one of those is going to be completely different. No, exclamation point PO box is one go. Yeah. No, no space in that. Here. There you go. Yeah, I'm interested, like, because at that point, you'd have to figure it out. I would talk to the Primogen, legitimately. The Primogen has to work with this kind of stuff very constantly. As a game developer, I rarely have to do that. Rarely. Most of the stuff that I have to do is is creating artificial intelligence for monsters, right? And, like, I think that's pretty important to understand, is I don't have to deal with any of that. <laughs> I love that. Dude comes in and his first message is just an F you, and then he misspells mother, mater. That was your moment, dude. You had a moment. 
and you you biffed it, dude. You fumbled, and then the mods banned you. You didn't even get it out. What is a modder, dude? God, that's depressing. You must be so embarrassed. <laughs> Oh, I love that shit. Embarrassing, dude. Embarrassing. All right, let's see it here. First time cheddar, dude. No, I want cheddar. It's delicious. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely talk to the Prime Engine, though, man. I really would, Sam. So. Uh, that's not an area that I have to deal with on a regular basis, and it is an area that, that Primogen has to deal with on a regular basis. He's very, very good, and he has a whole course on that specifically. <laughs> yeah, dude, first time chatter, last time chatter. Yeah. Hey, doing? Doing good. How you doing? Yeah. Prime has recommended this in the past. Hey, not a bad chat. I'm going to link this in chat. One sec. Whoop, whoop. And I think we might be able to get a discount on it because I have a linkage for this. Let me grab it. Let me see if this will give a discount. Please. Amazam, please. All right, I got a link. This might give a discount on it. I hope so. Bam, 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 bam. There you go. Because, yeah, that one is good. He has, uh, he has actually put that one out before. I just didn't remember what it was. You are correct. You good trying to enter in the programming world? Don't over, don't overthink it. Just make shit. Much love from Colorado, man. You're an inspiration. You're awesome as hell. I used to live in, uh, God, where was it? I lived just south of Denver for a while. It was fun. I liked it out there because we had weather. And then I moved up to, I ended up moving up to Washington because of that. Because I love it. Love the weather, my dude. Wait, what was I setting up? No, I don't want this. No. What is this? Oh man, I gotta go FedEx tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I had to do today? Do you wanna do you wanna know what it's it's like becoming the CEO of something? I had to read the entire Corporate Transparency Act of the United States today. <laughs> I had to I had to read it. I had to read the whole thing. I have a lot of homework though. I, no, I had to read it. I had to read it all. I read everything. It's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. All the stuff that's relevant to what I'm doing, I had to read it all. There's a lot of pages. I think it was like 40 something, 40 to 50 pages of stuff that I had to read specifically. Wrinkly brand material. Yeah, riveting. Super riveting. It's great. They used a lot of words that I know. I know all these words now, which is a nightmare. Hire a mod to read it to you? No, unfortunately, I have to read it first, and then I can hire the mods. And then I can be like, Moderator, dictate this this message to me so that I may sit here and absorb Helldivers while you do so. And then I can talk like that all the time, but I can't do that yet. Maybe one day. Not currently. <laughs> uh. See, I could use big words, too. You know, not just the corporate documents. Me as well. Why do you sound like Dumbledore, dude? I don't know. Maybe my old rich man voice is just Dumbledore. See, here's the thing. I don't actually do voice acting, but when I think of, like, a person, the voice just comes out. And I can't do that on command. It just happens when it's funny. So now I don't even know how to do the voice. I don't even know how I was doing that. I have no clue. I have no clue. Now, now, it's, now it's Dumbledore. Now rich old man voice is Dumbledore, and that's it. And I'm fine with this. Should have got TTS to read it for you. True. Actually. 
Cosmic Mender Zero with $5 said what's up for love all the advice you give you really helped me put some things into perspective. I'm really glad. I'm really glad man. Hell yeah. You say J Jojo? Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is one of my favorite animes. It's so goddamn weird. It's the best. That is noir. We don't want that. We want... Uh, Lake Lord Judge. Roadfield Lore. Is this the right one? No. No, that's the one. We want the one... We want the one where he's laying on the floor. And then... The radius happens. Where's the radius happening? Is it Deer Judge? Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one we want. Alright, we want this, and then we want Clash Lore Entrance. Remove clones. Why, hello! How's it going there, Lord Beastos? I'm really glad that the hype train overlays on top. That's fantastic, actually. It's good. Lord Beastos himself, dude. Have you met Beastos yet? I uh, know. I feel like he would devour me alive, right? Like he's like a, like an old god. Like you look upon him and then you instantly evaporate into blood mist or something. You know what I mean? That's what happens when you meet people like like Beastos. You look at him and just pfft. there's like a ringing in your ears and then you're blood mist. Stream time bug for me and says fifty hours. How do you know it's fake? You don't know how long I've been streaming. Could be any time. Any amount of time. You evaporated into affiliate codes? <laughs> it's happening. I'm ready. Still using for your game, Game Maker Studio. It is awesome, and good, bubbly. Add alarm three. Oop. Do this again. Now. Why are you doing this? There we go. Hmm. You ever just like the copy pasta, my dude? It's pretty good, you know. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Copy pasta is good. Oh, you know what? I should do that, shouldn't I? No, the pocket watch has to be there for this. Doesn't it? Yeah, the pocket watch has to be there. I'm going to make sure that, that that shows up correctly. I don't know if it will. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Make this alarm two. Yeah, I get mad that object doesn't exist. And then change this event over to alarm two. There we go. Next. She3N with 500 bits said my last question got lost in the first half of the game jam VOD, but I was wondering if you had any suggestions for non-subscription power over Ethernet security camera systems. Yeah. Yeah, actually. So here, let me pull this up. Um, Alveus Sanctuary did a really cool thing. 
let me show you explore about tech at Alveos. So Alveos Sanctuary did something freaking rad here. And this is what it is. They actually listed their entire broadcasting system and showed their entire network. Everything that they do inside of there, all of it is actually listed. And you can see every camera that they use for Alveos. And this is exactly how we built ours was we got access cameras for the ferrets so we can do night vision cameras. All of it is linked. All of it is shown exactly how they use everything. It's freaking awesome. So shout outs to Alveo Sanctuary. They're rad as shit. And this is a great way to learn about these cameras and like what is actually working. And you can go and look at the cameras on their stream and see exactly what it is that they're doing and how that camera quality already works. So it's a great way to find out like which cameras you want for different things and also to support a cool rescue where they do cool shit. So, yeah. Can you multiple cameras on the time on those? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, go look at Alvea Sanctuary's stream. They've got like six of them up at a time. And they have crazy exotic animals. Really cool shit. Yeah. I think it's I think it's rad, dude. Please enable dark mode. You enable dark mode on your stream. There. Now it's brown. Now you hate it. Now it's gross looking. This is almost worse, isn't it? Isn't it? There was a reason I didn't activate it. But you wanted this. You wanted the brown vision. And it's dotted. I think it's fine. I love it. Sick. You're sick. Poop mode enabled. Reminds me of early PCBs, you know? Not wrong. Actually not wrong. It's funny. Start wiggling. Fade the light. There we go. They counter behind it. Nope. I'm eating the. Papa I'm eating the P dead. thieves with 500 bits said, "Hey Thor, thank you for everything you do. Thank you. If you see this, just wanted to ask: when it comes to small indie devs, should I send demos to content creators, or what is a good way to promote besides just Steam pages? I have found that that is ineffective, and the reason why is because content creators generally won't see those messages. So usually what you want to do, go through a site like Keymailer. Keymailer is really useful for that, and they're very, very good. I've talked to them quite a bit. I trust them a lot. And the reason that I trust them so much is one time somebody actually went to go resell a key that I put out, and I only ever put keys over Keymailer. So the owner of Keymailer actually went and bought this key when I told him what was going on, gave it back to me, so I burned the key, and then he found out which person the key went to, and he banned them from the website. Keymailer is sick, dude. Love those dudes. Awesome as hell. They they got a they got a fan of their site for life from that. It was brilliant. Actually brilliant. So with that in mind, um, I, I really wouldn't go down any other route for this kind of stuff other than community. Community is the best thing you could possibly go for. Because think about it this way. If each person is really interested in your game, they will go and tell their favorite streamer or their favorite YouTuber to go play your game. They're like, I'd really like you to play this game. I really like you to play this game. I really like you to play this game. And then eventually the streamer plays it because their community wants it so much and you didn't have to do anything with that. The only thing that matters in everything you do is your community. Community is everything. Make your players happy and everything else will follow suit. The moment that if your players lose your trust, then then it's over, right? If you, if you lose your players' trust, rather, it, it's all over. That's it. This community wants you to play Sims 4. Yeah, but I'm going to be real with you. I can only trap a dude in a tiny one-by-one -one space so that he poops himself to death so many times, you know? It's, you know... I can only fill a house with ovens so that the dude burns it down so many times, you know? Like, just... Gets old. Gets a little old, you know? I always create, like, a perfect life, and then I'm like, how can we ruin it? What's your opinion of the game Hacknet? I really enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed the hell out of it. Backpack battles officially went to early access today? Nice. Good for them. Everybody loves Factorio. Sarah Freya with five pounds said him a dev. 
In trying work out if a server API I'm developing should be always trying to be up to date or just when the UI queries it. Thoughts, mm. seven. Always pinging the update is a horrific thing. You're using network traffic, it's annoying. I would say when it starts, check to see if there's an update, right? Maybe, like when a query goes off, that means you're doubling the amount of queries. <sighs> I mean, that's usually the thing that goes off for that kind of a thing. There's no reason for that. There's no reason for that to like do that all the time. You know what I mean? I don't ever like that myself, generally. I, I would I would generally do it at start and be like, hey, I'm out of date. You've rebooted the server. It's mad. Right. WebSockets is fine, but like, dude, constant update checks. You, you have to remember something at scale, right? Let's say that your software, whatever it is, is doing an update check. And it does this every, I don't know, every 30 minutes. How many servers start out at the same time? How many of these do you have? Let's say at one server, this is fine. What about 500 servers? What if they all do the check at the exact same moment because they all came online at the same time? What happens? Like, what happens? Does it blow up? <laughs> do you accidentally DDoS the server? Yeah. Was that 10,000 bits, dude? What in the name of shit? That is so many bits. Oh god, I gotta burn through 50 of the queue. I think I figured out how to send bits. I threw out some silly message about making my own 2D game, engine framework, and game after tinkering around in the field for two years in C++. Dude, that is a shitload of bits. That is a, that is a shitload of bits. I have to burn the queue. Tilted BXHR with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, I just got an internship at a tech consulting company and I'm having difficulty keeping motivation, keeping busy. Okay. This is my first role in a tech company and I come from a non-traditional background, no degree. I would appreciate any help. Work experience trumps all, 100%. You said you got an internship at a tech company, consulting company, and you're having difficulty keeping motivation? You got, you got the internship. Ask everyone everything, as much, as many questions as you possibly can. You have an opportunity there. Work experience beats anything in there, and the reason I know that is because I did it. I don't have certifications. I didn't go to college for any of this. I went to college to be an entomologist, an insect scientist. I dropped out. I don't even have a degree. I went on in my career to hack power plants for the federal government with no certs. And the reason that I was able to do this is because I went to DEF CON, and I hacked at DEF CON and showed that I had the ability to do this without having those certifications. You right now got an internship doing this. Ask everything. Get as much information as possible. That work experience is worth more than the paper. Grand majority of the time. Absorb that shit. Be motivated. Kick some ass. Seriously. Degrees are Chubby just there to get you with in, the said, You're oh, in the door. You're in the door. Mighty Goblin Lord Thor DA Protate Software, we have come here to seek your benevolence. Mm. We would like to continue our work on the game we made for your game jam and release it under a price tag. Do it. May we keep the game jam logos in the game, or should we remove them? You can absolutely keep the game jam logos in the game. If you want to celebrate that you were part of the game jam for that, please do. That is totally fun. I will never get mad at you guys for using that whatsoever. Ever. Calypso Moons with 500 bits said Thor been watching you for Abbott now and I've been turned into a goblin. Can you put on your wizard costume and do your chant in Rust++ to turn me back? Also, Mocker is a fat boy living his best life. True. That is true. However, I will say this once and once only. I will not transform you back. That's right, it's permanent. The result is permanent. No chance will be had. This is you now. It's too late. No escape. When Manatee with five Swiss francs said watched so many live streams it invaded my brain. Dreamt you cut your hair and became an opera singer. WTF short haired Thor the singing Valkyrie. Curse. Dude, I, I get really weird dreams all the time. Like I had a dream, I was talking about this, I was talking about this. I actually slept six hours the other day and I got real grumpy. And I had a dream where I had really slippery socks on and a man had stolen my computer. And I was trying to get to that man, but I was in a mall and there was a bunch of Zoomers laughing at me because I was too slippery because my socks were too slippery and I couldn't take the socks off for some reason. It was like illegal. So I was just slipping, slipping all over the place. And the man was like slowly making his way away with my computer and all the, all the Zoomers were laughing at me because I was slipping in the mall and I looked like a dumbass. And like that was the dream. 
That was the whole dream. It's just me being slippery with socks. Yeah. Yeah, dream, dreams suck. Dreams suck. Yeah. Yeah. Silent Sybil 412 with 500 bits said, Hi Thor. I recently joined a solo game jam and was hoping you could offer advice. I had mm. someone play test my game and they hated it, then told me they don't even like that type of game I made. They had good points but also a lot of coming down on my game and demanded I review their work and tell me I wasted their time so I owed them. How do you deal with a situation like that? I want to finish this jam. I know I have a cool story to tell based on feedback but it's getting me down. That person is a is an ass of hats, my dude. That's that is <laughs> What the hell? Demanded I review their work and tell me I wasted their time so I owed them. No. No, that's not really how that works. That's that's a piece of shit. Yeah, that's nah. I would just cut contact and be like, "Nope. I ain't talking to you anymore. You're kind of a big piece of shit." Like, you don't even have to say anything at that point. Just block them, dude. That's that's grade A asshole meat is what that is. That's horrific. Like, what the hell, dude? Yeah, no, that's... I I can't believe that, frankly. So you had someone playtest your game and they hated it. That's fair. They told me they didn't even like what type of game I made. Also, technically fair. Kind of a dick move, but fair. They had good points, but also a lot of coming down to my game and demanded I review their work and tell me I wasted their time, so I owed them. That right there? You wasted my time, so you owe me? That person is so far up their own ass that they're puppeteering their own head. Like, that is ridiculous. Dude, no. Cut contact. That's crazy shit. Insane. Yeah, don't let that, don't let that kind of behavior bring you down. That person sucks. <laughs> yeah, crazy to me. All right. Also, I've noticed that I am bad, and I I keep forgetting to give you guys your keys after the stream is ended. Uh, so I am giving Kronos keys right now for Heartbound and for Champions of Breakfast, so that way we don't have this happen anymore because I am bad. So I am fixing this immediately. One moment, I'm giving him ten keys of both, so that there's a buffer whenever this is needed. Heartbound. There we go. And put this in a in a thing. No, don't don't do that. Don't do that. There we go. There we go. There's heartbound keys, Kronos. You can have those. And these are these are gonna go out to the people that that need this, that have used channel points to unlock them. Uh, I think there's quite a lot of champions of breakfast. I think there's a lot of those. So I'm gonna give you 20 of those. There's a lot of them. This way. It can get handled. And you stop feeling bad about it. And I stop feeling bad about it. Oh my god, I've run out of... There's seven Champions of Breakfast keys left. No shit. Uh, these are the last keys for this, dude. I have finally gotten through all of the keys for Champions of Breakfast. My god, I have to go and request like another thousand more from Steam. Insane to me. Well, that's done. Those are with you now. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> Those have been like that for like six years. How many keys can you have for a game at one time? All of them. As many as you want. Steam gives them to you freely, like water. It's fantastic. How much do we pay Kronos for the demo? None. What are you working on? Heartbound, the game that I generally work on. And right now, I'm building a lighting system. At least I will be in a moment. I'm also burning the queue as quickly as possible. It's a lot of money. GPMB86 with 500 bits said, Hi Thor, I am Hi. deeming a group. Nice. I really want to help and boost the reluctant rogue player who joined the party late by having them find an artifact, a weapon, power ring or something. I also really want to introduce it along with an NPC with a split personality. Like a devil and angel type. Half the time they want to kill the party and half the time they want to help. Do you think it would work? Oh, wait. You can't give me Smeagol advice. Sorry, not sorry. I was immediately imagining a gigantic stone, like, Olmec head that would, like, spin to different faces when it fell different things, and then you do this to me.
Victor Moreau Rude. with 500 bits said please help. I've spent all night searching along a dark desert highway, and while the cool wind in my hair was nice, I only found the warm smell of Kalitas. What would recommend for a voice changer software that doesn't require internet and works as a real-time virtual mic? I want to use it for DND for robots and magical beings and stuff. Preferably cheaper so I can still afford the demo. Thanks. Keep on keeping on being great you absolute legend. Against popular belief on the internet, I actually don't know anything about voice changers at all. Uh, it is just voice control. That's that's all that it is. All the stupid voices that I do is just voice control of me like getting into the moment and playing the character. And I learned that from playing Dungeons and Dragons, which is funny. So <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what it is. You can log off anytime you want, but you can never leave. True, actually. Yeah, no, never tinker with the soundboard? No, this is a USB microphone. That's that's all this is. It's USB connected directly to that, and that goes directly to OBS, because I don't know what the hell... I, I don't know shit about audio. I am... Like, Twitch sent me a new microphone. They sent me an NT2A, and I don't know how to hook it up. I don't have an XLR setup. I've never gotten one, and I'm, I don't know what it is. It's a, it's a Blue Yeti that is six years old. That originally the the plug-in for it broke off and I had to re-solder it back on. So I pulled the whole thing apart and did it. It's like a hundred dollar mic from like six years ago. It's a Blue Yeti Blackout Edition. I've also replaced this like I don't know, like four or five times because it keeps melting, which is the thing. Yeah. I bet there's XLR to USB. I don't know how any of that works. I have no idea. Yeah. I have no clue. I don't even have phone, like sound foam or any of this. Yeah, melting. It's when foam gets old, when it degrades, it actually turns into like an ooze. So the the foam was so old that it melted. Yeah. So like, yeah, it melts. Yeah, it melts. It gets gross. Yeah. You don't really need to change it. I don't think I need to change it to be honest with you, but I kind of want to try it. And I, I want to see what happens when I put a new mic on, and people are like. Ugh. I like the old Thor, uh, you know, like that kind of a thing. I want to see, there's a level of salt that I can acquire from this. And I feel like that level of salt would be vitamins for me. So I kind of want to see what happens when I upgrade. Yeah, that's important. There's some very simple audio setups if you want to try it out. I do, because the microphone's sitting here and I feel weird not trying it, right? Old Thor hit different. You want to know something funny? I actually used the stream. Let me see if I've got it. I don't know if I have it around here. This headset actually has, like, a microphone that comes out here. I used to stream on, like, a headset mic. It was so shit. It was so shit. And then I moved over to the Blue Yeti, and I've just had this ever since. Yeah. Like, you wore a gray shirt instead of a black shirt? Ugh. Yeah. What's the title of your talk at DEF CON? I don't do talks at DEF CON. I, I compete at DEF CON. That's what I do. I win. With the Psychoholics. Yeah. Why not? Why would I do a talk at DEF CON? I'm there to compete. I'm there to kick some ass. Salt. Delicious. Jeff over time with 500 bits said Yar cheer 500 ahoy. I'm Boy. a senior designer and I feel like the only way to continue to grow in my career is to be open to moving across the country. Does that seem common? It is. It is actually. And I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but the moment you said ahoy, in my brain it said minoy. Because there's a certain part of my brain that just says ahoy minoy. Like every time anyone says ahoy or mihoy or anything like that, it's always minoy. And it's, it's stuck in my brain probably forever. So that's ruined the rest of my train of thought. Now I have to read your message so I can get back on, on track there. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a senior designer and you feel like the only way to continue to grow in my career is to be open to moving across the country. Does that seem common? Yeah. So it's, it's crazy common. Usually in the tech industry, the gaming industry, we move quite a lot. You'll see usually about a one-year movement cycle. And the reason why this happens so much, tech industry growing as it has, pay has increased pretty dramatically as well. So the only way to get proper pay is usually to move. So in tech, we always have a, a rule. Keep your resume and your cover letter fresh and keep it on the market. Always be looking for a new job. And that may seem shitty, but that's normal, right? That's a really normal thing, is to keep on the market. And many people don't do that. They only do it when they think they're going to lose their job. You're losing ground every year that you don't do this in the tech industry. It's normal. It's normal. 
and you don't get looked down on for it, it's normal. So it sucks, you know? And that's that's just kind of how it is. So moving is normal, man. I know it's weird, but it's it's normal. It's normal and sad. I agree with that. Yep. It's good to always be open for a conversation. That's a good way to put it. I agree. Just keep LinkedIn up to date. Nah, man. LinkedIn stinky. I hate using LinkedIn. You know what? You know what I get on LinkedIn? I get a billion people trying to add me to their their circle on LinkedIn, and then every single one of them is like, "Would you like to have this job for this thing?" And I'm like, "No, no, I don't want that." Are you sure you don't want this job for this thing? It it pays really badly, and it has a lot of responsibility. And I go, "No, I don't. I don't want that. I no, go go away." Leave me, leave me alone. And I get like a billion of those, dude. I don't even sign in to LinkedIn because of this. Because it's a million billion people on there doing the same thing. And they're all recruiters. They all have no idea who I am or what I do. And they're all just doing that. It's gross. It's just super gross. Yeah, my, my LinkedIn gets DDoSed by recruiters. And they're gross. I hate them all. I hate it. LinkedIn is Facebook for recruiters. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, some of them say, Dear Jason. They're like, Jason, I would love to hire you for this thing. And I just go, no, you wouldn't. You don't know who I am. Deleted. Like, every time. Every time. I hate it. It's the best spam collector. Yeah, but the worst part is, is they take it from there, and then they go and send me an email. And they're like, I would like to follow you on LinkedIn. Please add me to your circle so that I can send you more spam of shit. I'm a recruiter that works in X industry token, right? Every time. It's a mess. I hate using LinkedIn. It's the worst thing. LinkedIn is great for role-playing as an adult. Maybe one day I'll be an adult. Maybe. Yomagam with 500 bits said, Hey, less than three. I really want to start game dev, but okay. I don't know where I'd end up. I've also got untreated ADHD. Should I wait for meds or just risk it and go all in? Thing is, I lose interest in what I do for a few weeks and then hyper-focus for two to three days again. Any advice? You need to break that cycle. Hyper-focusing is a way to burn out. You have to understand that things like game development are a marathon. You are doing it in small parts for a very long period of time. On top of that, if you have something that's untreated, go talk to your doctor. That's not something that anyone can help with except for your doctor. You should always talk to your doctor about these things. And if you don't have a diagnosis, get a diagnosis. If you do have a diagnosis, talk to your doctor about treatment. Normal basic stuff. Don't listen to ChatMD. Don't listen to YouTube. Don't listen to WebMD. WebMD is just going to tell you you have cancer and are pregnant. Don't do that. Doesn't matter what's going on. It's always going to be cancer and pregnant. So, like, with that in mind, dude, like, sit down, work on some stuff, and do it piecemeal. And if you find that you are unable to keep attention on something, even though you want to, even though you've given the best effort, even though you've set up guidelines and, and restrictions for yourself to try to do it, you still can't do it, talk to your doctor. Because at that point, you need help, and it's okay to get help. That's a normal, average human being thing, and it's not weird. So, yeah, try that. Try try designating time for yourself, setting up your restrictions for yourself, and doing that stuff. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, to be real, do not go all in on game dev. Do not quit your day job. Game development is incredibly risky. Insanely so. You should do it, but you should not drop your day job to go all in on it. Because it's a fast track to being homeless, frankly, if you do that. Because there's no guarantee you're going to make anything. And you don't want to be in a position like that, frankly. Do it as a hobby until it pays the bills for you to do it as a job, right? Killer Squid 2603 with 500 bits said also, I completed my cursed quest, and I made sure it was as cursed as I could, even down to the software I used. Dude, sick. I can't wait to see it. Pinche Bandit with 500 bits said I am so glad that I was able to catch one of your streams. Nice. I spent all day watching you play Inscription and it felt like it was my first time playing it. Shout out to Big the Boy. Big the Boy! Oh dude, Big the Boy. And Little, Little the Boy. They're the best. Those are good cards. They were good cards. Also, Anonymous with a dollar and 12 cents to the mods. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're awesome. Dude. Ads in a minute. 
Troy Tech with 500 bits said your negotiation skills are as effective as a cat trying to herd sheep when it comes to buying a home. I'm currently working on generating the initial part of my code by hand because I don't know how to automate it. Give the goblins seven shares. Oh, I what? predict that hell divers will make electro plating to nerf electric damage. What fanless mini PC should I get to stream with? Like what specs should I go for? Here is my favorite deep dive into liquid death https colon slash slash w Bro, there's so many questions back in that Troy Tech. What where is this chain of thought going? Fanless mini PC should I get the stream with? What fanless mini PC? That's called a heat sink, man. What? <laughs> I can't even deal with that. Yeah. That's a lot. Um I won't give the goblin seven shares. All ten thousand shares stay with me. They have to. Yeah, a knock at that point. Like but why would you use that as a streaming PC? I'm so confused. That's a lot. Oh! Hi Bezos. How's it going? Kronos has resolved all the key requests. Yay! Alright. Light bubble. What was this one doing? Ugh. Ugh. Let's go to judgment light bubble. There we go. So, judgment light bubble. Light bubble. Duplicate. Where are we going to put this damn thing? Clash. There we go. Rename. Odd Clash Light Bubble. That'll work. I don't think he reads YouTube chat. So here's something you don't know, Spartan. Is I actually wait on YouTube chat a lot of times. I usually will try to choose something that both Twitch and YouTube are talking about at the same time. So I can answer them both at the same time. And I wait for somebody to say that I don't read YouTube chat. And then I call it out because it's really funny. Usually I'll wait about 30 minutes of the person like screaming in YouTube chat before I do it. So that I can just build up the salt when they finally realize that I've been reading it the entire time. I didn't do that one to you. But I usually do that one. Because it's way funnier to me. Also, I do it when somebody is, is claiming, like, quite loudly, that I'm, I am pre-recorded in some way. That is also very funny to me to wait on that one. It's like, it's like fermenting a viewer, right? You just kind of ferment it, and then you drink the wine at the end, which is super funny to me. Yeah. Oh, look, Bezos is gone. <laughs> Don't be fooled. It's AI-generated YouTube responses. It's true. It's true. Actually true. CHAZE no. with 40 rupees said, Do you think UX design is something one can stream? UX design? Oh, yeah. No, I 100% think that's something you can stream. That's a great idea, to be real with you. Like, the software and game development category is not just for programmers, it's for people doing UX, UI design. It's for people that are doing, like, writing, people that are doing anything related to voice acting or music or in art or any of this stuff. If you're working in a game or software in any capacity, you can do it here. So if you want to do UX design stuff, I, I feel like there's definitely an audience for that in this category. I really do. And it's something you should definitely do. And I think it's great. I think it's a great way to do it. He's drinking us for fuel. Psy Vampire confirmed. Look, all right. I have a person to show you. And I just, I'm just going to show this to you. you find this. His name is Colin Robinson, all right? I'm going to show you this man, and you're going to understand immediately. I, I may look up to this guy just, just a little bit, all right? Just a little bit. If you've never seen this man before, you'll, you won't understand what I'm talking about in any way. I do think he is probably the best vampire, frankly. 
He's the most powerful vampire. He works in a corporate office. He's fantastic. He's completely incredible. He's incredible. Colin Robinson is the best. If you have no idea who I'm talking about, you need to watch What We Do in the Shadows. This show is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Colin Robinson is the best, and What We Do in the Shadows is a fantastic show. Yeah. He's great. There was a whole like arc that he did where he started like realizing that he could he could be even more horrifying in the corporate office. It was the best. Absolutely the best. Love that show. What was that? I need to be right back. Give me just a minute. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, so... <laughs> ferrets do this thing where they're having a heart condition, um, where they, they, they do a scream. They do a scream. And one of the ferrets just woke up. He was sleeping, and he barked. And then ran down to the bottom of the cage and laid down. And I was like, oh shit, are you okay? And he was just having a bad dream. He's fine. He actually had his heart checked last week. I, I had to call Shay and be like, yo, dude, is this ferret Okay. Because, like, that's something we have to look out for. That's something to always check for. Is a, a bark or scream sound from them can mean heart failure. So, like, the moment that happened, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I have to stop for a moment. Yeah. They do it in their sleep, usually. And then, um, but no, he was just having a bad dream. His heart was checked last week. He's totally fine. So, I just had to, I had to double check immediately. Because that's not a, that's not a wait kind of a thing. It's like, oh, is there a problem? I need to go. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He had the sock dream. He did. Yeah, a little nightmare. He's okay. Nothing's wrong. And now he's cuddling with his buddies. God, this scared the shit out of me. Alright. No fear fist daddy with 500 bits said happy birthday. Heard from no. chat that your baby is zero years old. Yar no. bongos, yar bongos, yar bongos, yar stonks, yar stonks. You're a stonks, dude. How dare you? How dare you stonks in this way? Hmm. Why do we do this? We don't even need lore exists. We don't even need that anymore. We can actually get rid of this value now. Yeah, we can just get rid of it. Not necessary anymore. They changed with in Game Maker Studio. So, like, back in the day, you had to use Instance Exists with Game Maker Studio to check to see if an instance existed. Otherwise, it would it would access the memory of an object that wasn't there and it would crash the game. Now with, when you access the memory of another object, it now does the instance check on its own. So you don't have to do it anymore. And I, I have, like, tens of thousands of calls of this throughout Game Maker Studio. 
that I have to remove. <laughs> like tens of thousands of calls. It's absurd because it, it, we ported this over from Game Maker Studio 1.4. And like, it's just not necessary anymore. Yeah, it's refactoring. It's a huge amount of refactoring removal. But we can't remove it in every instance because some of them are it's actually required still. So I have to do it on a case. Basically, anytime I see one, I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. Eh, I'm, just, I'm going to clean it up. I'm just going to get rid of it. It's good. Yeah. Okay, Obj Clash Light Bubble. Oof. And then this one is Light Base Width. Where's my light variables? Where's me light variables? Wait a minute. Are you event inheriting? You are event inheriting. Oh, that's how we do it. Obj Judgment Wiggle Baron. What are you? What are those? Also, thank you to the dollar twenty-two to the moderators. It's very nice of you. 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 You only asked one question. That's true, but you buffered it with millions of statements. I don't know what mini PC you should go for. I don't do mini PCs. Um, I just build a rig. I do it over PC part picker, to be honest. With you. Two dollars to the moderators. Is this the new counting? Are you guys just counting for the mods now? Is that what's happening now? You guys just donating ever-increasing small, like, one to two dollars? Is that... Okay. If you want to do that, that's great. That's really nice for the mods, so thank you. Uh, that That's fantastic. You're red. You're in a bid war to the mods? Which mod do you want to buy? If you're in a bidding war, who are you bidding against? Who's selling the moderator? And which moderator is it? Oh, here's one. Let me start a fight. You guys ready for a fight? Which moderator is chat's favorite? Which moderator is chat's favorite? Zultralid is not a moderator. It seems like it's between Kronos and Ham. Yeah, let's do a poll for that. Mods, can you do a poll? Let's do a poll. Yeah, Felix isn't even in the list. That's rough. F, dude. <laughs> Felix not even in top three and Zoltralud is F. Zoltralud's not even a mod. Ludwig's not a mod. What? Thank you for the $25 to the mods and the $3 to the mods and $2.99 to the mods. You guys are wild. Thank you. Seriously. I want to see a poll. I want to see favorite mods. No, it's really cool of you, and and thank you for those. It, it doesn't matter if it's a dollar. It doesn't matter, you know, at all. That's very nice of you to do, because every little bit of that counts. Every little bit of that actually does matter, and it's very, very nice of you to do such a thing. So thank you. And uh, because of your guys' donations there, I will let the mods, and I know this is a lot, I will let them smell one piece of bread today. So that's, they get to smell that from the mod pit. One free smell for the day. And I know that's huge. That's huge for the mods. So thank you very much for supporting them. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's what it is. So thank you. Yeah. 20 dollars for mods. Evangeline with five dollars said very busy weekend for me. Mean yourself for me less than three. I hope your day goes super well. Good luck on the house. Thank you. It's a nightmare, frankly. Thank you for the seven dollars and seventy-seven cents the mods too. So many mod donations, you guys are amazing. Give us your daily bread, uh, you get a sniff. You know, it's one. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Mmm, that's weird. I don't know why we're doing this like this. This is weird. I think this is weird. Yeah, it's weird. We don't need all this shit. Let's go in here to Obj Clash light bulb. We're just gonna throw it inside of this thing. Be like, yo. Wait. What?
Oh, that's the light bubble. We don't need that. You object clash lore. Bam. All right, now we're good. Let's try this out. I don't know if this is going to look right. I don't know if it's going to look wrong. I don't know what it's going to look like. We're going to take that. We're going to put it up here. We're going to take Asset Browser. We're going to grab Obj Clash Light Bubble. We're just going to throw it up here at the top. And we're just going to run it. I think it's in the lighting section. What is this one? Who are you? What are you? What is this? Also, thank you for the $7.77 of the mods. Very nice of you. That's the music object, so this is fine. Let's go run it. Is this some sort of visual scripting instead of just purely text? No. It's like, just code. Thank you for the $4.20 to the mods. Banished underscore Aurora with 500 bits said I give this cheer as a thank you. Because of you I got back into writing my book for the first time in months. Proud of you. Keep it up. Can't wait to read it, man. She3N with 500 too. bits said can the ferret avatar duels end with ferritality written above the final attack animation. Ferritality. I'd love to see that, to be honest with you. I think it'd be funny as hell. Why is this not working? Why? Wait. That's why, isn't it? Let's try it. Let's try this. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't, know, I don't know if it's going to work. Thank you for the $13.37, hacker man. To the moderators, you kick ass. Ignarius underscore Val with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, I love hey. the streams. With a lot on your plate, you seem to do well balancing your many responsibilities, dev work, ferrets, inflating the price of the demo, etc. <laughs> I am a father of two who is going back to college for CIT after a short sales career that I found didn't fit the family lifestyle or their emotional needs. Yep. Do you have any advice for balancing life, college, family, or general outside the individual needs, work, and learning to code? Yeah, 100%. I think the biggest thing, and this is kind of a simple one, but it's something everybody overlooks, is when you're trying to balance anything with family, when you're trying to balance anything with work, when you're trying to balance anything with income, anything like that, all of this stuff comes back to the same thing. Communication. You have to talk to people. Talk to your family members about your goals. Because something I think a lot of people forget, especially in relationships, you are a team of two individuals. You're not one unit. You're not one person. You're a team of two individuals. Two of you have different aspirations. You have different ideas. You have different things that you want to accomplish in your life. And you are on that journey together. But you can have your own individual goals. And supporting each other and getting those goals is a big part of that relationship, right? So if you're wanting to do something and it's not fitting the emotional needs of yourself or your family members, communicate that. Try to find a way to do this. Sabotage your teammate for promotion? I don't think that's how it works. But like to be real with you, talk. Talk to each other. Talk to each other about everything. Talk to your family about stuff. Just set those goals. And to be real with you, see if they can help you find stuff. Because if there's something out there that fits for you, and it may be a little bit more time obligation but you get to spend more time with your family later on or more quality time with them, better time, you know, weekends and things like that. This is all stuff to communicate. It's all stuff to communicate. I find too often in our kind of current societal direction, people just don't talk to each other. There's too many things that are like, like you have to feel this way or, or we're not friends anymore. Like just, nah, dude, don't do that shit. Right. And I, I think that's, I think that's absurd talk to people really really talk to people and i think i think any type of communication is going to fit that kind of stuff it's it's hard to lose when you're all on the same page i think it's the biggest thing man it's hard as shit to lose when you're all on the same page did chronos win chronos won little ham almost won why is felix last damn felix you're gonna have to get those numbers up what happened what happened felix all the way at the bottom. This is going on your permanent record. Yeah, here. This is actually Felix's permanent record. It's right there. And, um... Yeah. That's unfortunate right there. That's that's going right on the record there. I'm actually... Here, let me, let me just snip this real fast. And we're just going to put that in your file. Yeah. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. <laughs> Thank you. 
Is that going to be in my name tag? I mean, yeah. Radthor Dax with 500 bits said congrats on the Thorporation. It was Thank fun you. spreading democracy with you earlier this week, and yeah. looking forward to Ashes Alpha 2 later this year. Aruku, my brother in Vibrugs, I hope you're doing okay with your hug withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> so funny i'm actually gonna be doing more democracy um i actually released a twitter post about kind of my feelings about the game about like the update because it was very upset at how, how many people were there when i was actually playing playing uh the democracy when i was playing helldivers and i was i was actually mad at the game who was there for that because i was i was irritated with the game really irritated with the game so i said it was pretty irritated playing uh the game recently after these changes but event is very nice addition because what they're doing is they're doing an event to unlock robots which is cool I think it's a fantastic move. Having the players become a part of unlocking new content, awesome move. And I do it in block game. It's the exact same thing that I do, is let the players run an event. When the players run the event, it works great. CC didn't break on my end. It is, it is Google's end. It is their fault. It will come back. Don't worry. It does every time. So with that in mind, everyone was like, this guy must use a railgun. He's just a casual gamer. Blah. Yeah, I'm level 50. I'm level 50, and um, I only run the most difficult hell dive missions because I, I run it on maximum difficulty that's all i do so no and i don't even use the railgun i never did so memes so i said for all the people in the comments talking about meta breaking being a good thing that i'm wrong i don't use the railgun and i'm not irritated about that change said the change to armor did not unlock additional gameplay options heavy armor has an insane lack of mobility which absolutely outweighs the bonus to survivability in all scenarios outside of a defense mission during high difficulty play there's no reason to use it and I, I think that's the biggest shame for me. So this leads to a new meta in Helldiver difficulty, which is essentially use light armor, run in a circle, and cast stratagems. My hope was that the armor fix would unlock new gameplay, not enforce a boring meta like this. Also, as cool as the flamethrower changes are, the fantasy of that weapon doesn't come through for me. Normally, I would see a flamethrower as a chaff remover, so like small enemies, yet it doesn't stagger hunters, aka hunters turn into fireballs that leap on you. This isn't great feeling. So... The feedback here is constructive. It's meant to be like a, hey, I am a player of your game. I care about these things. These are the things that bother me. And I'm going to tell you about them as a dev. And people like that, right? There were still people in there that were like, you don't even play the game. You don't. I'm, level, I'm doing level four missions and I have no problems. So you shouldn't have problems either. No, that's not how it works. Everybody gives feedback. And that's, that's the whole thing. There was also somebody in there that said, you shouldn't give feedback on the armor because it's not finished. And it, it, if you give arm feedback on the armor now, then it's in an unfinished state, and that's not fair to the devs. No, dude. No. Give feedback on the game. Always give feedback on the game. Always. Developers need the feedback to make proper decisions. I have been making games for 20 years. Do not leave the developers in the dark to how you feel. Just don't be a dick about it. Ever. Always give feedback. Always give feedback. What is this, Iron Mouse? The rating party... 7,185. My God. That is a lot of that is a lot of people. How's it going? Yeah, I'm gonna play this. Yeah. How are you doing, Iron Mouse? It was fun democratizing with you earlier. I was actually just talking about democracy. There it is. There it is. Yes. I was excited about this event. Look at the bongos. The bongos are indefeatable. Undefeatable, indefeatable, indefensible. You cannot stop them. That's right. Also, for all you new people, my name is Thor. I've been in the gaming industry for 20 years. I used to work at Blizzard Entertainment, then Amazon Game Studio, then the United States Department of Energy. And I quit. And I make video games on the internet. And I teach other people how to do the same. So, if you want to make a video game, hang out here. If you don't want to make a video game, hang out here anyway. It's nice to meet you. And I spend most of my day answering as many questions as possible and generally being a dork. Because being a dork is fun. It's true. I'm working on a game called Heartbound right now. Yeah. Also, chat is incredibly fast and filled with bongos. It's impossible to read out. Let's get some yard democracy. You need a yard democracy in there? Yeah. I also run a ferret rescue here in Washington State, so if you like ferrets, stick around. Because I got ferrets to show you. A lot of them. We have five new ones introducing themselves to the rest of the colony today, so that's fun. Ferret. Ferrets. Yard democracies. Look at them, dude. By the way, that emote was made by Rubber Ross, and I actually tried to do attribution on it. I don't think he actually... Oh, God, I can't even click up there too fast. Wait, 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 wait. He didn't accept the attribution yet. Rubber Ross, why? 
accept the attribution. I want to put your name on it. You made it. It's cool. Ooh. How old am I? 36. And now that I've said this, Chad is going to respond with, Oh, I'm sorry. Because when I was 33 and I was streaming, so this was three years ago, some kid came into my chat and he said, How old are you? And I said, I'm 33. And then he said, Oh, I'm sorry. And then he left. And I, I never recovered. I died that day. I've actually been a ghost ever since. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been a ghost ever since. I'm actually dead now. It's true. Hologram. Hologram. Rent free. Yeah, there's permanent, actually. Permanent emotional damage. Permanent emotional damage. How do, how, did you guys have a good time over an Iron Master stream? She's very fun. You been an AI? Not an AI. You'll never prove it. I am a real, normal human being. And I'm not an AI, no matter how many times you guys say this, you come into my stream every day, you try to tell me that I'm an AI, try to tell me that I'm not real, that I'm pre-recorded, that this is all a fake, and you know what? I'm getting sick of it. It's ridiculous, and I can't... Look, look, it it happens to everybody at this age, all right? Don't, don't make it weird. It'll happen to you. It'll happen to you. Don't make it weird. It's not weird. It's not weird. It's not weird. It's fine. It's normal, all right? Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Totally, totally human, Tia. I'm worried. Don't be worried. Don't be worried. All right. Go back to the normal music. Let's do... No, wait, no. Let's do... No. That one. No. Chicken. There we go. By the way, all the music you hear in the stream is from our game Harp on. All of it. We make it all in-house. And I have something on here. This is really important to me, actually. How many of you guys are streamers? How many of you guys stream out there or make YouTube videos? Mm hmm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How many of you? You know how awful it is to find music for that? It's horrific, right? To find music that you're not going to get DMCA'd for. So one of the things that we did, the Heartman OST is actually 100 songs in the OST. It's three and a half hours of music, and we own all the rights to it. So as long as you're not directly re-uploading the music with no other content, you are free to use the songs in this OST in any videos or streams, whether they're monetized or not. I'm the one who files the DMCA's. I will never come after you. Ever. Ever at all. So if you like the music, you can use the music. A. Hey. Righteous Jammies with 500 bits said hello Thor. You hello. may not know me, but I know you. I just got back from walking to RMC Donald's at 3am. Unfortunately their other means of access were inaccessible. After picking up my order, I went to a Waffle House and they kicked me out because I wanted to eat there. What? On the way home I also changed the lights to the opposite of the flow of traffic. I'm hoping to pass my official Florida man license test, but the last person set the bar high, they threw in Gator through a window. <laughs> what is this message? I don't understand any of this. I'm so confused. I'm incredibly confused by this. It's very- it's- you know what it is, Florida man. I can't replay it. It's already cursed enough. I have no idea. By the way, if you're wondering how the stream works generally, so people throw bits at me and subs at me and stuff, or throw bits and stuff so that they can get onto the TTS. Um, when this happens, you actually go into a queue. Nothing is lost. It goes into a TTS queue. We actually have the queue here, so there's 42 people in the queue right now. All the actions are here in store. I press the button. It eats your message. It puts that message up on answered TTS in the Discord. So that way there is your name, it is the question, and there's a timestamp on it. Anyone can look at this, anyone there. If I don't get to your message by the end of the stream, which does happen because there's a lot of people, then I don't keep the money. I didn't earn it, and because I didn't earn it, I don't keep it. So it goes into a debt queue, and we pay that out to charity. There's currently $8,271 in the debt queue, but I can't pay it out until after the house resolves, which should be on the 11th. And then after that happens, I can start paying money back into charity, and we're going to do $7,777 to likely the Godot Foundation, which I'm kind of excited about. That would be very, very cool. So yeah. 
Uh, all of this is transparent. The last payout that we did was actually here for the Ferret Dreams Rescue and Adoption, which was $7,500 done to them to make sure that, you know, they could keep operating in Colorado, which I was very excited about. Yeah. So I, I never... I never have anything that's not transparent. Transparent shit is like super important to me and it's all automated. It is luxury and automated so that we can give money to cool causes if I don't earn it, right? Did you hear they hit affiliate? Hell yeah, that's awesome. They should. Good job for them. Sick. I've actually been talking to them quite a lot. All hail Holothor? No. No. Not Holothor. Not Holothor. That's so sick, Pog. But wait, there's more. Who here hates ads? Who here hates ads? I hate ads. Ads are really good for channels, though. And the reason why is because it gets rid of pre-rolls. And pre-rolls are super shit. Like, super, super shit. So, what we do... Get rid of that. <laughs> what we do is we actually pause for ads. You're about to see this in about 10 seconds here. The ads are going to go off. You're not going to miss anything. I wait. On my streams, the ads. The only time I can't is when it's a sponsored stream or we have live gameplay that I just can't stop. Like Helldivers. I can't stop during Helldivers. And that's it. There it is. Hi, Bezos. Ads. Now we wait. It's not Joe Rogan, you goblins. I swear to God. Any Helldivers today? Maybe. I have a sponsored stream at around 5 a.m. in about an hour, so I gotta burn the queue as quickly as possible. Mark Hoyer with 40 rupees said your thoughts on the Dune MMO. Dune MMO, I am excited for. Very excited for it. You have no idea. You have no idea. Are you still continuing developing Heartbound? What do you think is on screen? <laughs> My man, the game is getting worked on on screen right now. Yes, I'm still working on Heartbound. I'm building a new lighting system for this room. <laughs> Is it though? I swear to God. Got an ad for a new Roomba? Nice. How long is the sponsor for? Three hours, but then I have to end the stream. I'm actually streaming a short amount of time today. It's only going to be about eight, no, nine hours, which is not normal for me. I normally do about 12. So I don't like having short streams. That bothers me. However, I have to go handle adult house things, which is gross. So. Why is the BB and J sandwich talking to me? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Played Heartbound 2, it's really good. There's no Heartbound 2. Do you stop development on block game? Specifically for you, yes. Everyone else gets patches. Yeah. Are you the major dev or the solo dev? I own the studio and I'm the programmer, writer, and designer for Heartbound. Shay does the art and animation and Stein does the music and sound effects. There's no, there's no Heartbound 3. There's no Heartbound 2. It's all one game. Why are you like this? All right, the ads are over. Welcome back, ad people. Welcome back. Congratulations. You survived. You survived. It'll be back in 30 minutes. The horror, I know. So with that in mind, I do have something to show you that's kind of cool. Uh, something that ads do. That is really neat. There's currently 1,019 people watching this stream right now. Shay has the camera turned off onto the wrong camera because it looks like he's still cleaning up the room. But... This stream is actually our ferret rescue. We run a ferret rescue in Washington State. And if we go click on this, I can show you what they look like normally when they're out doing playtime. Where's my videos? There we go. We'll grab this. Uh, I'll find one. There we go. So the entire room fills up with them. They get to go wild and have fun and go crazy. And uh, we have 33 ferrets in the rescue. And we save them from euthanasia. So if they are up to be euthanized, where they, they have a medical condition that is usually not recoverable because of cost. We save them. And they come to us. We pay for all the medical bills. We do everything we can to save their lives. And they get to live a long, happy life with a bunch of other ferrets as a result. And that's the whole deal. Do they go? Why do they go backwards through the tube? Because they're usually fighting somebody else. Ferrets are very... 
very aggressive to each other. And they do that specifically for social hierarchy. They get to have fun with that, right? They ever get sucked in the tubes? No, no. So the tubes are large enough that that will never happen. And that could be dangerous. How did you start this? Well, I originally was doing this because I liked ferrets a whole lot. And then uh, people really wanted to see them. And then we started streaming them. And then we found out the ad revenue on it was massive. And I was like, oh, shit. So I have started telling other rescues about this. Like, hey, go stream on Twitch. This is a really big deal. Like that thousand people on there, that pays for the entire rescue. Like the whole rescue. She's cleaning some stuff off of the floor right there. But this, this pays for the entire rescue. And we have 33 ferrets, which is not cheap. What time is playtime? Usually every day around midnight and noon is the idea. We're we're going to be moving soon-ish to try and get things set up. Um, I have to build some infrastructure for the internet at the new place after we get it. And then um, from there we get to go from there. And I'm going to be building a new website for all this too. Yeah, soon TM. They are super cute. They're ridiculously cute. They're also goblin animals where they shit on every wall and scream and fight. That's what they do. Yeah. Midnight at which time zone? PST. PST. Yeah. We're coming through, right? Yeah, the goblins will arrive at the new house, too. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, no, this is this is kind of what we do with this. And um, we've been able to save a lot of animals because of this. So thank you for watching it. And you don't have to give bits or subs or anything. It is paid for by ad revenue. So if you watch the channel, you are paying for it all, which is nuts. So how do you remember who's who? The masks are slightly different from each other. Yeah. How do you transport them? In a wiggly box. And they wiggle a bunch. Hey, low level learning. What's up, dude? How's it going? Next alert. Cthulhu with five New Zealand dollars said you have inspired me to start drinking more water and cut down on my consumption of sugary drinks. Good. With the money I save, I'll be able to buy the demo. Who made you this way? You know you don't need to be this way. You know that, right? It did not need to be, it did not need to be like this. Obj player parent was missing. That's why this thing's a piece of shit. Where's my parent? No object. Uh, Obj player parent. I'm glad you're drinking water though, dude. That's a huge deal. I stopped drinking soda. I started drinking water. I lost 80 pounds. Nice. You know, I used to be fat. I used to be 265 pounds and I'm six foot two and I'm 180. I feel awesome. Yeah, I lost 80 pounds. 80 pounds. 80 pounds. I can't stop drinking monsters. Stop it. Stop doing it. Yeah, no, seriously. I was 265 pounds. I had the 50 chin, you know, that kind of a thing. And it was just soda. And the reason why this changed so much for me was not drinking soda anymore changed the way that things tasted. After maybe like two months, it changed everything. And like, it was such a weird thing for me because suddenly cucumber was sweet. It was like candy. And I was like, that's weird as shit. And I was like, I like cucumber now. Started eating stuff like tzatziki. When before I was like, oh, that's cardboard on cardboard, man. And like all of that stuff changed flavor. So I didn't have to go on a diet. Stuff just tasted better. So I wanted to eat it. And now when I eat something that has sugar in it, it's disgusting. It's like oversweet. It tastes bad. So like when that changed everything, the way that everything tasted, I just eat better now and the reason that i eat better is because i stopped drinking soda it was the cascade effect 100 percent. and like now i cook for myself all the time i only eat food that i cook for myself i don't eat garbage i don't drink soda i feel great i feel great all the time it's just corn syrup america corn syrup uh, why no tea i don't know i just don't i drink water orange juice and, and cranberry juice and like ovaltine that's like it and even that cranberry juice i get it like the tart cranberry juice not the like 50 grams of sugar bullshit that's like basically jello yeah it's gross i diagnosed thor with good job thank you chat md yeah it didn't now games with six canadian dollars and 99 cents said why indie games is making more impact than triple a games in video games market because we take more risks there are so many times where AAA refuses to take a risk, they try to do the safest option, and it ends up being the most boring and shitty option. And they try to rely on things like microtransactions instead of just making a better game. If you make a game and you make it affordable for people, they will buy it. And when you bloat the development costs into the sun, the only option you have to recoup that is by using predatory microtransactions. And that's it. Any games just suck, the entire market disagrees with you. They may suck for you, but there's a million billion people out there that don't agree with you, and that's why our industry exists. 
Ain't gonna call out Diablo 4 like that? No, I can. Very easily. When you are selling a microtransaction for the cost of an indie game and a half, what are you really doing? There's no reason for it. A microtransaction for a skin in a game that's $15, when most indie games cost 10 bucks. Of course people are going to reject that. Immediately. Of course they're going to reject it. That's always going to be that way. Alright. Next message. Sorry for the spam. Are you... Wait. Sucks about some of the TTS not being played. Is some of them are questions that someone may want answered for advice, like mine? My dude, it's complex. Do you see the pinned comment? Answered and timestamped in Discord in the Answered TTS channel. If the queue is too large and your message isn't read by the end of the stream, it will become debt on the Debt Tracker channel in Discord. Thor pays his debts to charity when that value is $7,777 or more. You have to read. It's right there. You just gotta wait in the queue. Everybody goes into the Somewhat exact same time. Somewhat underscore eccentric with 500 bits said Yar cheer 500 hello Mr. Streamer, I just Hi. saw your short about the fear of VTubers. Did you know Flash Gordon is a VTuber, too? Because Flash Gordon is rapidly approaching your location. Wait for no. it. Flash no. aha savior of the universe. Flash Gordon has arrived. Anyway, have a nice stream. Peace, ghost car. You're a piece. You're a ghost car. Why you like this? You know, I know what went wrong here. I forgot to event inherited this. There we go. Rabj. Flash Gordon's terrifying, though. Lounge King okay with, with $5 this. said YouTube's VODs are more persistent than Twitch's. Yes. You should think about changing the answered TTS links so they are usable longer. That's not a bad idea. If we use the YouTube VOD for that, they would last forever. I'm going to look into that. We're gonna change that system. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Travis underscore brag with 500 bits said I'm curious about Steam Listen servers. I'm attempting to create one and having trouble getting connections to work. Do you have an experience with oh. the service failing to be found or the game being sent directly back to main menu upon server creation? Steam Listen servers. Create one and have trouble getting connections to work. Do you have an experience with the servers failing? I've actually never used Steam server system. Anytime I've made anything for server client interactions, I've built my own servers for that. So I've never used Steam server system. The only time that I've ever used Steam's like storage for any of that kind of stuff was specifically for leaderboards for Champions of Breakfast, and I never had a problem with it. Their documentation is like insanely extensive. If you go to partner.steamworks.com, they actually list all of that stuff. Like everything in like crazy extensive. Also, depending on the engine that you're using, you may have built-in plugins specifically already to manage those connections. So I would look into that as well. Uh, but yeah, using Steam servers for anything outside of that I haven't done yet. Yeah, Steam's awesome. They give you all that shit for free. It's so good. Did I mess up the camera on this? I did mess up the camera, didn't I? Uh, wait a minute. How did we not screw this up before? Hmm. Let's go find out what's going on in those rooms. I think there's something that I did that was unique in there. I don't remember what it was. Where's my dark world? Judgment. You. Inside of this room. Let's go look at the inspector. What is your viewports and cameras? Viewport zero. It's set to on view. So, if that's the case, why is our camera binding weird? Why are why mad? Why mad, Chet? Why mad? <clears throat> if mad, no makes sense. Why mad?
Why not mad? Mad works. Uh, why mad? Something about this is weird. Fix the camera. You. You don't need that anymore. Oh, we have to unbind the camera, don't we? We do. We do have to unbind the camera. Let's take a look at this. Stand up. Wiggle. That's our wiggle. And then afterwards we stand up and the animation at the end of this, we fix the camera again. Animation end, fully standing. Aha! It's broken. -ed -ed. That's why. That's why. And we don't need this anymore because that's unnecessary now. We love breaking stuff. I love breaking stuff, chat. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's try it again. Thor hates wiggling. Uruku can confirm. When somebody's sitting there vibrating rapidly while they're trying to hug you, it's horrifying. You know that. I know that. There's no intelligence. No, it's Game Maker Studio. No idea what's happening. I'm creating a, a cutscene. You'll see in a moment. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna walk out of this door and then it's gonna happen. Look at it go. And... It's still broken. Why is it still broken, Chad? What? Upsetting. 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 Why is it broken? That's why it's broken. Have you tried snapping to reality? I have to snap back to reality. Unfortunately, we haven't passed reality yet, so it's gonna take a minute. You know, we gotta we gotta pass it on the road first, then snap back to it. Not ready yet. Soon. Yeah, and then after that, how are we gonna handle the gravity? Right? Because Oh, there goes gravity would happen right afterwards. I don't I don't have a solution for that yet. I'm not ready for it. And then mom's spaghetti. What are we gonna do with that? Well, that worked. Kind of. His head's a little bit weird. He's vomiting on his sweater already. Dude, who's gonna wash that? Not gonna be me. Palms are sweaty? No one wants that. Gross. Mom's spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti, dude. How are his knees, though? I hear weak. He's been skipping leg day. Yeah. His arm's heavy, too. It's not good. Dude's got a medical condition. Has not been. It's spaghettitis. It's terrifying. Needs to see a doctor. Okay. You are the one we're... Wait, did I mess up this one? No, okay. You go away. You are the light bubble we're working on, Clash. You have a problem. What is the location for this? Obj player parent. Obj player parent. Why are we doing it there? Why am I dumb? Chat, why am I dumb? Who made me dumb? Who did this to me? Chat, dude? Oh, damn it. 
Can't believe you've done this. Can't believe you've done this, Chad. You had to make me dumb. Insane. Hmm. The Wiggly Boy has done wrong, and I don't know why. Ah, light offset. That's the reason. Where's me light offset? Where's me light offset? Where's that go? Inside the option player part. So light offset Y is the issue here. What is light offset Y inside of this object? Hmm. Hmm. Could this be the problem, chat? Could it be? Also, thank you for the $20 to the moderators. You kick ass, dude. Supporting those mods. Oh. It was that. I'm a genius. I did it. I love that he looks like a tiny schlatt. Listen here. That was not intentional, actually. It's really funny, because now that you guys have brought this up, I can't unsee it. The game has been out. It's been like seven years of me developing this, dude. And like, it's very funny to me that he looks like Schlatt now. And there's nothing I can do about it. Because it's just Schlatt in the game. Like, <laughs> like, look at him, dude. I can't unsee it either. It's just, it's stuck in my brain now. Like, look, I'm going to grab this. All we have to do is give him a freaking mustache. And it's the same. And he's just in there banning 90% of his community for funsies. Like, <laughs> it's just schlatt, dude. It's just schlatt without a mustache. And like, I can't do anything about this now. I mean, it's been years. He's like iconic now. Like, lore is the way that he is. Give him a mustache? Okay, well, I, I've tried this before. It just looks bad. Here's the problem with pixel art, right? Like, he looks like a duck now, right? It doesn't work that way. Give him a curly one. It'd have to be like that. Like, now look at him. Now he looks like he's trying to sell you, like, timeshares or some shit. It's not good. It's not one pixel higher. Now he looks like a hippo. Look at those nostrils. See how this shit doesn't work? Yeah, this doesn't... It's not good. It's not good. He's selling you snake oil. True. Watch. This is why Pixeloid is insane. See this? Changed the whole face. Now look at it. Now it's creepy, isn't it? Now it's weird. Now it's sarcastic. Now it's horrifying. That's one pixel difference. Changes the whole goddamn face. Pixeloid, man. Not even once. Insane. Thank you for the $7.77 the mods. You kick ass, dude. Mario's mustache was a miracle. Mario's mustache was a miracle, frankly. It's bonkers to me. Nevilnav with 500 bits said, Yarchir 500, hello, Mr. Pirates of Twer. Hope you're hello. well. I just want to thank you once again for inspiring the community, including to make stuff. Keep well, thank B. You. Thank you very much. Keep B? Wait, what do you mean keep B? Also... I'm unpinning the TTS messages because we're going to be going into the sponsored stream in like 30 minutes. So I'm going to try and burn through as many of these as possible. Tired underscore fan with 500 bits said, Hey, oh, Thunder God. My Whoa. group project has to research devs and studios, and I chose pirate software. Any oh. general info you can give about your studio? If you have a whole bunch of stuff that you want to ask me for like a, a class, please put in a mod ticket and then we can do that. Yeah, what are we sponsored for today? Is to play a video game. Actually, we're going to be playing that in a little bit. I'm kind of excited for it. I'm going to start at 5 a.m. We're going to go to about 9 a.m. And then I'm going to go handle business human things, which sucks. So we're going to do that. Yeah. But yeah, no. Crimson, Crimson Raven Montague. 85 Montague. with 500 bits said, Hi, Thor. I hope Hi. you and all the goblins are doing well. I wanted to thank you for being such a passionate dude and actually doing things to make the world better in your own way. 
Thank you very much. I can only do it because of you. So thank you for doing what you do. You're awesome. Ian Beers with $5 said I might be a little late to this, but did you hear about Akira Toyama? I did. I did, and it's really sad. And um, there's not really much we can say there. You know, like... It, it was the thing that I was talking about earlier is... The person may have passed on. But that legacy lives forever. There are so many people now that make animation because of Akira Toriyama. There's so many people that, that love anime because of this. There's so many games that got made out of that that have changed people's lives and changed, you know, the direction of that. Shay loves the hell out of out of Dragon Quest, dude. Loves the hell out of it. Like, there's so much stuff like that that's just like, people got into games because of those games. People got into anime because of that shit. And like, yeah, he died. He died. Uh, I think it was today or yesterday. Yeah. Really unexpected, too. And it's just one of those things, man, like, Dude's going to live forever. Dude's living forever. And I think that's kind of nice. Even though this happened, right? March 1st, according to Wikipedia. It must have happened like a week ago then. Just they didn't talk about it till yesterday today. Yeah. Yeah, it just announced yesterday. It makes sense. Massive legacy. So like as, as heartbreaking as it is, like that impact doesn't go away you know i think that's important uchwal prakash jajodia with 40 rupees said have you played road 96 no i think you should stream it i don't even know anything about the game road 96 what is this an er ever evolving Hitchhike your way to freedom in this crazy, procedurally generated road trip. No one's road is the same. That's interesting. I like that. I like that. What are we sitting at in, in reviews? 91% positive. Alright. Yeah, I'm down with that. That sounds cool as shit. I'm linking this in chat. There you go. I'm into that. What are you cutting right now? Lighting system instead of heartbound. I actually just built it out, so it looks nice. It's just this intro piece. You'll see. WL Blazkowicz with 500 bits said, Hi, Mr. CEO, Secretary and Director of Pirate Software. Hello. Regardless of the fuck-ups, I hope you still had a lovely Thursday. I did. Question, I heard you wanted to do a community DND thing. Now I if I have some ideas for this, and other possible community events, where would I best be able to suggest this? If it's welcome, um. of course. Also, mod quick tip for Holland, if you want a quick drink, don't go to the coffee shops. They have what? a whole different meaning here. You're awesome. Keep up the great work. What? What's the meaning, chat? What do you mean they have a whole different meaning? It's a weed shop? You guys have a thing there called a coffee shop, but it's actually weed. Really? Really? Why? Why is it called a coffee shop? They do decent coffees too. Is there a legal requirement to do that? For them to like have to have to do that? That's so weird. If you call it coffee, no one knows. It's it's all legit. That's so weird. That's such a weird thing. Here they just have the shop. You don't have to care. That's such a strange thing, though. I think it's very interesting. Legitimately interesting. I find that to be funny. <laughs> In, like, some weird way. It's weird. <laughs> funny, but weird. Uh, let's go pull this up. Next. FA771N9 with 500 bits said hello Thor. I am hello. betting on myself right now. By the time this TTS comes, I should have finished doing my cursed quest. Where should I post it for evaluation? Cursed also ticket. keep being awesome. That's the whole effect. 
that's what I spent today doing so far. And soon, I'm going to have limb darkening going around this, so we're going to go do limb darkening in a moment here. And then it deletes it at the end of this, which is great. It's great! Animation end. Oh, actually... That's a memory leak. That's a memory leak. Now it's not. I gotta fix that. I gotta fix that. Yep. Alright, now that's fixed. That's a bad memory leak. How can you tell? Um, we are instantiating a surface, which is a memory-driven object, like a data structure. And then we're not deleting that data structure, we're not clearing the memory, because we destroyed the object, and the object was set to remove that memory on room end, which means when the room is over. So because of that, we were keeping that layer in memory permanently, which is not smart. Yeah. Yep. I was like, oh, gross. Gonna keep burning the queue. Merge you still with 35 end, right? South Gotta African Rand said, hello, Mr. Software. I was Whoa. today years old when I found out the demo is free. Hmm. I need to make some awkward calls to find out if I can buy back my kidney. You can't. You can't. It's permanent. Zoltra Lord took your kidney away. It's true. Unfortunate. Abby 55 Watcher 97 with 500 bits said Yar cheer 100 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 safe scumming. I prefer role playing as a chronomancer. It's not a chronomancer, you're safe scum. You save scum and you know. Scum Lord. That's right. That's right. Scum lord. Sheba underscore king underscore with 500 bits said, Did you perhaps get a white and sable mask females named Zero and Loki? Because you may very well have my pair that I had to surrender last year. No. Did not want to name Zero and Loki. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We, we named two of them Loki and Snails, but we never got any that came in as Zero and Loki. Um, many rescues do come to us, but not every one of them. And that's slowly changing. We're trying to become the primary intake for all ferrets in Washington, is the idea. That's the whole point. If you don't want people to use the save system, why include it? What do you mean if you don't want people to use the save system? What are you talking about? What? When did I ever say that? <laughs> what, dude? HPF3 with 500 bits said, Yarchir 500, do you think you would ever play an Outer Wild story mod called Unnamed Mystery? It takes place in a completely different solar system and seems to be pretty good. I had recently discovered the world of Outer Wilds mods and had to share, also there is a mod jam in a few days. Mod link, https colon slash... I'm gonna save chat from the, the hell of URLs. But yeah, no, I had, I had no idea. I don't even know anything about the modding community for Outer Wilds. I played the game directly, and I had a blast. I actually really enjoyed it. And, um... Yeah, it was super fun. Super, super fun. I'm just joking, man. Kick W? What? Are you talking about saves coming? That's why I'm so confused. I was like, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm so lost, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, it has a unique atmosphere. It's um, it's kind of brilliant, to be honest with you. It's really brilliant, frankly. You just played Sec Secrets of Grandia? Yeah, I have. Loved it. Many streamers love Outer Wilds. The reason why I love Outer Wilds is kind of unique. Don't watch my video of it. I don't know that's super weird. I have a video of my entire playthrough up for Outer Wilds and the DLC. Do not watch it. Go play the game first. I even told people at the beginning of the stream, I was like, if you haven't played this game, do not watch me play this today. And we lost like 20% of the audience. Because you can only play Outer Wilds once. 
And it's incredibly important. I don't give a shit if we had less viewers. It is important to go play that game. Because if you if you watch it, you can't really play it. And that's crazy important. Like, crazy important. So yeah, it, it was something like 3,000 people left. <laughs> it was a lot. But like, I think that's more important than, than having 3,000 more people watch it and have the experience ruined for them. Because that game is brilliant. It's really, really well done. It's a single trip. Yeah. It's one trip and that's it's your story through that one trip, you know. What's the game about? Go play it. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin anything for you. It's a fantastic game. Give them the eyes. Here, when somebody asks about what Outer Wilds is around about, you just do this. That's all you do. You do a little. Where'd it go? Where'd my face go? Do it. There we go. That one. That's all you do. Anytime anyone asks about Outer Wilds, you do that. <laughs> they know. What do you think about RPG Maker? Fantastic engine, dude. Really good shit. See nothing? I'm doing it over the YouTube side too, it says. And if you don't know what that means, go play the game. Seriously. It's phenomenal. The game is fantastic, dude. <laughs> nice spider, dude. Alright, next. Khan Shen with 5,500 bits said between cooking up your game, heartbound with MMO block game mod, and caring for, for the ferrets, you are super wholesome. Thank I you. wish we have a lot more people similar to you. You do. People just don't know about them. And I think it's something really important. I'm not the only one being like this. I just whole ass the whole thing. That's the only difference. There will be others. In fact, there are others. Find them. Support them. Many of them are in this category. That's why I keep telling people to go and watch other people as well, not just me. You'll find other people that do really cool things that no one's ever heard of. The internet is vast, like a big ocean. But it's also very small, like a single room. <laughs> oh. Arthiana with 500 bits said I'm getting into game really development fixed. and want to make a game that is based on an advanced crafting system for potions. That's cool. I want herb gathering and processing to be the main components and stunning visuals. Which engine has the best perks for that kind of system? I'm currently between Unreal Engine and Unity and I'll be a solo dev for this. Go play Potion Craft. 100%. Potion Craft is brilliant, dude. It's exactly what you're talking about. It's phenomenal. I enjoyed the shit out of this. In fact, I need to play the rest of it because it's just so good. It's exactly what you're talking about. Exactly what you're talking about. Go play Potion Craft. Look at it. See what engine they used. Take notes. Because, like, Potion Craft is brilliant, dude. It's so well done. Incredibly well done. Very addictive. Very fun. Very interesting. The progression system is fantastic. I love the hell out of it. Potion of Dudes! Yeah. You have to use the Potion of Dudes when you're playing Helldivers, though. That's how you summon more dudes. You use Potion of Dudes. They don't tell you that, but it's true. Yeah. Empfish2 with 577 bits said, Hello, my Goblin Lord Thor. Hello. I know that you do don't like game publishers, but I was wondering what your take is on Mad Mushroom. It's a game publishing company that was made and run by OTK. They made it cause they were not agreeing with how other game publishing company did their thing. So you see this quite a lot. Um, many times a publisher doesn't have a name. And a publisher without a name that's trying to do marketing for you generally doesn't work out. Now the reason for that is because if a publisher is handling marketing activity and you've never heard of the publisher before, how are they going to market your game? If you've never heard of them and nobody else has ever heard of them, then clearly they're not doing a very good job marketing. Very rarely, you will find a publisher that actually does have a name. Mad Mushroom is one of these. And the reason why is because all the streamers that are a part of it that have really big names to help amplify that message. This can be incredibly effective. This can be incredibly valuable, right? But something that you should always... Yeah, Devolver Digital, that's another example right there. Devolver Digital is another example of a name having meaning. Whenever you deal with a publisher, no matter who it is, no matter who you think it is, no matter, you know, what you think of this, the publisher or the people involved with it, you have to remember one thing. Do you think that they're going to make you more money than they cost? That's it. That's the equation. And if you don't know the answer to that, then you don't need a publisher. And if the answer is no, then you don't need a publisher. That's it. It's a very simple equation but it takes a lot of training and math and understanding of their business model and everything else to get to the answer that you need. And if it does work, 
if there's mutual benefit where they're going to make money and you're going to make money, your players are happy, you're happy, they don't put any undue stress on you, everybody wins. And reaching this goal is the optimal. So it really comes down to, do they have the things that you need to market your game or, or support you in the capacity that you need to? And do they reach the goal where everybody wins? And if the answer is no, then walk away, no matter who the publisher is. And I find that to be incredibly important. I, regardless of which publisher it is, it's always going to be the same equation. And the answer is always going to be different for every one of you. So be real about it, you know, always be real about it. And there are no guarantees in marketing. If somebody promises you the world, they're selling you something and it's not the world. All right, next one. Ferret's crashed. Tempest I'm deal with 500 bits said I'm just about dipping my toes into IT security and red team stuff. Nice. Earlier Thid week I joined my first ever capture the flag and it was fun as heck, even if I got my butt kicked. Good. I understand some of the concepts and terminology, but I don't know how it's executed or how to defend against it. That said, can we get a live demo of an XSS exploit? Maybe. Actually, I give you something even better. You don't need a live demo. I'm going to give you the tool and you can do the demo yourself. Here's Google. Google's XSS game. Google actually has their own thing called XSS game right here where you can go and do XSS, cross site scripting, live on there. I should probably add this to the resources under the hacking channel. If you want to know more about offensive security, I actually have a section right here. If you go down to channels and roles, choose hacking. And after you use hack, like choose hacking, this is going to give you access to the hacking section of the Discord, which we will go to video, voice acting. You won't see all of these. You'll only see the hacking one. Go to resources. Read these. Read these. Do this. Do this. These are free resources. Grand majority are free. Are you eating that? What are you eating? What are you eating? I see you eating over there. What is that? See that? See all that eating? I'm looking at it. What are you eating? on to you. Come on to you. I see all that eating. I see it. What you going to share? You're eating the demo? Don't eat the demo. Don't eat the demo. That's my phylactery. If I die, that's how I'm going to come back, dude. Don't eat that. It's important. Don't eat that. Don't eat toes. That's gross. You're gross. Gross, dude. Blaine 20 yeah, with $10 said Discord. I played and coded for Ancient Anguish Mud for two decades. Damn. Thumbs up, I'm currently working on making a mud engine in Go. That's freaking rad, dude. Melody the Fox with 500 bits said, Ya cheer 500, do you have any advice for self-teaching for someone who never really learned how to study, learn properly? Yeah, to be honest with you, I, I didn't know how to study, learn properly either. The, the biggest thing that I can tell you, sit down at your desk, put a rubber duck on your desk, put a, put a small hand, whatever it's going to be, something on your desk, right, an object and teach that object the thing you're trying to learn. Sitting down and teaching someone or something else the subject matter you are trying to learn will allow you to learn that so much better. It is phenomenal. And do it out loud. Say the words. Yeah. It works every single time. It is phenomenal. Yeah, rubber duck strat always wins. Always does. And it's, it's something that people just don't realize is that simple act of teaching someone else or something else the subject matter it lets you retain all of it. It's crazy. Yeah, rubber duck is great. It's the best way to do it. And I, I found that to be highly effective for me. Um, sitting there and, and just kind of absorb the book into your brain and try to remember it all and crunch. Nah, dude, screw that shit. Teach a duck. Teach the duck. It works great. It's phenomenal. Duck straight rocks, dude. Rilo with 500 bits said, I currently work a finance analyst job and enjoy what I do, but my proficiency on finance isn't the best as it is my first job off college. Okay. I'm great on the valuation, narrative side of things, but terrible on technical, math side. Any advice as I've always been scared to take the CFA exam, as although I want to take it to upskill myself, I've always delayed taking it on fear of failure as exam fees are high in potential embarrassment from my colleagues if I fail. Take a mock test. There's a whole bunch of mock tests for that, specifically online, that I know about. So take a bunch of mock tests until you feel comfortable doing the mock testing. There are always mock tests for those types of things. And on top of that, don't be afraid to fail. You, why do you have to tell your colleagues about it, right? 
Failure and on exam, the, the fees being high, that's dangerous. That sucks, right? And I understand that. And it's important to take that into account for sure. But mock tests, you can just do infinitely. And if there's any areas that you don't feel comfortable about, go and practice those areas specifically. And it's totally fine. Though we're going to say as an unfinished teacher, it is caused by your brain starts to process what you just learned. And as it consumes more effort than just read, you have more chance to have subject to the long-term memory okay i see what you're saying yeah because you're talking about it can anyone join your discord yeah discord.gg slash pirate software there's about eighty-five thousand of us in there no joke there's a lot of people and i have it split up into subject matter interests so the different roles that you choose give you different access to different areas of the discord and you can close those or reopen those at any time you want that's the whole point yeah Stellastat with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, did you see that Aya released a bunch of the classic games on Steam? I did. Among these, they released the full Command and Conquer collection, all 17 yes. games, on Steam for $15 with some nice updates. HTTPS. Oh, I got Kotaku. I'm not linking that. But yeah, um, I actually went and bought them all. Uh, they were 10 bucks, and it was like 17 games. All of Command and Conquer is up on Steam now. All of it. Why look, there's a million billion more people joining the Discord. Mark has resolved increased activity. There we go. There are now 86,000 people on the Discord. Insanity. Insanity. There's so many. Generals is in there too. Every Command & Conquer for $10 total. Nuts, dude. It's not a hashtag ad. It's not. They're not paying me anything. It's freaking awesome. I love Command & Conquer. <laughs> Nam free less underscore god with 500 bits said so it dawned on me that you look like young Skrillex and now it's stuck in my head. Oh Thought no. I should share. I'm Skrillex at home, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Skrillex at home. By the way, Red Cyber Dragon, thank you for the rating party at 21. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you. Cabbage Patchwork with 500 bits said ya cheer 500 hello Thor, Wormish Regits. I have one serious question for you. Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had, you'd, you would, you could, you'd do, you'd wit, you want, you, you could do so you, you'd, you could, you, you want, you want him to do you so much you could do anything? Interesting. So a player in block game has done something really weird. They wanted to siege another person's town, but they didn't want to fight them directly. So they put alts in that person's town under the guise of being a different person. They declared war on them. And then when that other town was offline... They use those alts by getting on and purposely dying over and over again on those alts to make it so they build up enough of a budget to say that they won the battle. So here's how I'm going to handle this. You're permanently banned from the game. That's how that works. That's dog shit. That's a horrific thing to do. Play the video game. Don't do that shit. You're banned. You're permanently banned. You know who you are. You're, you're done. It's over. Done with you. This kind of behavior is awful. Horrific. Legitimately. Yeah. Ridiculous to me. The hell's the matter with you? <sighs> Banned from the Discord and the stream and the game. Gone. What level of dog shit behavior do you have to think about to think that that's okay? Like, really? It's a, it's a free Minecraft server for people to play on. And you have to do this? Really? Really? Insane behavior. 
Blows me away to see that kind of shit. That's why I hate PvP. Well, they're banned. Yeah, no, not just banned. Banished. Hermid. Gone. What did he do? So, there's some rival towns that are here. Rival towns. Rival nations inside a block game, right? That are fighting against each other. And um, these guys, Team A, couldn't beat Team B in a fair fight. So what they did was they, they took alts. And under the guise of being a new player, got alts into Team B. And then declared war. And then while war was going on, they used those alts to bring them out and instantly die over and over and over again. Because dying in PvP during a war actually gives points to the attacker each time. So they did this over and over and over again after specifically doing this. This kind of behavior comes from EVE Online. I played EVE Online for 15 years. You do that in my community, I ban you. That's how that shit works. Like, play the video game. Don't do this shit. Full circumvention of game mechanics there to be absolute garbage. Not acceptable. Same as using real-life information for in-game advantage. You do that, you're gone. Easy. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's really disgusting. Ben. What is this? Whoa, we got scared. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, Badger. You always get so twitchy and scared. It's gonna be all right. Whoa. It's okay, little man. Here, I'll hold you like a baby. Is that good? No, you hate it. It's like, I want to leave. His name is Badger and he gets a little scared sometimes. I think he has trouble seeing. Yeah, he's got lots of trouble Yeah. He's got a little bit of trouble seeing, so because of that, when things move, he, he kind of freaks out a little bit. He panics. But he's very excited. Look at him. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, he does. Little bit of scared. He has some trouble seeing. How old is he? I don't know. Because with the lens thing... Maybe three? Three to four. His genetics might be bad. Yeah. Where's Peepo? In the other room. Sleeping around. Yeah, everybody who's involved, like, to be real with you, everybody who's involved with that behavior in block game, you're all permanently banned from the community. That's, you, you know that's never acceptable. You, you know that that's, that's awful, frankly. I don't even need to say it. It's insane. Crazy to me, dude. All right, next. Buddy Hull with 10 New Zealand dollars said I found you at the lowest point of my life. Hmm. You have inspired me to push through adversity. I've just applied for a government grant to start a business and get off a medical benefit all thanks to you seven. You're awesome as hell dude. Keep it up. Seriously. Arctic Sloth with 500 bits said hey Thor I'm currently in my last two years of university and will shortly be entering full time employment. Hearing nice. you talk and discuss the way you and your colleagues do things is so refreshing. Thank you for being transparent and motivational, you gobbo. I'm only able to do that because of you guys, and the mods are only able to do that because of you guys. So thank you for making this possible. You guys are awesome as shit. Seriously. I know that's... A lot of times it's just words, but... I really mean that. Uh, streamers and what we do, we are held up by our community. You're, you're my real boss. Horrifying, I know. <laughs> Sasuke underscore Kudo no, with Felix, 500 no. bits said, Hey Thor. Hope Yarl doing good laughing face. I've bought Heartbound and played it for the first time. Thank you. The only achievement I got was, he works in AAA, and the longer I think about, the more I got the feeling that this ain't a good achievement LUL anyways. I wish you and everybody much success and luck for the future Yar Heart Yar Cheer 500. Did you find the secret where I mowed somebody else's lawn? There's a lot of really interesting ones there. Boop VR with 500 bits said hey Thor, just bought the demo and was wondering, do you think you would ever experiment with making 3D games in the future? Maybe, yeah. I wouldn't see why not. I really like 3D games. I think they're quite cool. I just always make 2D because I really like the pixel art. 
Guitar Guru 6 with 500 bits said I think I've heard you mention what DMD in the past in a short. Have you ever DM'd and if so do you have any advice for a first time DM? First time DM, don't be afraid to be a dork. I know this is kind of weird. Don't be afraid to be a dork. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and kind of act really silly because it adds to the environment and adds to be fun. And don't be afraid to do this in a way that is entertaining for everybody else involved because some people can really enjoy this sort of, you know, back and forth with the DM. And you'll find that being rigid as a DM is generally looked down on. People want to have a story with you. They don't want to have just your story. And d and is about a collaborative experience. So be be flexible on the story. Don't be rigid on it. Don't railroad them. And also, don't be afraid to be a dork. You're playing d and You're already a dork. I'm a dork. I play D&D too. I understand. Like, we're dorks. Just be a dork. It's fine. It's great. Akasabaku with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, love your streams. Any thoughts on the sweet baby ink stuff? Dude, I don't know anything about that shit. What is that? Hell is sweet baby ink. Narrative development consultation studio based in Montreal. Dude, I don't know shit about this. Everyone's saying abort. Game consultation backseaters? Wait, wait, no, no, no. We don't abort, we don't run away. Alright? We're hell divers. And we run into we run into the enemy. Head on. That's what we do. Alright, until we blow up. And then we drop a grenade and explode gloriously. That's what we do. So what happened here? For democracy. All right, yeah. Up, right, down, down, down. We're doing a 500 kilogram bomb right there, I see. Good. You think I don't know the stratagems, please? Sponsor time? Yes, in a moment. Stupid gamer, gamer stuff? Gamergate stuff? I'll look into it. I'll actually look into it, because here's the thing. Like, I, I know people like to shy away from dangerous stuff, uh, about hot topics and things like that. If this is directly related to the games industry, which it clearly is, I'm going to go do some research and I'll talk to you guys about it probably tomorrow because I think that's that's appropriate. I'm always down to talk about things, especially when they're spicy. Like, there's nothing wrong with that as long as we can talk about it and not be a bunch of weirdos, you know? I I, I find that it's, it's valid to talk about these types of stuff. It's a conspiracy theory? Cool. That's even better. I love Mothman. Hell yeah. Research first. Default die with 10,000 bits said oh! I think I figured out how there to send is. bits. You did. I threw out some silly message about making my own 2D game engine, framework, and game after tinkering in the field for two years in C++. That is an outrageous amount of bits, dude. And I, I think that's cool as shit. If you want to make your own game engine, you totally can. But understand a couple of caveats here, right? The big one is why are you doing this? And you, you, have, to, you have to really be serious about this. Are you doing it to learn? Great. Good idea. Are you doing it because you need an engine that has features that don't exist anywhere else in the market? Right? There's no other features. Like, there's there's no other place in the market where those features exist. Good. That's great. That's a great way to do it. Are you doing it because of ego? Because I'm so cool because I made my own engine. Only real developers make their own engines. No, you're a dumbass. Don't do that. So if you're just doing it to do features or learn or anything like that, these are very positive reasons. Incredibly positive reasons. And uh, just don't do it for ego. That's always my big, like, cautionary tale is don't real devs don't make their own engine like we make engines because it's a tool and we need a tool and that tool is very specific because we want to learn something or because we need specific features and a good example of this is noita noita is a great example of this let's go look at noita real fast noita is brilliant look at this this game every pixel every single pixel in this game is a material every one of them this game is insane Custom engine. And the reason why it had to be a custom engine is because every pixel is a material that interacts. It's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your life. Never seen anything like this. It's bananas, dude. Yeah, Noita is incredible. And like, they gave Powder Game a, t gave it a story. Powder Game was made by the same dev. So yes. 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 And the dude who made Bob as you worked on this too. That's also true. And also streams on Twitch. His name is Hempuli. Yeah. So, like, this stuff is nuts, dude. 
Like you, you see that turn into an F, a full game, and it's just crazy to me. It's incredibly clever, but like it required a custom engine to make that performant because, dude, that runs like shit on anything. That runs like shit on anything. So, like, that's important to understand. If you look at NOLA games, right? Noita is their big thing. They formed a studio to do this, and it's brilliant. Brilliant game. Graphics are incredibly good. I'm going to link this in chat. Yeah, Twitch integration is great. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Powder Game was them, too. Let me go look it up. Noita Dev made Powder yep, Toy. I think it was Powder Toy. Yeah, because this was called the Falling Everything Engine. I think it was Falling Sand Game was the original one that he worked on. I'll have to look it up. There was a specific sand game that they worked on. But yeah, the engine is called Falling Everything Engine, which is nuts. Was it Powder Toy? Was that what it was that they worked on? I couldn't remember if it was Powder Toy or Falling Sand Game. There was something that they worked on together with this ages ago. Yeah, the engine is called Falling Everything Engine. Yeah. It's freaking rad. Oh. Yeah, because there was a whole thing with that, of like they worked on a powdered toy kind of game before that. Sand game. Yeah. This game with the unbelievable grenade death? Yes. Also, it's ads time. And then after ads time, we're going to play a video game. A sponsored game. So I'm going to switch this over to sponsored. And then we're going to start a video game. And I'm going to get all the things set up. Because there's a lot of things to set up. Because it's a sponsored stream. And sponsored streams have a bunch of FCC rules that I have to follow. And are horrific. So I'm doing them. Soon it will be hashtag ad. True. Vidjajam. Sponsor. Sponsor stream. Sponsor game. Oh god, everything just crashed. Wondrous. We get to listen to this music while it goes on. While I'm setting up all of the stuff. Please, FCC. All right, let's see. Copy. Tweetor. Give me a moment. There are so many things to do. Let me tell you.
I've got almost everything done, chat. We're almost there. What time's gonna buy? PST. It'd be really cool if Twitch's UI was, like, really responsive. That'd be awesome. If you could, like, click on things. Hey, look, the button worked. It did it. Branded content. Clicked. Done. And now I go over to YouTube and I do the same thing. Where the FCC eats me alive. And I don't wish to be eaten alive. As such, I will escape. Ah, I forgot to do something. Edit. I'm fixing it now. We're almost there. Just let me log in, please. The timers. Let's see. All right. Did it work? Let's see if it worked. You, Batuba? Your voice is amazing. You're amazing. We did it. We did it, chat. We have it all done. I can end the music. And get ready. We're almost there. I'm going to put the tweet out. Posting it. The tweet is out. The combat looks super compelling, actually. Turn-based combat, dude. We're going to have a blast. I think I have everything set up. All the things are done. I've hit all of the objectives. Good. Music for the game begins. One moment. Nice. There it is. Now music- now video for the game. Music ended. Behold! So today we're gonna to be playing a game called Stolen Realm. This is a sponsored stream. I am interested in getting into this one specifically because of the combat system. So that's something that I'm very interested in, actually. Combat systems are really cool to me. This is a turn-based combat system game, and I love me some hex grids, dude. I actually really like hex grids, and I love low poly. So, like, this game looks sick. And, um, if we go and do this message here, I'm going to pin these in both channels. Pinned. Now it's pinned. Done. Now you guys can have it. But yeah, it looks really clean. I like stuff like this. He hexagons are best of guns? I agree. I agree. I'm going to be playing this until 9 a.m. We have a hard limit at 9 a.m. today, unfortunately. Normally I would stream till about noon, but I have to go do real human things. It's terrifying. All right. So, Stolen Realm. I want to play the campaign. They have a roguelike option too? Wait a minute. Yes. Can I go back? I can't go back. I have to create a new one. Character preset the best suits as a starting point for the character you want to make. Dude. Pyromancer? Not even just a wizard. An actual pyromancer. This is pre-recorded? You're pre-recorded. It's true. Okay, hold up. Cryomancer, Priest, how many build types are there? Holy shit. There's so many different builds. Is that someone are using a... a gravestone as a shield? I mean, I have to play the summoner then. How could we not play a Necromancer? <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you. I've never seen a necromancer that uses a, a gravestone as a shield. That design philosophy is freaking rad. Yeah, it's really metal, like really metal, dude. Uh, 
embrace scalopathy. We're doing scalopathy. We're doing it. My man says, 13 might. Increases the power of damage and healing skills for you and your summons. Wait a minute. Okay. All of these bonus us on both ourselves and the summons. That's awesome. Good tooltips. Summons deal 10% more damage and have 10% more health. Can I change skills? I cannot change skills. Next. Nice. Let's be incredibly pale. I think it... Mmm. You know... Blue man. Greenman? John Greenman. How many head types do we have? Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at that. That's freaking sick. What is his hair color going to be? John Greenman. Greenman Blackbeard. Dude, look at all the hair types. Oh my god, there's a ton of them, actually. I actually really love the low-poly design on this, too. It's just really nice and familiar. Dude, he kind of looks like a badass now. He looks like an orc. How many eyebrows can I get? The powerful monobrow. Look at that. Look at him. Wondrous. Kind of like that one. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Wonderful. Wonderful. Body art color? Oh, we can change the body art color. He's like corrupted now. Now it looks like a scar. I like that. Look at all the weird heads. He's got scars all over. He looks all beat up. I want chips out of his eyebrows, dude. The largest beard. Yeah, you know what? This is good. This is- this is good. I want to give him weird hair, though. He's got to have, like, really weird hair. That's kind of a weird hair for him. Kind of a top knot going. Done. That's as disheveled as I can make our man. You want the ponytail? I feel like the ponytail was pretty good. I agree with that. Alright, ponytail. Done. This is him. I've chosen him. Wait, what's his name? What are we naming him? John Greenman. The legend of Greenman starts today. I agree. Zit. John Greencorn. Oh, dude. The Green Goblin. Green Goblin. Hmm. 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 Gordon Greenman. This is good. Goblin Lord. Goblin Lord. Oh, wait, no, no. John Goblin Man. Eh? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, wait, no. John Boblin. Boblin, dude. Now we have a good name. John Boblin. John Boblin. His name is chosen. Are you telling me I could be a necromancer with a two-handed axe? Holy shit. In hardcore mode, if your whole party dies in battle, your characters are permanently deleted. I mean... I, I mean... I, I mean, John Boblin, you'll live a good life, but maybe not a long life. Let's do it. I love that they have this. Hardcore characters delete upon the party's death in battle. Are you sure? Damn right, I'm sure. Damn, damn right. Tell a character to the party, select a character tile. Wait. 
I can make more party members? Hold up. We need a tank. We need a tank. Oh, man. Okay, hold up. We're building a party, dude. We've got John Boblin. We gotta make all the other ones, too. All the Boblins, dude. Venomous skin. Causes the skin of the target to secrete poison. Attacking enemies receive three stacks of poison. I like that. Brambles to block four hexes. Attackers will take physical damage when striking the brambles. Last four turns. That's good. Zone denial. Summons a raven, coyote, or raccoon to fight for you. I can summon a raccoon. Done. Next. Jill Boblin. Green. Jill Boblin. Give her a mohawk. Yeah. Mohawk and a... More cut eyebrows. Done. There we go. Jill Boblin. Facial hair type. N.A. No beard. What are they? Oh. Oh. Can I not do the hair color for that one? Oh, the eye type. There we go. There we go. Jill Boblin, dude. What is this character again? What are you? <laughs> was this our druid? I think this was our druid, wasn't it? Hardcore. Yes. Jill Boblin. John Boblin and Jill Boblin. Next. I think it's crazy that they have that on an individual basis, dude. This feels like a Joe Boblin to me. What do you think? I feel like we need to have a warrior, though. Oh, we need a priest. We need another one. What are we naming this one, dude? Give me Bob Boblin. Bob Boblin. <laughs> Bob Boblin, the priest. May he live for a while. Hello, Bob Boblin. I hope you survive. He also gets a staff, doesn't he? Because he gets might and intelligence. Yeah, we need that. You. Oh, I forgot. Oh, no. Oh, no. How do I delete him? I'm sorry, Bob Boblin. I've made a mistake. You were supposed to be hardcore. Bob Boblin. I'll remake you. It'll be fine. No one will know the difference. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Bob Boblin. You're fine. Hardcore. Yes. There we go. Another. We've got our priest. We've got a summoner. We've got a... Do we have a monk? So monks are really interesting because they're... It looks like they're about moving, moving enemies. We could set up a zone denial and then push enemies into it. Which might be really useful. But we also want that range damage, dude. Hmm. But also... What are we going to name him, dude? Oh, you know what? You know what we need? Tim. There's some who call him... Tim. That's right. That's right. God damn it, I keep forgetting to do this. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. It'll be fine. Tim. Hardcore. Done. Yes. Tim is the odd one out. Just Tim. Just Tim. We need a warrior. What are we going to name the warrior, dude? Because he's just going to be completely covered in armor. We should have a, like a, a brick house warrior, right? Lex. Name him Hob Boblin. <laughs> Hob Boblin. 
He's a hobgoblin, dude. He's the strongest of them. He's the hobgoblin. It all makes sense. I'm fine with this. This makes the most sense. Large beard. Big hair. Hobgoblin. He looks like a thumb. Powerful. Two-handed axe. Hardcore. Yes. Alright, we need one more. We've got a wizard. We've got all of our other dudes. What are we getting? A thief? Pyromancer? Ranger? I think we need a ranger. I think at this point we need a ranger. Or a cryomancer. Ranger or shaman? I think ranger's the right choice. You want a physical range damage. Game difficulty increases the party size? Perfect! We need more. What do we name her? Another Boblin, chat. What do we name her? Robin Boblin? Oh my god, Robin Boblin. Done. Robin Boblin. Easy. Easy. Short bow, hardcore. Let's rock. Behold! Game difficulty scales with the number of party members. Wonderful. Heart of the realm. We don't really know how to survive this difficulty. Perhaps you will. <laughs> oh. You like pain. You know how to build the perfect team that uses skills and tactics to devastating effects. I love the amount of difficulty options on this, dude. You're not new to tactical RPGs. You're experienced and ready for the dangers to come. Yes, that's me. I don't know enough about these systems to do these ones yet, but this is me. I have played many. Going all the way back to the early days of... That was encouraging. This is hilarious. I love that they have different dudes on here, like Casual is a skeleton. Heart of the Realm is like a wizard, you know? You understand the ins and outs of tactical RPGs and the specific dangers that look in Stellar Up. Veteran it is. Veteran it is. Heart of the Realm, do it, coward. I refuse. Move up to and activate the portal to start a new quest. I'm doing it. Main quest. Defeat Blood Mask Boss. Mm -hmm. I love that it just starts you in real fast. Okay. The start of any adventure is taken not with the feet, but with the heart, your father would say. That's nice. I like the narrator. Hello. Haha. <laughs> oh. I may have made a mistake, chat. When a battle starts, you can place your characters in strategic positions. Select a highlighted hex to place your character there. Okay. What is that? Holy Barrel. Explodes, dealing healing and envelops the area in holy ground. Frost Barrel. A Shaman Shrine. Recover 10% of maximum mana each turn. Neutral. Take 10% of your max light health and shadow damage per turn. A Decay Shrine. Okay, so there's environmental hazards and benefits. That's kind of interesting. There's a lot of dudes on this map. Dwarven Totem. Your attacks have a 20% chance to stun the target. Okay. John Boblin. What are you? You're going to get a Shamanara. That's cool. You're our Druid. You get to stand there, too. Bob Boblin, who are you? This is our priest. You definitely need to be in there. I feel like this is going to blow up and kill me, though. I feel like that's going to happen. Hey, Tim. You're going over here as well. And then you, Hob Boblin. We're going to have Hob Boblin stand right there, because he's next to a healing thing. And Robin Boblin. Robin Boblin, you're having all the way over there. That's how that's going to go. Confirm placement. 
I did hit confirm placement. Was that... Oh, I have to confirm on each one of them. There we go. Confirmed. All right. Fracture, bash, and charge. Charge this to the target and deals 16 to 22 weapon damage to all enemies in your path. That's cool. How many times can I do this? AP cost is one. Can I just keep doing this? Oh, there's mana cost to it. Interesting. Have you ever played Chance played... No, I haven't played that. I've never seen that. Confirm placement and end turn are the same button. No, I don't think it's a problem. Transfer a movable object to the battlefield. Lowers target's resistance by 20% for two turns. Interesting. Oh, it is a bit cut off. Let me fix that. Why is that cut off like that? One moment. What the hell? How is that even possible? Whoop, whoop. Here, let's do this. Weird. The game capture's cut off. Sorry about that. Fixed. Very odd. Weird technical issue. Alright, let's see. Knocks the target back up to three hexes. Let's see. Requires melee weapon. AP cost one. Range melee. I think this is a good idea, because we can knock him back. Here's the interesting part. Can we see a reticle to see how far back he gets knocked back? Does he get knocked back this way? I'd have to stand here and maybe knock him back that way. Because I kind of want to knock him back into this. Because this does 10% of your max HP and shadow damage per turn. That might bring him out of the edge of it? I don't know if it will. Nope. Looks like not. Nice. Fracture of blood. Alright, now we're good. Now you. Poison cloud. Creates a poisonous gas cloud that applies four stacks of poison within two hexes to select the target. Okay. We're gonna raise a skeletal archer. It lives. Sick. I'd like to make this obnoxious over there. Begin. Poison Cloud. Oh, so that's only a one cast. I thought that would actually go off and, like, sustain. So I guess that's not. That's an instant. Alright. It says duration three turns, but it doesn't look like it has a graphic going on. Six Necromancers? Dude, I wish. Nature Summoning. Summons a Raven. Sick. Yeah, get him. A Coyote was summoned. Causes the target's skin to become an ally to secrete poison. Hobboblin, I wish to do this to you, but I can't. Let's do that, and then... Now my skeleton has venomous skin. Hilarious. Let's make a wall of brambles. Now it's more obnoxious to do this. And then move back inside of this thing. Alright. Bob Boblin. You are gonna cast Shield of Light. Actually, can you not move through people? You can't move through people. Hmm. This is a problem. Go this way. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, shield of light on my dude. And maybe... Just for the incoming damage. Now, Tim. Tim, I need you to kill a man. Can you kill a man for me, Tim? That's a big fireball. <laughs> it's too much of a fireball. Burns the target for 6 to 8 fire damage each turn. Can we just light that man on fire? He's on fire. We've done it. Good job, Tim. Thank you for lighting that man on fire. I'm clear. I'm sure that it will go fine. Fire blast. Hama! Heat applied. 
He has heat applied to him and he's on fire. Good. Good job, Tim. Thank you for murdering a man. Well, like, partially murdering a man. Robin Boblin. Jump to the target area unaffected by increased range modifiers. Crippling shot. Deals 10 to 14 weapon damage. Applies slow. You know, I like that. I can't see him. There's a wall in the way. I hate walls. What if we relocated ourselves to... No, that would put her at a disadvantage. We don't want that. What if, what if, you know, what if we just did one of those? And then we did one of these. Hoppa! That dude is getting wrecked. Look at him. Again. Oof. He is having a bad day. I think it's everybody. I think we've done all the turns. This is good. End the turn. Now the enemies get to move. The horror begins. Who's the first on the team to die? Nobody. Oh, we have to end turn for every person. We've done it. The heat is still there. Hobboblin is hurting. Oh god, no! My beautiful skeleton is slowly flying away. Why? Why did this happen? You're so... No. Very sad now. My skeleton is gone. My skeleton is gone, chat. It's upsetting, I know. It's very upsetting. I need him back. How do we how do we fix this? Um so I can't use this weapon again anytime soon. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna chill. Cause my skeleton is dead. We're gonna end his turn. We don't need that anymore. You are Bob Oblin. We're gonna put you over here as well, because you also can't do anything. And then you we're gonna have you heal my bro. Wait. Hot Boblin doesn't even care. That dude doesn't care at all. I'm just gonna have you move over here, get inside of this thing, and get that Shamanara. End your turn as well. Now you, Tim, you have a horrifying spell of death. And we need it. The time has come, Tim. Time for murder. Yes. Oh? Can I just... You think I can just murder this guy? Do you guys think that guy's murderable? I feel like he's murderable. What do you think? All targets in range. I feel like he's murderable. Murdered. He dodged? How did you dodge him? Fine. You have this round. But Tim will be back. And in greater numbers. Alright, melee attack. Wow, that dude is... Get wrecked. Now you get to fly off like my, my Skelebro. Yeah! Axeman. Why are you hurting? Why are you hurting? What is wrong with you? You're bleeding. Oh, that sucks. I should, probably should have paid attention to that a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah, get wrecked. Uh... Fwom. What is that? Lowers cooldowns by one, turns remaining four. Ooh, 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 okay. Hey, Tim. I need you to go over there. It's important. And we're gonna... You're not Tim. You are John Boblin, our necromancer. Who are you? Jill Boblin. Our druid. You know, I'm gonna have you stay right there, and that's fine. And you, our beautiful healer, I need you to do something for me. You need to go up here and you need to save this man's life. Thank you. Wonderful move. Fire blasting. Heat applied. Sick. I think we're good. We can end that turn. Melee attack this dude. Wreck him. Can we move him? We cannot move him. Huh. 
I do love turn-based hex grid, dude. It's so nice feeling. Something about it just feels good. Oh, oh, my boy. My boy's hurting. My boy's hurting. Fracture. Ugh. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna... I have an idea. It's not a good idea. How do I use a potion? Healing potions and mana potions. Okay. Oh. Yeah! Now we're good. And now everybody dies. Get wrecked. That seems fun. Get poisoned, nerd. Skeleton Archer. Shoot that guy. Yeah. Now end your turn. And you... Oh, man. Can we get you... Actually, we'll move you later. We're gonna handle you later. All right. Jill Boblin, you just chill for a minute. I need the Shield of Light. And I'm worried that it's not close enough. It is close enough. Sick. Shield of Light. Regenerate. And our big boy hill. Alright, that dude is styling now. We're good. We're super good now. Nature summoning. Get that bird out there. Yeah, bite that guy. Yeah, Stolen Realm is awesome so far, dude. I'm loving this. This is good. We're still gonna keep you there. We need Tim to do his job. Tim, I need you to light a man on fire from the inside. Can you do this for me? Good job. Proud of you. Don't worry about it. It's fine. He, don't worry about his family. Just... Let's just not talk. We'll talk about it later. It'll be okay. I'm gonna end your turn. Robin Boblin. I want you to shoot this man in the leg. Crippling shot. You know, we're just gonna leave him there to burn to death. Gonna start shooting his archer buddies. His mage buddies. End your turn. I don't know if we can get up there to venomous this guy. No, we can't. Oh, we have to end the turn. Alright, this is fun. Oh, he's dead. Nice. Smash this dude. Crushed. This is good. This is good. Nothing can go wrong now. We win. They're on the run, Chad. Cleanses all debuffs. Refreshes cooldowns. These can completely change the outcome of a match, by the way. I love the idea of doing that. I think that's brilliant. Of adding, like, objectives in the map like this. I want to blow that up to do shocking lightning damage. I wonder how much the range is. Is it one or two? I'm not sure. Okay, I want to I want to do a, a learning thing. We're going to do a learning thing. I'm going to move you all the way up here. We're going to use this to cause that to detonate. So healing applied on this guy, it looks like, but it didn't apply on that guy. Okay, so it looks like it's a two radius. So you can see this is where it was. The holy ground is there, and it looks like it's a two radius distance. Yeah, it's two. So that's good to know. We're gonna end his turn. Pretty sure we got this dude handled. Funk. Alright, end that turn. Oh, I can almost reach. Can't quite reach. End the turn. All right, all right, this is fine. I'm just gonna chop that dude to death. That's cool. He didn't need his life, you know? He flew off into the distance, it's fine. Ha! 
Hobboblin. Get Fire Blasted. Ooh. I'm interested in knowing what the debuffs do. Let's see. Elemental resistance is reduced by 5% per stack. Last three turns can stack up to 10 times. That is ridiculous. That's really good. Frost armor cold resistance increased by 10%. Targets in Holy Ground receive healing. So every turn he's receiving healing inside of that. We should probably handle that. That's probably bad. Nice hit. We like that. Make that man poison covered. No escape for you now, Brambleman. No escape for you now, wizard. <laughs> you just poke him? Alright. Get fractured. You ever just see a wizard trapped? Feels bad, right? Yeah, he's a little bit wrecked. He's a little bit wrecked right now. Let's get another skeleton up. That seems good. Let's just blow him up with poison now. Poison times four applied. That'll that'll go well. Regeneration. Yeah, there's minion summons. I'm gonna put you back in that. I don't think we need to do anything more. I think he's dead, dude. Oh, the staff attack is ranged. Oh. Oh. Look, we got all these items. Iron heater. Armor magic, so it's shield. Sapphire ring, two intelligence. Okay. I got a lot of stuff. All right, how do I use these? For long weeks, the blood mask bandits had scourged the whispering woods of Freewind Forest. Common thumb. Oh my god, there is so much in this. Okay. Okay. That's a lot, dude. It's like these, once mere nuisances on the outskirts of civilization, had grown bolder and more rampant. He doesn't have a weapon now, though. We'd have to switch him over to a short sword from a two-handed axe. I think I'd rather have him have the two-handed axe. Battered heat works cool, but this gives three vitality when that one gives one vitality, right? Something that's worth it. But I will put the boar charm on him because it's two might, dexterity, and vitality. And that is definitely what we want on this dude. Movement points, armor, and maximum health. Yeah. That is, that is 100% what I want out of that. There's so many items in here. Oh my god. I like that a lot. I like the amount of, like, character customization you have here. Because there's so much that you can do with this in an interesting way. I definitely think that giving Tim two extra int is a really good idea, because... For him, increases skill range, maximum mana, and summon health? Okay, maybe that's not useful. What about Jill Boblin? Yeah, I want to look at Bob Boblin. Let's take a look at him. What does Int do for a healer? I think it's fine. We'll do that. Equip that. Up to... So, it's multiplayer up to six players. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. I think that's really cool. Because then you can control each one of the characters. You guys can go and do... Like, it's very rare to have a game be multiplayer beyond three to four in a party game like this. Doing six people is awesome. 
you can go and do your own like D&D style session with your buddies and have that one be your save for that. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. I actually really, really dig this. Exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, the idea of being able to play with your friends is huge on something like this. This is a good game. I like the system so far. We gotta get deeper into them. Is it campaign multiplayer? Yeah, is there campaign multiplayer in this? Can we play multiplayer in a campaign? Does anyone know? Or stab? Oh, so you can just switch between them. Nice. There is campaign multiplayer. That's awesome. I've had this since beta. It's incredible. And yes, you can. I'm very surprised. I'm very surprised so far. It's immensely deep. Like, a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. And I love that, dude. You... John Boblin. There you go. We don't have an iron heater on him. Oh, wait a minute. This gives 15 armor and 11 magic armor. Hobboblin. Let's go take a look at you. This is dramatically more damage. You get plus one movement for this. How do I regenerate this? I didn't realize that I was spending all those resources. You saw me a 9 gag today? That's funny. That's a lot of extra defense. I want to see what his armor is. His armor is 4 and his magic armor is 4. If I wear this... Oh dear god. That is enormous. He's become a god. Alright. Short sword it is. You, sir. Become the thumps. Your damage has decreased, but you are now impossible to kill. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, boy. And I put a boar charm on him, so he has even more armor, by the way. Am I uranium green? We're goblins. Thank you. It's not very high. Wait a minute. Oh my god, wait a minute. You can cross-class all of your abilities? Dude. Dude. That is insane. The depth on that is n enormous. Because, like, look at this, man. Heals 25% of your maximum HP, but look at this one. Increases all damage and healing by 8%. Which means that you can get that, and then cross-class into something like lights, so you can start healing people. Yeah. Like, passive bleed over. I wonder how many points you can get on this. I don't even know what a fortune is yet. God, there's so much here. This game is enormous. I didn't realize the game was going to be this this in depth. It's such a good system. Oh, that's a cool mechanic. Lakes, which were once bustling with merchants and travelers, had now become perilous paths. This forest, a space of untamed beauty, had become a haven for sinister forces. I love that. That's an awesome system. That's a good fishing system. Gold. Everybody healed. Hard battle or battle? Vitality applied to everybody. Another room. Vitality applied to everybody again. Alright, Wolf. It's time. Lot of Timberwolves. Dodge chance by 20%. Reduces damage taken by 20%. Dodge chance by 20% is a big deal, but damage taken reduces... Reduced is a huge, huge, huge deal. Also, stun chance. I'm wondering if it's a full duration, like, one turn stun. I don't know if it is or not. 
But I'm thinking that if we put all of our guys in here, we'll have the most impact. But it looks like that's not going to happen. So I think what I'd like to do is move all of them inside of the Guardian Aura. Because we'll have the most range of movement when we do this. Everybody will be secured and safe. They'll be able to use all of our ranged attacks this way. And we'll be able to rock house, dude. Who's that? John Boblin. Hello, John Boblin. There you go. I think this will work out really, really well. Who are you? There are some who call him Tim. All right, that'll be fine. All right. Confirming placement. Now then, you. Summon a thing. It's a bird! Yes, eat that wolf. Eat that wolf with your bird claws. Good. Okay, now we're gonna do venomous skin. Hobbobblin. And... I think we're gonna end her turn. Skeleton Archer. Fantastic. 15 damage crit. You have a staff attack, but we don't have enough action points. End turn. You. Whoppa! Heat applied. Fantastic. And I think we'll do Shield of Light on my boy Hobbobblin. I think we should do... This is going to be kind of a funny one. I wonder if we can kill our own bird on accident. Can we kill our own bird? Oh, they're almost together in a way that I think it'd be worth it. I don't think it's worth it. Not worth it yet. Not worth it yet, but maybe. Maybe eventually. You. Haba. And I'd like to immolate that one. Burn it up. All right, we're good. I'm really enjoying this, actually. This is super fun. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fracture that guy. That seems fun. And then we'll just hit him with this. Chopped. I would like to crippling shot that one. Because that's an elite. And we want that to be pinned down for sure. This thing's going to die probably in the next turn, I think. Because I think... No, he doesn't have any special effects on him. Alright. We're good. My bird! And now, the age-old meme of, lol, you can't get to me. Get owned. Good luck. And now you're all packed up in a tight little ball. And you know what that means? That means poison for all of you. You know what else it means? My boy Tim is about to have a barbecue. That's right. Oh, it's so good. Barbecue time. Ooh, it's gonna be a good hit. Oh. Oh. Timbecue. Wondrous. And this guy's just gonna chill. You're gonna chill out, man. And here I was worried about the veteran setting. Oh god, they're all burning to death. You fools! You absolute buffoons! He's gonna die. We're gonna have the, the Timberwolf down in a moment here. Yeah! Look at him fly! Look at him go, dude. <laughs> the ragdoll is amazing. <laughs> Did it real dude. The ragdoll is freaking hilarious. That's fantastic. It's just so unnecessary and good, you know?
All right. Another Timber Wolf. Haba. Hey, Tim. I need you to light that one on fire. Can you do that? Thank you. And now you. Ow. Chopped it. I love chopping it. I think we're probably going to hit that one. Nice. And we can end that up. Because that one will die to the fire now. No, my skeleton. My Skrellington. Oh, he's dead. This is good. Everything here is good. We will not waste any more mana. We will instead light everything on fire. We love fire. Hope you're all duper. I'm having a blast. Look at this game. Look at the... <laughs> Just look at the slow motion ragdoll. The combat is super compelling, too. It's really nice and deep. I don't want to fight the Bramble. Who else is alive? Did we win? Oh, wait, there's that. Hello. There's one doggo left. I don't even want to do it. Hop. Ah. Oh no, 11 damage. Oh no. Woof. Woof. Confused barking. We did it, Chet. We beat him. Woof to death. Oh, there's a wand. A wand. It's like a baby version of our staff, though. But it's one-handed. <gasps> Leather jerkin. Ooh. Except... All right, so leather jerkin we're Trouble probably going to put on. Just found its way to Freewind as of late. In recent times, a palpable shadow of unease and fear had begun to creep across the land, casting a dark pall over a once peaceful realm. Is that simple flips? I don't know what's happening for a moment. Shout out to simple flips, dude. You're right as hell. 500k or dinner with Jay Z? I would take 250k. And I would give 250k to Jay-Z. And then we could have dinner together and both be 250k richer. I think that's how that would go. What do you what do you think, Simple Flips? <laughs> Rather unique angle, yeah? <laughs> oh, you're so ridiculous, dude. Oh, there were bots, dude. I did it first there. I was like, what's happening over there? Simple Flips is amazing, by the way. If you guys don't know Simple Flips, he's an awesome content creator in here. The man, the man, the Mario, the legend. And um, also, when I first met Simple Flips, it was at TwitchCon ages ago, and he handed me this. And I've had it ever since. It's true. I have this large bup sticker. An original bup. A real bup. That's right. So, how you doing, man? I'm doing a sponsored stream for this game that is ridiculously good, actually. I'm really quite impressed with it so far, and it's funny too, so it doesn't get kind of, kind of in its own way, you know? I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, it's called Stolen Realm. Do you have a certificate of authenticity? This is the only thing I need. That's right. Super cool guy in the YouTube short says a bub. It's true, because shout out to Simple Flips. Yeah. It's the half a car guy. What is the half a car guy, dude? Is it signed? It is not signed. Ooh. I think we should get treasure this early. Because my dudes are pretty good on man on stuff. I mean, Tim's kind of hurting on mana. Why are you like this? I'm not half a car guy, you goblins. I want treasure. Kingdoms yeah. and towns, once beacons of hospitality and trade had turned inwards, their gates closed to outsiders. Where like banners gold. used to flutter in welcome, now heavy iron and wooden doors stood shut, guarded by wary soldiers. I love this. You heading out, Simple Lips? All right, bud. You have a good one. Thank you for the raid. Thank you very much. I love to have a car, to be honest. You guys are the worst. 
I want to do... I want to probably do an, a normal battle for this next one. I don't want to overexert. Not yet. Oh, it's a bear. That seems fine, right? So you got to kind of keep the fish. Oh, 18 rainbow fish. That's kind of nice. Oh, we're fighting a bear. Hello, bear. Oh, that's a lot of... Guys, this is a lot of bears. Damage increased by 20%. Critical hit chance increased by 20%. I kind of want the damage increased by 20%. So we're going to move... We're going to move our dude over here. John Boblin, how's it going? And then Jill Boblin, you're going there. And then Bob Boblin, you're going there. Tim. Hobboblin. Hobbit a Boblin. And Robin Boblin. It's a lot of boblins, you know? Yeah, Robin Boblin. That's a lot of bear. Forest bear. Destructive. Damage increased by 20%. What does destructive do? Damage increased by 50%. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's a bear. Oh, God, it's a bear for real. That's not good. That's a lot of bears. Dude, there's so many bears. Okay, we got a problem. We have to kill this bear immediately. We have a problem, chat. We have to kill the bear immediately. I have a concern. So, I'm going to use Bash to knock it out of the cool ring, and it no longer has the cool ring bonus damage. And then I'm going to fracture its bones. It is now fractured. This is good. I'm going to end my turn inside of the cool ring, and then I'm going to summon a skeleton archer over there to try and block them from doing it. Yeah, there we go. Good. Good. Then, I'm going to apply poison to all of these bears. I want bears to be poisoned. I'm afraid that it might create poisonous bears, but that's a risk I'm willing to take right now, frankly. Poisonous bears seems terrifying, but this is fine. I think I want to do... No, I may save this. We may save this until more bears are upon us, because the bears are coming, and there's nothing we can do to stop them. I have a deep fear of the bears. Warrior Aura. Nice. Yeah, just beat him up. And we need to put... Probably venomous skin on you. Your skin is now poison. This is going well, chat. We're lighting the bear further on fire, thus enraging it. Tim, your mana is running out, but I need more from you. But for now, just light him on fire. That bear is now at half. What does a crippling do? Apply slow. Let's just slow that bear down. Let's let's delay the inevitable for a moment. There we go. Forest bear is getting wrecked. Oh dear. Oh god. Everything is wrong. Okay, hot bobbling, you're doing good. I'm proud of you. Good, good. Now we can poison all of the... All of the... Oh, we can't cast it in, a, in an area that's open. Okay, we can poison all these bears. It has to be in an open area. Poisoned. Poisoned for days. And then... We don't have any line of sight on you? We have no line of sight on that. Oh god, there's another bear! Where did that bear come from? There's too many bears. Chat, there's too many bears. There was a secret bear. An extra secret bear. Can't have that. Apply heat. Let's put a shield of light on my boy. My boy is powerful now. And then probably some regenerate on him. Survive. We have to kill this forest bear. It's a huge problem. That 50% bonus damage is deeply horrifying. Alright, let's get some maximum effort out of this one. Oh, all the bears on fire. Very good. Very good. How's the skeleton bleeding? You don't know what's inside that skeleton. He could be full of hamburger. Alright. That could be hamburger inside of his bones, and it's leaking now. 
It could also be jelly or jam, strawberry even. Don't judge him. Don't judge him. Be nice. Okay, I think that bear's gonna burn to death now. Which is optimal. Cooked bear. Delicious. And he's dead! Look at him go! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Okay, this is fine. This is fine. We'll just... We'll just do this. Yeah, that was a bad idea, wasn't that? Because now I'm... Out here, and... They're all in... In there. I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake, chat. I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake. I have made a mistake. This is fine. How about we just... No one can see us. Pocket sand. Fantastic. Let's burn that one up. Is Tim hurting? Tim looks like he's hurting. Tim, stop being dead. Stop that at once. Thank you. Let's, uh, light that bear on fire. And then we'll light that bear on fire as well. This is good. I think this bear is going to die. I'm pretty sure. He's got heat. But I don't know if that'll kill him. I don't think it does. He doesn't seem to take damage. Oh, no, he's on fire. He'll die. We have two bear cubs now. Let's, uh... Oh, God. There's so many bears, dude. Let's kill the other bear cub. Yeah. Get out of here. Fly off into the distance. Perfect. This is going well now. This is fun. Oh god. Oh god. Wait. My boy is too powerful. The bears can't even kill him now. Yeah, your baby is gone. Look at him. Ragdolling into the void. Alright, good. Good. Ending that. Uh, I think we can use probably a skeleton. Let's get a skeleton here. Yeah, you use an attack now. That's perfect. And you, I'm going to nature summon whatever this is, and I don't know what it's going to be. Or, alternatively, I will just light this bear on fire. We need to focus fire on something. That one. Good. I'm going to hold on to my mana for now. Good. This is going well. This is going well, I think. Yeah. You know what? This is... This is good. We're burning bears. Ow. Ow. You know... Hobboblin's kind of kicking butts. I'm going to give that guy a raise. Yeah, chop him. Uh, I think that dude dies next turn, so that's fine. One we'll that. Okay, that bear's done. Let's cook the next bear. Regenerative. End it. It's time to start cooking bears, Chet. One at a time. Nice. Oh god. Oh god, it's getting bad. Yeah. Next. Good. I think this is going to work out. I think we're good. Huh. 
but will it be enough? Ow. Oh. My bones. I think we should just finish this guy off. Easy. How did he not die? Alright, fine. Alright, I think we're good. I think all the bears will die. Perfect. These aren't actually bears. Like a Lovecraftian abomination, humanity has forgotten the true name of bears out of sheer fear. You know, that's probably true. I would agree with that. These are just like what leaked over into our dimension from like the bear realm, dude. You know, Tim can really get slashed by a bear pretty bad and it looks like he's doing all right. I'm proud of Tim, you know? He's really pulling his weight, Chet. You wanna grab that dagger and stuff? Maybe? Increases all damage by 10% for three turns. I could do that or I could just kill the bear, right? Like that up there is kind of interesting. I think the big thing right now is this zone increases my damage by 20%, which is huge. So like, as long as I'm in the zone, everything works. Why would you do this? Unbearable. Lightning garb. Max mana, lightning damage, goblin bone necklace. It's made out of you, Chad. It's made out of you. That's right. These woods held a special place in your heart. It was here where you're... Hold up. Hmm. What does Vitality do? Max HP. Uh, armor and magic armor. Minus vitality and reflex. Let's look at these. 15 max HP. Traveler's coat. We have a leather jerkin on right now. That's probably the best option for us. Might and dexterity. Ours is might, dexterity, and vitality. So that's good. Holy power increased by 2%. For mighty heater of the mender. So I think what I'm going to do is we're likely going to go over here to... Jill Boblin? I think I think Jill Boblin is our healer, right? You're a healer? No, you're a druid. You're a healer. Bob Boblin. I'm probably gonna put this on. And then we're gonna use Oh that's cool. Look at the arrows stuck in it. That's freaking rad, actually. I love that. Yeah, that's really neat. And then put a wand on them. Because they get two percent increased holy power, they're already using holy power, and then we can do that. I think that'll work. Goblin bone necklace. There we go. Pearl ring. Resist cold. Plus five percent summon health. Where is John Boblin? 5% summon health. That's nice for our necromancer. Tim needs to look at that blue potion. True. He does. He really does, actually. We've got a lot of rainbow fish, too. I wonder how many potions I actually have like this, though. That's the big question for me. Lightning damage and max mana. I mean, he's not going to get anything from the lightning damage, but that maximum mana is pretty beast. But the maximum mana is probably even more beast for our healer, you know? Yeah, max... Wow, that is... <laughs> Where's his clothing? What happened to his clothes? You know what? That's fine. You're just naked. Powerful. Naked healing, dude. Let's see. Increases summon health, skill range. Who do we have that doesn't have a ring on? 
Maximum mana skill range and summon health. I guess we could put the ring on her. We don't really want to have inventory doing nothing. I think that's the biggest thing. Ooh. Here's the thing. This is not a good helmet for him. But it has dramatically more armor and magic armor. And his armor and magic armor right now is 13. Let's try looking at... Yeah, I think this is going to be the right choice right here. Yeah, 29 and 19 is much better. Ain't ever seen a bear use a bow before? Maybe it will. Magic helmet. Novice gi. All right, I think we're in a good spot. I think we're in a good spot now. Father first initiated you into the grand world of adventure. You would not allow brigands to ravage your sanctuary, to plunder and defile what is sacred. I love that. Let's rest. Everybody good. Mana and HP back for everybody. Perfect. It was a good rest. It was a good time to rest. What is that? So these look like they last forever, by the way. Like, for the entire run? So the more of these that we run into, the better, frankly. Yeah, we have three vitality now, and one intelligence across everything. The Blood Mask boss waits with a calculated patience in a wide clearing. The trees around the perimeter... There was flowers? Oh, no. Amphitheater, setting the stage Can I leave this or no? Confrontation. His eyes, sharp and observant, scanned the surroundings, betraying a hint of anticipation beneath his otherwise composed demeanor. It is almost as if he has chosen this spot deliberately, knowing its significance to you. Ah, there you are. I was beginning to wonder if the tales of your valor were just that. Tales, he gloats. Ironheart believed that you'd come for your father's journal, but I wagered that the cries of this forest would draw you out. God, that's good. This is fantastic. 20% chance to stun the target. Where are his buddies? Dwarven Aura it is. He is... What? 974 HP. We're gonna stun the shit out of him. Let's just stun him. Just gonna stun him. It'll be fine. Just stun him. Just... You know, just stun... Stun the man. It'll be... It'll be good. Everything will work. It'll be fine. Right? Yep, it'll be fine, right, Chet? Right? <laughs> yeah. Get him, raccoon! He resisted. Oh, nice! Multiple hits. We love multiple hits. My boy. Nice, heat applied. Very good. That dude's very tanky, by the way. I'm just gonna emulate him, and then I'm also gonna hit him with a fireball. And then we're gonna end that turn. And you are going to stand here like a thumb. Oh, he has ranged attacks. Okay. The man has two guns for hands. I didn't realize this. I am dumb. He does a lot of damage with his gun hands. I have a deep fear, Chet. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to box him in. There's no escape for him now. You have ranged attacks. I stop you from getting away. Yeah, he cast gun. 
We're gonna shield my boy. We're gonna regen my boy. And then we're gonna fireball my dude. More heat. Additional heats. This is good. This is good. He's got a lot of stacks. Hey there. I thought, uh, you know, I'd come over here and I just... I just stand there, and then I do one of these. And then I do one of- one of these. And then we chill for a minute. Alright, good. You got three poison out of that. Hope that felt good for you. It felt good for me, so... This is good. Yeah, burn him up. How many stacks of heat does he have? So he has 50% reduced elemental resistance now. This is good. He's been poisoned a ton as well. This is working. Fists or gun hands? I'm pretty sure that it's gun hands. Yeah, he's got guns for hands. Which is not good for me, I, I would generally believe. What can we get over here? Restores 50% of maximum mana. We're gonna put our healer through that, actually. Hey, so I need that over there. And you. Bam. Good. And that. Smash him. Oh, God. I knew that was going to happen eventually. Oh, God. No, everything is bad. Okay, hold up. How many health do these have? Blood Mass Bandit. This is fine. We can't focus on the boss anymore. We have to focus on ads. There's no way around it. All right, that dude's getting wrecked, and he's stunned as well. You. All of you poisoned. Perfect. Summon another Skelebro. This is fine. This is good. Everything is good. Give me... Harvey Birdman. Oh, we got a fox. The fox is ripping house. Good. Venomous skin applied. This is good. This is good. Everything is fine. Get that mana. Shield. Regeneration. Is anybody else hurt? Jill is hurt pretty bad. Let's get her back up. Alright, now we're styling. Yeah, that dude just cast send more dudes. That is true. I cast fireball. And... Light on fire, man. And now my dude is out of dudes. This is good. I think this is good. We've recovered. No! He shot my beautiful fox. This is upsetting. I am upset now. That dude's dead. That dude will be dead. That dude's dead. That was a terrible hit. Good. Yeah, this is going well. Let's see if we can end that one. Good fracture. Ow. It's a lot of damage, dude. Uh, that one's gone. Stun. Trying to keep those stacks of heat up on that guy. Nice. Not nice. Finally stunned the boss. Sick.
We now have three Skelebros out. Get our mana back on this guy, and then back in. This is good. This is good. We're in a really good spot. More mana on a healer. And let's just do... Let's just shield her just in case. I don't know why he walked behind, that's funny. That is so many hits now, and every one of those has a 20% chance to stun, too. Because all my skeletons are in there. Good combo. Where's that cast? I don't think we need it. Start cooking this guy. It's time to cook him. This is it. I think we've got this. Get the dagger? I could get the dagger, but it's only 10% bonus damage. I'd rather stay inside of the ring. Ugh. Crunchy. Look at all those arrows, man. Infinite skeletons. This is the way. I could just do a billion different skeleton attacks, too. Like, imagine if I just had three necromancers. Cover myself in necromancers. This is the way. Oh, oh no. More backup. Okay, what are these ones? Mages. It's a mage. Alright. We're gonna burst the mage as quickly as possible. Straight up. And by burst the mage, I mean summon another skeleton. Yoink. Cooked. This is it, Chet. We've got this. Yeah, we're sending dudes. We're sending dudes from beyond the grave. The proper way to send dudes. Oh, oh, making a move on my dude. I don't think it worked out very well for them. What do you think? Wait, what's wrong with him? He's shocked. In incoming critical strike damage increased by 10% per stack. Last three turns can stack up to 10 times. Damn. That is actually brutal. Hobgoblin will be fun, I believe. We all believe, Jet. Never stop believing. Look at him now. Brilliant. Beautiful. We got this. We got this. Absorbed. Sick. Ow. Oh god. What are you gonna do when we kill your boss? What are you gonna do? Your boss is almost dead. And you're gonna be all there alone. How's that gonna go, man? Boss is gonna die. It's happening. It's happening right now. We really don't want him to get that, either. <laughs> Sick.
Nice. Nice. Free HP. If he's going to be stunned for a turn, I'm going to go pick up as much of this stuff as possible. Alright, we're good. Fine, keep your gold. Got him. Yeah, guy really good for the skeletons. Super good. Oh, an iron pistol. Wait a minute. Mortician summon health increased by 2%. Are you telling me that I can give my necromancer a gun? And it makes him better at raising dead bodies. I like that a lot. I, I, I'm really going to enjoy that, frankly. Elusive heater. Bolt what? Twenty physical okay. The remaining blood masks, witnessing the defeat of their leader, succumb to their cowardly nature. They scatter, fleeing into the shadows of the forest. Continue. Amongst their stolen plunder, you unearth your father's leather bound journal. Worn with age, it contains a lifetime's worth of knowledge, gained from his countless adventures across the realm. Memories flood your mind as you recall your final moments with him. As you stand there, thumbing through the journal, I love this. a pit of worry gnaws at your stomach. Your father would not have parted with this, his life's work, willingly, nor in sound mind. Devs, if you're here in the chat, this narration is beautiful. It's, it's fantastic, honestly. Really, really good. The music fits completely with the narration. It's really nice. It's a it's a wonderful effect for this. Really a wonderful effect. Yeah. Yeah, the voice is good. The voice for that is good. The environment's really interesting. I everything fits really well. It feels very good. Like it feels very good. And that's a tough thing to accomplish. Like, very well done. Incredibly well done. what the bandit said was true, then the old mountain king Ironheart might hold clues to your father's disappearance. The journey to Ironheart would be a perilous path through the forgotten mines, veering into the remnants of a once glorious dwarven realm. There, amidst the echoes of a bygone era, the dwarf king reigned over a kingdom fractured, its splendor lost to the corridors of time. The thought of this distant land and untold tales stirs within your heart the beginnings of another adventure. Hmm. So we finished the quest completed. That's awesome. Look at all the items. Whoa. It's a lot of XP as well. Everybody gained a level. Very Dungeons and Dragons. I like this a lot. Your hair is fabulous. You're fabulous. Yeah. This is rad, dude. Tailstone Town. In town, there are various shops you can visit and spend your gold on. When the party is ready, activate the portal for a new quest. I really like this, man. Like, I really like this. We have so many items to put on now. But this guy, we actually need to do... Concealed Pistol of the Mortician. Can we dual wield it? Oh my god, look at him, dude. He's a necromancer with dual wielded pistols. I mean, how could I not? How could I not have that? Insane to me, you know?
Hmm. I just want more summons. More. So, bolstered soccer hood is definitely going to go on our tank boy. 100%. Because, like, damn. Damn. 25 armor. I don't even know what that does. I don't even know what the c calculation for that is, but he has 50 armor now. Which seems good. Seems good. A blood mask. Gentleman's vest. High reflex. Gentleman's vest. Gentleman's vest of the apprentice. Armor increased by 5%, dude. Dude. This one gives another 4% uh, to my summons HP. Yeah. We have summon health plus 30%. I dig that. Dexterity is a big one. Oh, we got, an, we got a ring that actually adds armor. My dude's got a brass loop now. So now he's all the way up to 57 armor. Oh, I do see any time. I'm glad that helped. Maybe armor helps mitigate physical damage like in Diablo? Um, armor actually could... Uh, in this case, it's definitely doing it physical damage because that says magic armor as well, right? I love how many options there are here. And raptured static. But there's so many options. Uncommon fist weapon. Plus one movement. Can I use a single fist? I can use this single fist. Dude, look at this tank. Who needs a short sword? Alright. I just have a steel knuckle. It gives me plus one movement and plus two might. Can I dual wield short? Like shield? Can we do that? Okay, this is important. Three return damage physical. It's less armor and less magic resist, but it's reflect damage. Hmm. Hmm. I can get my tank a gun. Kind of want to give you a gun. Do you think? Do you think our archer could use a gun? Increase critical hit chance by 4%. Increases critical hit damage by 16%. Huh. Remove one additional hex each turn and no longer take opportunity attacks. That is huge. That's a passive. No longer opportunity attacks. I can just have my archer walk away, dude. That is enormous. That is incredibly, incredibly powerful. I think what I'm going to do, though, is I'm probably going to do the bonus damage. I think bonus damage in the beginning is, like, huge. Two flat physical damage is enormous. That's enormous. So, for our Necromancer... Summon steal 10% more damage. Summon steal an additional 15% more damage and have 15% additional health. I don't see why I wouldn't do a passive. Yeah, I think it's 08 Blind. Blind could be really strong in a clutch moment. It's your first impression of the game? A lot deeper than I expected. Yeah, I'm gonna go with damage. I'm gonna do Necromancer for sure. Necromancer bonus. It's it's incredibly... So, like, I expected the game to be, like, a... Kind of interesting, maybe simple... Like, more simplified version of a... Like, a comp... I, I, I guess... The art style, because it was so simplified, because it's so simplified, kind of like old school RuneScape, I expected kind of more of a simple combat system. And i that's 100% wrong. The combat system is 
crazy deep in this. Like, really, really good. And I think that's fantastic. Stop the old school RuneScape Slender? I refuse. I refuse. But it reminded me of, like, simple gameplay, right? Like, old school RuneScape has pretty simple gameplay. It's got simple models. It all kind of fits. This is ridiculously deep. Like, way more than I thought. And I'm finding myself finding combinations that work really well together in a way that makes the game very compelling to me. Is this like Dungeons & Dragons? Yes. That's very similar. In terms of the gameplay. I think it's fantastic. I'm interested to see kind of how far this goes. I chose to play on hardcore mode, so all my characters are hardcore. So if they die, they die. Right? And that's kind of interesting. For every ally within one hex of you, gain 8% increased damage. Oh. All right. All right. That could get ridiculous. Creates a magic flower that applies two stacks of poison per turn to enemies in range. Okay, that's even more absurd. That's even more absurd. Okay, I'm going to go with Living Armor. Living Armor regenerates... It increases armor and magic armor on the target and regenerates nine health each turn. This is a bonus. Bonus on top of my healer. A double healer kind of a situation? We want that. Like, end of. 100%. All healing you do to others also heals you for 20% of the amount healed. That's ridiculous. Mana cost reduced by 10%. Increases holy power and holy... And healing received by 10%. Dude, when you heal somebody else, you heal yourself. That's like healer bread and butter, dude. First time you receive fatal damage in the battle, you will revive with one health and become immune to all damage for one turn. Oh. Oh, no, I'm not forgetting you can get the other skill. I'm not. I'm focusing on main class skills first. Healing hand. Okay, I'm going with the heal yourself as well. My mage boy. Increases all damage and healing by 8%. Increases fire resistance by 10. Range of all non-melee abilities by 1 hex. All enemies now start the battle with... All enemies now start the battle with 4 stacks of heat? That's 20% magic resistance removed. That's a good one. That's huge. <laughs> That rolls so fast. Yeah, no, that's a big one. I'm keeping that. We're doing that one. Every enemy within one hex of your character gain 5% armor and magic armor. Hmm. This is big. Deal six to nine weapon damage and remove one random beneficial status from the target and lowers the target's resistance by 20% for two turns. Or reduce healing received. I think removing a beneficial status is enormous. That is way bigger than removing healing by 50%. Removing the status effect completely. Yeah, a dispel on a buff? We're taking that. That's too good. All right, let's see. Our druid. I think you're the druid? One sec. Here's our healer. Mana. Mana for days. Mana for days, Tim. Our tank. Uh, I think vitality is the way to go for right now. No, he just become a sponge. Hmm... Why is he not Tim Boblin? Because he's not a Boblin. All the other ones are Boblins. What does Reflex do? Let's look. I think Reflex is your dodge, isn't it? I might be wrong about that. I don't know. He's not green. He's not a Boblin. He's not from the long line of family Boblins. Oh, you mean this? Increases dodge chance for you and your summons. Increases the chance to counterattack on dodging. Increases the opportunity attacks and counterattack them. That seems like what I should be putting points into. That's enormous. 
Yeah. I feel like having the tank have like a good amount of reflex is pretty huge. We're we doing that. Doing it. Dodge chances at 9%. Not very high, but eventually it would be absurd. Okay, what are you? You're a druid. I feel like druid with int makes the most sense right now. Because we went kind of that way. Yeah, I'm going to do int. What's up? Do you still stream game dev? Yes. On Wednesdays, we play video games. On Fridays, I do sponsored streams. The rest of the week is all game dev. In fact, up until... 5 a.m. today was game dev. Oh, man. I have so much stuff to sell. Nice. Oh, wait. I should probably go check more gear. Leather hood. Everybody's got a leather hood. Let's give our healer a better item, I think. I'm going to keep the 17 max mana on that, I think. Better. Hmm. I think four dexterity, two reflex on our main archer seems like the right way to go. Yeah. Blood mask tunic. Yeah. Make our archer into him. I like that. Huge amount of dexterity there. Crit chances at 15%. What are the fortunes? I don't know yet. We don't have any available, so I'm not really sure. Oof. It is cold, man. Unlimited inventory? I'm not sure about that yet. I love, I love that our wizard, or our uh, necromancer is now like a, a guns man, you know? Yeah, it's freezing in here. I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's see. Gentleman's Vest of the Apprentice. It's the same one I'm already wearing. Just bought the full demo. Excited to see what secrets I can find. The full demo? Who made you this one? This feels like a more in-depth Battle Brothers. I don't think I've played that one. 
I think this is fantastic so far. There's so much to explore in this that I'm finding myself just kind of reviewing all my options, which is nice. Oh, cool. These just give a ton of gold. That's a lot. Of, oh, my God. Look at the bear claws, dude. Look at the freaking bear claws. 2,500 gold. Oh, but wait. We can craft. Plus 20 added magic armor. We could have a bolstered guarding. If we got two silver ore. Oh my god. So we could have 25 armor and 25 magic resist on one item. I need it. Well, wait a minute. Why is an iron shield weaker than a wooden shield? How dare you? That is a really strong musket. Look at that. Clever shovel. I feel like our necromancer needs to use that, you know what I mean? That seems like a necromancer item, right? He's using a shovel to dig up the dead. That makes the most sense to me. We can actually put this on our warrior. Let's keep selling stuff. I have so much stuff to sell. I'm going to sell all these bear claws and everything. We need to get gear gear. You know? That's a lot of rainbow fish. Screw it. Frost core. Cool. Alright, I think we've gotten rid of all the junk. Yeah, I think we got rid of all of the junk. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, man. Navy Chapeau. Ooh, look at all the stats on that. Dude. Oh. Man. That's so many stats. Do they have an amulet? No amulet. Alright. Alright, so... I have enough gold to buy everything. I feel like a snub-nosed musket twice would be a good idea. Because we have... Ton of bonus damage. Yeah. Let's go look elsewhere. Ah. Whoa. Okay, so. Lifesteal. Lifesteal is king. Anytime you can get lifesteal. Yeah. Yeah. Lifesteal King. 100% Lifesteal King. Yeah, there's no reason not to. No reason not to. Who are we going to put that on, though? That's the big question. On a boblin? That is a good idea. I 
I think I'm gonna put it on a necro. I think it's the way to do it. Yeah. What's wrong with the link? Link isn't broken. No, that link works. Link is broken for you. Click on it. Works fine. This game, it intrigues me. It's really good. Like, I'm having a blast with this, dude. The stats are so deep. Mana potions and healing potions. We have a bunch of those. I'm not worried about it. Oh, man. I shouldn't have sold those rainbow fish. <laughs> Whoops. Man, I should not have sold those rainbow fish. I should not have done that. I should not have done that. I should not have done that shit. No, they have buyback, but it's so expensive. Where's my fish? Six thousand. Do they not have silver ore? Am I blind? There it is. All right. We're going to do a little bit of crafting. We're going to craft it up. I want to take our bolstered stalker's hood. Guarding prefix. Add 20 magic armor. We have a 100% chance to apply it. Eh? 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 Oh. I was expecting that to apply both. That is unfortunate. Well, damn. Scammed. Yeah, scammed. Yeah, I didn't realize that was a prefix for suffix. Wasn't paying enough attention. Damn. Oh, well. Yeah, now we know. It's fine. Alright, I think we're good for the next adventure. Now that I've summarily ruined my armor. It's fantastic. I guess he's just a very magical tank. You know? Expensive lesson? Ah. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. Bingo. Can we actually do the same quest over? Oh, you can. Ooh. That is good. That is awesome. Okay. I'm happy about that. The start of any adventure is taken not with the feet, but with the heart, your father would say. Now we can just blitz this. We just 100% blitz this. The stream is bad for my wallet. I know. It's because the games are so good. What does this one do? Attackers take fire damage. Wait, they're level two now. Okay. All right. All right. Everything is scaling. Everything is scaling. Nice. Apply that heat. Huh. 
I like that those AoEs don't hurt your allies. That's good to know, actually. Oh, he's running away, is he? The baby. Good. Good. Skeleton. Get blat. That was pretty good. I like that. I love the environmental effects like this. It's actually quite fun. Really enjoy it. My boy. My boy. The dual gunning. Living armor? Venomous skin. Become dangerous. This is good. Regenerate. We're just going to put all the regenerative effects possible on him. And then we're going to start just blapping things. This is good. This is good. Okay, hold up. Yeah! You thought I was down and out? Please. I got charges in me! Get poisoned, nerds. Yeah, get raccooned on. It's a good day. It's a good day. This is good. This is good. We're roasting him. Literally. I actually have a deep fear right now. My dude's gonna die. I didn't realize how hard this was gonna be at level 2. You're on Twitch too? Yeah, I've been streaming on Twitch for 7 years, my dude. Another one. Another one! Actually, let's kill the rogue first. No! 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 Oh god, oh god, he's really hurting, dude. He's really, really hurting. Losing that physical armor is so bad. Oh, it's so bad. Regenerate. And cure him. Alright, alright. This is fine. That one's dead. Good. Eesh. There we go, holy barrel myself. Stand there, maybe get some heals out of it. This is good. Drop some poison. 
All right, we're good. We're good. This has gotten way harder way faster. The depth of this game is going to be enormous and ridiculous. I have a fear. I have a deep, horrific fear. What does Curse do? Applies Curse on striking and when struck. What? And he's dead. There he goes. Death by poison. I knew I should have brought more potions. Gone. 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 Iron heater of frost. Okay, so we've got some we've got some bonuses here. Iron heaters are huge. These are way better iron heaters. We've got one of frost. All right. A blessed locket. Grant skills granted blessed. Okay, hold up. We're getting items that grant skills now. <laughs> no way. Gonna put that on. What is the skill bless? I don't actually know what bless is. I have no idea. Hmm. Bill of Heal on the Light Tree? Ah. Bless all allies within 5 hexes. Increases damage, maximum health, and maximum mana by 10%. That is enormous. That is enormous. For long weeks, the blood mask bandits had scourged the whispering. I didn't realize the game was going to be this hard, dude. This is freaking rad. Like, really, really freaking rad. Dodge ch Yeah, dodge counter damage. That's good. Get some more dodge chance in there, more dodge counter. I'm really surprised at how deep this is so far. Like, really, really surprised. More holy power for you. Yeah, more defense. Okay, I think forest. I think we're good. Common thugs like these, once mere nuisances on the outskirts of civilization, had grown bolder and more rampant. I kind of want to rest after that one, dude. But maybe not. Nah, I'm gonna rest. I want to play this safe. There's some really Highways nasty enemies this time. Which were once bustling with merchants and travelers had now become perilous paths. And that gives this us forest, items we can sell for later. Space of untamed beauty had become a haven for sinister forces. Rainbow fish. Nice. Normal battle. Yeah, the fishing minigame is quite easy to understand as well. I think that's very good. I think enemies are scary. The fights are very good. Bro, what does that say right there? What is... Why is the bear a vampire? Why is the bear a vampire, Chet? Why is it a vampiric bear? Why? Why is the bear a vampire? Oh, we get a reaper shrine. It gives us lifesteal as well. 
All right. You go over there. Probably right about there. Looks good. Good placement to me. All right. Don't have line of sight. Blap that one. Good. Oh god, there's a bear behind us. This is fun. Get him. Poison for all. This is good. Blessed. Nice. This is a good day. Everything here is good so far. Oh god, everything is getting very scary very fast. Oh, I'm bleeding. No. That is a good crit. Nice. Nice. We're healing like crazy right now. This will be fun. This will be fun. There he goes. Fly off into space, nerd. <laughs> Steam Deck compliant? I don't know. Let's actually go check. That's a very good shout. So if it's Steam Deck compliant, it'll actually show it down here. So it's co supported by your Xbox. It is playable on Steam Deck. So they don't have the the full support for it, but it's playable, which means that it, it will work. There may be some things that might be a little bit awkward, right? We really gotta kill this thing. That's becoming a problem very fast. Yeah, heal him. All my dudes look they looks like they're doing well. Don't think there's any problem for anybody yet. If I do this, is it gonna burn my guys? Oh, it's to all targets. So, yes. That's not good. Whoa! Alright. Alright. Get him. All right, let's see. I'm gonna burn that. Wait for the next turn. I'm gonna drop a living armor. 
Bob. Dude, there's so many bears. This is so rough. That one's done. My boy. That one's probably going to cook. That'll be fun. I love being able to charge like that. That is phenomenal. It feels really good. Okay, this is bad. I let the bear into the ring. Bear in the ring is not good. Bear in the ring is bad. We have to kill it. This is not good. Can't get them both. That one's done. John Boblin, you're very close to death. I'm not a fan. I can actually keep John Boblin alive. I'm gonna try, but he's badly, badly injured. We're gonna buff the hell out of him as much as I possibly can. We can't let him die, Chet. Yeah, Boblin, Green Boblin needs healing badly. Healing bots? I might pop a healing bot. I'm trying to not use consumables because mana is rechargeable, but healing bots are not. But the, the pain is getting pretty high. Like, the pain is getting really high with that blood. The bleed is what's problem problematic here. There's another bear right there. Those tiny bears. This is getting good. Okay. Interestingly enough, this this ring says that I'm getting life still increased by 8%. But 
I'm doing eight damage and getting eight percent life steal back. Like eight damage and I'm getting I'm getting eight HP. So I don't know. I don't know how that works. Everybody's surviving. That's that's a plus, you know. Not a plus I expected to have. That bear is done. Now we can all focus on the next one. Survive, John Boblin. Alright, we're getting there. I'm really interested to see what the endgame for this game is. Because there's just so much interactivity in this. Get a coyote. Nice. The bear is only taking six damage from me. Holy moly, dude. Your healing skills are superior? They're pretty good. But all healers run out of mana eventually, dude. All healers run out of mana eventually. That's good. Okay. Hmm. I don't know if I want to charge through him, but I don't think I want to do. I think I'm just going to chop him. I was mostly worried about that. Bear sliding away? Yeah, they physics. They physics ragdoll. It's quite fun. That's a big one. Enchanter's hat. Oh, Tim the Enchanter. There are some who call me Tim. Tim the Enchanter. Oh my god, look at him. Look at him. ...had not just found its way to free wind as of late. In recent times, a palpable shadow of unease and fear had begun to creep across the land, casting a dark pall over a once peaceful realm. Rest time, dude. Kingdoms and towns, once beacons of hospitality and trade, had turned inwards, their gates closed to outsiders. Where banners used to flutter in welcome, now heavy iron and wooden doors stood shut, guarded by wary soldiers. Normal battle. I can't even imagine what the hard battle is going to be like. It's going to be rid ridiculous, to be honest with you. 
Especially with all the enemies, the way that they are. Alright, I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. One moment. I have returned. Nice, I had to use the bathroom, dude. So I think something that's really nice about this, and it's something I kind of missed because I haven't played tactics games in a long time, right? Something that, that I really like is I can just get up and walk away for a minute, right? So if I need to use the bathroom, I just go use the bathroom. You don't have to worry about it. There's no pause. You can just walk away for a moment. It's something that I have missed for a while. <laughs> this is actually the first tactics game I've played in years, which is really nice, frankly. It kind of r reminds me of the fact that how much I like tactics games. Because, like, I grew up on super heavy tactics games. Like, <laughs> it's funny, like Advance Wars, right? Way back in the day. Or things like Final Fantasy Tactics. Those games are amazing. And I haven't played one in a long time, and now I really want to. You ever play BG3? BG3, yeah. BG3, for whatever reason to me, felt like less like a tactics game. And I, I think it's because it wasn't very hard. Does that make sense? BG3 feels more like a story game to me. To me. Yeah, Fire Emblem, yeah. So, like, this feels really good, and it's really deep, but also, it feels like at any moment, if I don't play it correctly, it's gonna kick my ass. <laughs> Which I really like. Like, I, I like that in a tactics game. I like a tactics game to be like, think your, your move through, play it like a chessboard, right? Know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, no, tactics doesn't always mean turn-based. I like a turn-based tactics game. For sure. If you like games like this, Song of Conquest and Steam. I love this, though. 
I went hard on Advanced Wars and Game Boy. Yeah, tactics. If you guys are a fan of tactics games, like, this is starting to hit for me. I hope it does for you too, because I, I actually really enjoy this. How long has this been out? Let me look at this. So the game came out on March 8th. So it came out today. Was this in early access originally? Or did this just come out of nowhere? Been playing this for a month? How, how long was it in early access? Two or three years? That's good. So something you may not realize, when a game comes out of early access on Steam, it actually goes on front page for about 1.5 million impressions. So they got a huge boost of, of people looking at the game. And to be real with you, this is good. Like, I know it's a sponsored stream, but this is actually good. <laughs> I always I always feel kind of bad about it. It's like, when I, when I find a game on a sponsored stream, I, I hope that you guys know that, like, I actually like this one. You know? Like, this is actually quite fun. I want to keep playing it today. So I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, good game, good. 1.5 million impressions. Uh, impressions, so like how many times it'll be up on, on front page. We gotta go fight this dude again. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Oh, dear God. Okay. Okay. This is not great. Okay. We need to knock him out of this. I'm going to use Bash to push him out. Shit. And it's all going wrong, Jet. Alright. Well, it begins. Let's get a bunch of Skella boys in here. Power of bird. Is that two blood mask captains at the same time? Shit. All right. This is going. We're doing it. That's a wizard enemy. Okay, we don't like a wizard enemy. Where'd he go? You know? Fine. Wait. Are you still there? I know you're there. Sneaky, sneaky. I see you. Eat some poison. Nerds. Waha! Ow. That's fine. Hmm. Fireball. Alright, this is good. This is good. Ah. 
I'm gonna light that magician on fire, my dude. Good? This is good. One moment. I'm eating a snack. Just throw them into abyss. I wonder if you could knock them off the edge. Wait a minute, can you knock people off the edge? Oh god. Oh god, there's so many dudes. Oh, this is bad. Shit. Hmm. How did you dodge both hits? Are you kidding me, dude? Living armor yourself? Venomous skin yourself. Poke that dude. End your turn. That's all we can do. You. Shield him. Regeneration. Cure. Alright. This is this is like the full oh god, everything's going to hell combo. Nice. That's good. What? Sir? Sir, I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you to... Damn it. <laughs> this is not good. Go, my beautiful Skelebro. Yes. Okay, you can now come up over here. To like there, and then they can't surround her anymore. That's fine. Bam, that one's down. Well, I can't see them now, can I? Oh? Mana globule. I want that. We most definitely want that. Good. Dispel that. Good. Burn him up. That's good. Also good. Where's our character? Oh, she's stuck. Alright. Oh my god, the stealth, dude. I wonder if I can hit them in stealth. Using poison. I'm pretty sure I just did. Yeah, look. They're poisoned. You can see it. Hell yeah. That's fantastic. Raccoon. Got him. Hey, knocked him out of stealth too. Sick. Oh, he dodged. Ow. That's fine. All my dudes are doing it. Another one. Actually, I think we can just... Yeah, this is, this is good. We like this. Yeah, Fireball's awesome, dude. Being able to use that to get them out of stealth feels very nice. That guy's almost down. Ah, stealth bros. Hmm. 
Yoink. Rude. Rude. Done. Easy. Also easy. I think he's gonna die on this turn. Oh, he's so close to death. Come on. No! He gets 21 HP. <laughs> you on the fence? What are you on the fence about about it? I'm actually kind of interested. <laughs> Got them both. I think it's interesting that poison doesn't remove that. You know? Got a coyote? That's good. Think of a reasonable critique here. Gotten too pessimistic over the past two years. So something you have to remember, right? It is okay for a game to be good even if you've had bad experiences with games in the past. And you shouldn't judge a new game based on the things that older games have done, that other studios have done, that other developers have done, right? And I think that's important always to keep in mind because many people feel the same way. They're like, oh, I got burned by these other games, so I shouldn't trust game devs. I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. Treat each studio, treat each game as an individual, right? It's important. Really important. Because otherwise you just get caught in a mire of like, all game bad, right? Good relationship advice too, yeah it is. That is true. I'm actually really digging this too. Music's got that kind of, like, intensity to it. It's kind of fun. It is repetitive music, but I enjoy it. I wonder if there's different music for different fights going forward. We did do the same mission twice, but I've seen that the missions are repeatable, but incredibly different in terms of difficulty, which I thought was interesting. Bird. Also, this was like the worst possible outcome for these guys. There's so many of them. Although he is running out of mana. So I feel like he's gonna run out of mana eventually. He's gotta. Yeah, this is gonna go great. Because he's, he's applying that spell effect to himself every time. And each time he does that, he's actually wasting mana, which is quite funny. It's gonna be Fire Emblem Tactics Ogre vibes. How curious is this assessment? Yes. It is it is very much in line with those. It's got a very deep combat system, which I think is good. And it's got very deep customization for the characters, which is also huge. Oh come on. I do like these statues. I think this like a lot of combat kind of revolves around the statues. To make sure that you have the proper buffs when fighting those enemies. And I find that to be very good. Very positive, right? 
Ooh. It's hard out here for a bandit. F, dude. Wrecked him. So let's see. We got a battered heater, battered heater, and a toga. That was a pretty anemic amount of loot on that one. These woods held a special place in your heart. It was here where your father first initiated you into the grand world of adventure. You would not allow brigands to ravage your sanctuary, to plunder and defile what is sacred. Okay. Ah, the flower. Ooh! 18-piece lily on that one. All right, so... Dexterity applied. These worlds are randomly generated. So the environments are randomly generated and then kind of puzzle piece together. Which is really interesting, the but they tell a story, boss right? Waits with a calculated patience in a wide clearing. The trees Beautiful. around the perimeter seem Beautiful. to form a natural amphitheater, setting the stage for the imminent confrontation. His eyes, sharp and observant, scan the surroundings, betraying a hint of anticipation beneath his otherwise composed demeanor. It is almost as if he has chosen this spot deliberately, knowing its significance to you. Ah, there you are. I was beginning to wonder if the tales of your valor were just that. Tales, he gloats. Ironheart believed that you'd come for your father's journal, but I wagered that the cries of this forest would draw you out. I really, really like this. I really, really, really like the narration. A lot. What is this? Critical strike chance increased by 20%. Attackers take fire damage. That's great. Time to take this dude out. Blowing everything. Ooh, get him. A raccoon has 39 HP. Hmm. Boom. Everybody buffed. Hit him with fire. Nice. <laughs> We're just gonna end the turn there. It's funny. He's getting hit really hard, but he has 1739 HP. I think last time he had 800. He's weak to cold and weak to lightning, and he has control resistance. Not great. I don't know if my damage is scaling between the two rounds. Yeah, his HP is almost doubled. That's a lot, dude. But our amount of damage hasn't doubled like that. But our survivability has definitely gone up. So I'm going to see how this fully goes. Okay, we've got cleansing debuff. Oh god, no! Oh god, why did the raccoon do that? He turned into a paper bag. Oh. Oh. The horror. The, <laughs> the horror. Oh god, he's gone now. Thank god. I didn't want to look up when he was grim. 
It's a horrific thing to look at that. This is good so far. Dispelling Fracture, good. Dude, he's burning up. That is not great. Good. Let's get a living armor on him. We're going to summon another animal. It's a bird! Yeah! Why can't I walk over there? Buff for everyone! This is good. We're in a really good spot now. Alright. 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 What do we got here? How much HP are they on? 97 each. We don't want to hit that yet. We're going to start blasting through those. Venomous skin on him. Hit this enemy. Get a regen going on him. Oh, I can't. Oh, damn. It's fine. It's fine. Line them both up. My healer is kind of stuck. Oh no. Oh, oh. What? Why? Oh god. Oh god. Oh god, everything's gone wrong. Everything's gone terribly wrong. Okay, so. I've made a mistake. The mistake, however, will lead to their death, not mine. It'll all be fine. For he's abandoned his men. And will now die. Yeah, get wrecked. Look at him go, dude. Okay, okay. Chop him up. We're gonna break that one to remove his buff. Because he had a buff. We're gonna tank using that. Good. No! No, he killed one of my Skelebros, dude. Okay, that's not good. Skeleton friends, we need you. Okay, we need the skeleton friends, because skeleton friends are like... ...massively high damage. Like crazy, crazy high damage. And we really don't want to lose that. All right, Hobboblin, there you go. Another mass Bandit is down.
There we go. Oof. Okay, I think we're good. That one's dead. And that one's dead. Perfect. There's gonna be one more round of enemies. Oh god, my mage can't find him. I'm gonna try and pin him in the wall here. Why can't my... Oh, I can't move. There we go. Bless everybody. Ow. But that's fine. These are really good hits. Really, really good hits. This is Baldur's Gate. No, dude. Yeah, this game is called Stolen Realm. It is a sponsored stream for the day. I am actually having a blast playing this because I love tactics games. Like, I really, really love tactics games. And it is available up in Steam. If you look at the top of the stream, it is pinned there for you. That dude's good. He's on fire deeply now. Alright, we're chopping him up really good now. We're in a good spot. Interesting. Healing over time can crit. So it makes me wonder if damage over time can crit. Can poisons crit? I just don't know. Another skeleton. Another one. That'll heal that guy. Here we go. You called down the thunder now, ask for it? Okay, here we are. We're gonna have some majors now. This is not really in the best of spots. But that archer is just wrecking house. Okay, archer set is good. This is good. Raccoon's killing. Good, good. That's good. I've kind of cramped my healers in here, which I'm a little bit worried about. But I think this is fine. Got him. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay. With this in mind... I think we should probably go after the mage. Just get him out of the way. Because I think I have the throughput now. Oh, almost. Super close. Got him. Hell yeah.
All right, this is good. I don't think I can die here now. I think we're good. I think I win the encounter. And we can go all out on all my statistics. Like, it doesn't matter. We got four skeletons out, dude. Yeah, now this is easy. We got this now. This is a paid promotion? Yes. So, sponsored streams like this are a really cool way to actually try out new games and give you guys a really interesting, like, thing that I otherwise wouldn't know about, right? And then on top of it, a lot of the times you get the developers right there in chat. I don't know if they're here today. If they are, reveal yourselves. Because your game is cool, by the way. Your game is quite neat. And it helps fund the studio. And fund the mods. Which I'm happy about. Put that there. Yeah, the skeletons are super strong, dude. Skeletons are crazy strong. I'm just glad you're going to support it. Thank you. You guys support me more than you could possibly imagine. So thank you very much. Yeah, the game is super chill. And it's really nice because we can just kind of chill. Chill out. You got Bezos? That's okay. One moment. Oh, God. Tomorrow, Zafroth. Tomorrow. Most definitely. Alright. I love how much harder this got between the first and the second runs, because you can't just sit there and grind the same level. And I actually really enjoy that. Oh my god, the archers, dude. If you let a necromancer get all their archers up, like, they're, they're a beast. That's disgusting. That's horrific. Hey, you, you just can't let me do that. You just let me do it. It's just free real estate, man. I'm gonna summon a bird. Now that's gonna eat you. It's free real estate, Jet. Free real estate. Look at him, he missed the bird, dude. It's free real estate, Jet. They just let me have free real estate. I don't think I can tag with anything else. I'm just going to let the pets handle it. Oh, my bird! Something... Honestly, the slow motion flying is one of the funniest parts of this for me. It's just silly and good. Clever Glaive. Oh, my. Look at that. Plus three int. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, we got a lot of bonus stuff. This is ridiculous. Interesting. Gentleman's Vest of Bristles. Four return physical damage. Bronze ring. All right. The remaining blood masks, witnessing the defeat of their leader, succumb yeah, good to their hole. cowardly nature. They scatter, fleeing into the shadows of the forest. Amongst their stolen plunder, you unearth your father's leather-bound journal. Worn with age, it contains a lifetime's worth of knowledge gained from his countless adventures across the realm. Memories flood your mind as you recall your final moments with him. As you stand there, thumbing through the journal, a pit of worry gnaws at your stomach. Your father would not have parted with this, his life's work, willingly, nor in sound mind. If what the bandit said was true, 
then the old mountain king Ironheart might hold clues to your father's disappearance. The journey to Ironheart would be a perilous path through the forgotten mines, veering into the remnants of a once glorious dwarven realm. There, amidst the echoes of a bygone era, the Dwarf King reigned over a kingdom fractured, its splendor lost to the corridors of time. You, I just the realized... This distant land and untold tales stirs within your heart the beginnings of another adventure. I just realized exactly why this feels good to me. I actually, I realized immediately why this feels good to me. It reminds me of Bastion. You have simple stylized graphics. You have a beautiful narration voice. You have kind of otherworldly music going on with it. It's a fantastic combination. It is a good combination. And I was I was trying to place it. I was like, what about this is familiar? And it's that. For a very good thing. Now that you pointed out it, absolutely. That's a very good thing. That's a hard balance to reach. That is not an easy balance to reach. And it sounds great. Yeah. Good game. I vibe with it. Same. Super same. I'm really enjoying this. Just watch the YouTube short of you. Just looking for development category on Twitch. The Stolen Realm category seemed interesting. And who do I find here? Spooky stuff. Well, I'm always here. I exist in all timelines. But yeah, um, on, on Wednesdays I play video games. And then on Fridays we do sponsored streams. So most of the time you'll find me in software and game development on this stream. Like on, on Twitch. And uh, yeah, also the... Uh, the sponsored portion of the stream actually ended 16 minutes ago, but I'm not going to stop playing this until the stream is over at 9. So, just so you guys know, going forward, starting tomorrow, all streams are going to start at midnight and end at noon. I'm doing 12 hours a day every day except for Thursdays, so the schedule has changed by one hour and now has a more solidified time. So yeah, enjoy that. I'm going to be putting that out. Yeah, more, more stream, more time. We're in the timeline where you get gnomed. You will never know me. It will never happen. PST. Yeah, it'll be PST. More Thor. Yep, midnight PST to noon PST. Beta, this is fun. I really enjoy this. Let's go see what is a good upgrade for my dudes. We still got a short bow on you. You need a better weapon. What if we gave... Do you think... So she's got a skill tree. Oh, we can do it with a two-handed gun. Okay, cool. That's what I was wondering. Was like, can we do this with a two-handed gun? And the answer is yes. 14 to 19. Yoink. Hunter with a gun. That's kind of sick. Wait, whoa, hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't forget daylight savings goes forward this weekend. I care not of daylight savings. Whatever time is midnight PST is the time in which I start the stream. I hate, I hate daylight savings. I hate it. I hate it with a passion deep in my bones. Quick Viking Warhammer. Oh. Oh. It's so hard, Mace. Why are you changing it? Because I want to stream for more hours. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm doing it. How does a man stream for more hours? He steals more hours from the night. The night is now mine. I will do whatever I want with it. Concealed pistol of the mortician. Let's get some better guns. I need guns for my guns. Seven of ten. Actually, I feel like you need to have this. Can we just put, like, a big spear on this dude? Are you good with that? Can you just... Big old clever glaive, right? You know? Staff? What about a big mallet? You think a mallet would be a good idea? They're druid. Druids like sticks, right? Eleven to fourteen. Let's do that. The red makes me think that it's like a downgrade. As funny as that is. Oh, why do we put Clever Glaive on you? Who are you? I feel like a musket on you is better. Yeah, let's musket it up, dude.
Why are you naked again? <laughs> Why has he become naked? I don't understand. Why are you always naked? Chat, why is he naked? Nice. This is pretty good so far, man. We got an olive tunic. I don't know if that's any good. Yeah, I think this one's fine on him. That's dramatically better. My dexterity and reflex, that's good. Three dexterity, two intelligence, two reflex. Pants are overrated. Delete them. I refuse. That's good. 10% chance to cast stealth on turn start. Disgusting. Incredible. That's going to go completely out of hand. Insane, even. Ridiculous. Minus one movement. Plus 20% armor. Ooh. Ooh. I don't think I want it on him. That's a... Look at his hat. My god. That's a fancy hat. It's a fancy hat. How can I say no? I can't say no. Oh, does he have a gun with a shield? Don't worry about it. The man's important. Alright. He's important, and he has a fancy gun for his fancy shield. Okay, so here's a big one. Do we need another one of these? That's a pretty big deal. Befouled wooden heater. Iron heater. Iron heater of frost. I mean, it gives cold skill damage increase, but we don't use cold skills, so I guess we could just wear that. I guess. Iron Heater of the Mender is freaking sick, actually. Alright. I think we're good. I think we throw everything else out. Oh, wait. Stalker's to the Mammoth. I might want to hold on to that one. Okay, this is just going to be materials. We need to go to the other one. And I want to see if this guy actually has, like, an amulet. Whoa! Okay, so 5% resist. 2 vitality. 
God, these stats get really deep on this. Straight up int bonus. Two might, two dexterity. And a diamond necklace. All right. I'm in. You. You get a diamond necklace. Because you are my tank. Two might, two dexterity. Two might, two dexterity. Two vitality. Done. Vial of blood. My man heals. Actually, to be real with you, I feel like he should be wearing that vial of blood. Vial of blood on the tank. Boar charm on you. Memory locket of this guy for three int. Two might do dexterity for you. Diamond necklace on the healer, so we don't lose our healer randomly. Vitality. No. Two might two dex. All right, we've done it. We've done it, Chet. It is a good day. In the new stratagem in Helldivers, is it the is it the mech suit, robot mech? Defeat the Sun Queen, defeat Ursa, the Forest Giant. But, uh, I think we should go to defeat Ursa. Yeah, one sec. Today is a good day to die. I will be playing it tomorrow. Yeah. Because I have to, unfortunately, I have to go and handle human things. In which I yell at people and get a house. <laughs> I don't want to yell at people and get a house, but I have to. I don't have a choice. Shaman Aura. Lifesteal Aura. Um... I think that's the play right there. We're gonna go over here. Put you like that. My mana bro. That gun hits so hard. Oh my god. That is dramatically better. Yeah, just trucking face. Stabbed. Huh. 
Cross Nova in the middle of my team. Not the best. Nice. My healer is getting hurt really, really, really bad. And I'm not a big fan of that. Thankfully, I got a lot of healing magic, so we're good. So, this dude has an explosive barrel. If we pop it, he'll take damage from both. Very nice. And he's now chilled. And now we can light that dude on fire. Nice. Double hits. Um, John Boblin, can you please stop dying? Thank you. Executed. Heal him. I think we're good. Nice. Come on, John Boblin. Survive. We're off to a pretty rough start, though. Like, a really, really rough start. Gotta keep John Boblin alive. That was really scary, actually, for a moment there. These are elites. Shit. Oh, it's not good. Well, this is not good. Damn. Oh, damn. Survive! Oh god, he's barely surviving. There we go. Break his shield. Shield broken. Almost lost John Boblin. We must not lose John Boblin, Chet. We ha cannot lose him. He's too good. He's the entire backbone of our whole society. Damn right. Is John Goblin even in the circle? Oh no no no! It's not a healing circle. It was a uh, it was a mana circle. Yeah. So I was trying to like frantically heal him. All right. All right. All right. It was like a frantic healing circle, dude. Interesting. Yeah, the combat music is quite cool. I really enjoy it, actually. Very much so. So these runes are actually a, a run-wide bonus, so all my guys get bonus might for the rest of the run. Which I think is fantastic, to be honest with you. Twenty percent chance to stun the target. Critical hit chance increased by 20%. We're gonna do... It's a fire barrel. We don't want to mess with that, really. Um... I think the stun the target is probably for the best. Legitimately.
You're poisoned, dude. Survive, John Boblin. All right, everything on that guy. I think we're in a really good spot now. One of my dudes just got stunned. Not great. What? Applies dark ritual on death. What? What does that mean? Does he just live forever? <laughs> what does that mean? What does it mean? Returns with one HP? Okay. Stunned. That one is. Oh, he's there for a full turn. Invulnerable for one HP. I see. Crush all of that. I need like an AoE heal, man. Oh god, this is gonna get real bad real quick, isn't it? Alright, there's a stun. This is fine. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Nobody's really hurting right now. Oh, healer's hurting now. Oh! Why did the wolf do this? Why did the wolf do this? Why did the wolf do this? Oh god. Oh god, no. So bad. Yeah. Okay, so we have a serious problem now. And the serious problem is that my healer is losing all of his organs. Rapidly. This is working. It's working. Ooh, my dudes. My dudes are dying. This is fine. Everything's fine. I'm sure things can only go well from here, right? Right? It, it couldn't possibly be all negative and bad in fire, right? I don't have to use a health potion yet. I'm good. I can ignore basic needs for long enough, I think. See, that wolf's dead. Just ignore all the basic needs. The gun is good. This is good. We did it. We did it. We did it. All right, this is good. We've done it. 
I was really worried I wasn't going to survive that, actually. I like it since they're casting range attack. I agree, actually. An event. Okay. What does the event do? You stand in awe of the towering statue of the Conqueror, cast in finely hewn stone and bathed in celestial light. He is known well in the Stolen Realm, a legend whispered about in awe and veneration. His pose is one of undeniable valor his mighty weapon held aloft, as if beckoning the armies of the world to follow in its wake. A figure of myth and history, a man who made all the stolen realm kneel to his glory. Gift of the Conquered, all stats increased by three. Glory of the Conqueror, critical hit chance increased by 4%. I think all stats increased by three is kind of the way, dude. Oh, each character can do it. To Everybody gets all stats. Surrender, but to acknowledge a power greater than oneself. I like that. Another event. Let's go look. I love these events. What is this? An adventuring party stands frozen mid-motion. Their expressions etched with surprise, terror, and desperate determination, as if some cruel force has trapped them in an eternal still tableau of their last moments. There is a haunting quality about the sight, an unnatural stillness that speaks of a deadly magic. The kind of magic that could turn flesh and bone into solid stone. You shiver, a feeling of dread prickling at your senses. This is the fate of those who venture too far who dare to challenge the unknown. What do you think, Chet? Do we investigate? What do we leave? I say we investigate. Slightly petrified. Armor increased by 15, movement speed reduced by 1. Investigate. Your curiosity is a stubborn flame, and it burns brighter in you than fear. You reach out, your hand almost touching the stone-cold cheek of a petrified knight. The moment your fingers brushed against the stone skin, a jolt of energy rushes through you. Your heart skips a beat as the magic seeps into your skin, your flesh tingling with its peculiar sensation. You can feel it, the change. Your skin feels different, hardened, tough as rock, yet still flesh. You feel more resilient, but there is a heaviness to your movements, a rigidity that was foreign to your flexible form. You are slower, less nimble than you were. God, I love that. It's... The narration reminds me of a cross between Bastion and Disco Elysium. The narrator, yeah, yeah, Disco Elysium vibes, exactly. It's brilliant. It's really well done. Fable? It's just, see, the only thing it reminds me of is other good games. Like, the narration is brilliant in this. It's fantastic. Whoever the, vo whoever the voice actor is, well done. Incredibly good job. Another event. Ooh, a chest. Mana potion? Neat. Got it perfectly. I do have a level up. I do. I don't think I can do it mid-run, can I? Oh, I can. Mm. Nature Summoning 2 summons a stag, wolf, or boar to fight for you. Creates a magic blossom that regenerates 7 of 9 health and mana per turn. This affects stacks. Okay. We're doing that. Getting mana back? Mana regeneration is disgusting. That's, that's insane. What is a fortune? All stats increase by 3. Armor increased by 15. Okay. So we got this out of an event, and now it's permanently on the character. And we can swap it in and out at any time. Ooh, that is really cool, actually. 
15 armor right now is huge. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that for every one of these guys. Number one. That's definitely a thing that's happening. You're gonna get mana. You're gonna get mana. Healers healers forever. You're gonna get mana. And you are gonna get probably vitality. Or reflex. We're probably gonna do reflex. And then you are our hunter. Dexterity. And then you are getting might. Alright. What do we get on you? Summon a radiant light applying blind at the target, dealing 15 to 21 holy damage. Decrease damage taken by 10% for you and allies within three hexes. That's huge. Done. AoE healing. Can't beat it. Straight up cannot beat it. Increase the mana cost of abilities by 20%. Increase the power of mana using skills by 40%. Okay. All fire damage applies heat. Heat lasts two additional turns. Oh. Detonate. I can become a bomb. I can just become a bomb. But it only applies to enemies. Continually deal 8 to 11 fire damage to enemies within 3 hexes of your character. Duration infinite. Range self. Just a fire aura. That's pretty sick. Place her in the selected hex. After one turn it detonates, dealing 20, 38 to 52 fire damage to all enemies within one hex. So, exploding rune. Nice. That's a pretty huge hit. And chance the target's weapon to add 4 to 6 fire damage. Interesting. Increase the range of all non-melee abilities. I feel like Lasting Flame is probably the way. Or Fuel for the Flames is probably the way. I'm hyped to the bite of the game when I get home. I did the same thing with your Pacific Drive stream. Yeah, dude. Like, all the games that are coming through for this are just great. And, like, I'm so happy about that. So, shout out to SideQuest Media. The games that are coming through are fantastic. And, uh, I'm happy to play these. These are fan these are just fun, dude. They're really good. Yeah, Rune or Aura. I think the Aura is really nice. I already have the Aura, I think. Yeah, the Aura of Flame. That one's infinite, so I'm just going to get that. That's crazy. Heals 25% of your maximum health and removes all negative statuses. Can be used while disabled. That's a big boy. We like that. For every 1% of health missing, gains 1% increased damage. Increases all stats from shields by 50%. Oh. Oh. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's a biggie. Your basic attack is a 50% chance to strike twice. Double gunshot? Does that mean if I'm dual wielding guns, both of them have a 50% chance? But it can only trigger once per turn. Hmm. Yeah, no, it, it has to be quick hands. There's no way. That's so strong. 50% chance to shoot two. Ridiculous. It said once per turn. So, once per gun, but also once per turn. So, whichever one comes first, right? YouTube Shorts made you wander here? Well, what's up, dude? How's it going? Every enemy that dies heals you for 10% of your maximum health. Sick. 
Removes 20% of the target's max mana and restores 20% of the caster's mana. Insane. Frankly. Summon a skeletal warrior. We like the archers more. Crush the target's soul, dealing 30 to 41 shadow damage, increased by your maximum health. How much does that cost? 24 mana? I kind of want to get mana drain. That's gross, dude. Curse the target, lowering all resistance. Yeah, we're getting mana drain. Mana drain sounds disgusting. Yeah, but you can only have a f maximum of four summons, so it's like, you know. The stone form of the Reaper stands tall and ominous, a stark reminder of the cycle of life and death. Clad in a robe that drapes over its skeletal form, its bony hand clutches a scythe, the ubiquitous symbol of its office. Nice. It is as though the Reaper himself watches, his hooded skull turned slightly, giving the uncanny impression of an eternal gaze. The cold, unfeeling visage seems to regard you with an indifference that is profoundly unsettling. Continue. At the feet of the Reaper, a stone basin is filled with dark, congealing blood, an offering from those desperate to stave off their own mortality. Surrounding the basin, candles flicker like distant stars against the pitch-black cloak of the Reaper, casting dancing shadows upon the stone. The air hangs heavy with the scent of wax and iron. So if I steal it... Versus losing 30% of my max HP. I'm gonna steal it. Life steal by 6%, reduce max life by 15%? That's freaking awesome. Yeah, no, that's insane. Everybody gets life steal? Yeah, life steal for everybody. A thirst so deep it blurs the lines Till we're but marionettes of our own designs. Love that. Yeah, this is another fortune. So we go look at fortunes now. Instead of getting the armor, I could just re reduce everybody's max HP, but now everybody has lifesteal. Like, that's so insane. Everyone just has 6% lifesteal. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, no mechs dropped. I'm gonna be playing it tomorrow. Let's get a rest in. Yeah. I was- I was hurting for HP. I don't know how much the 6% is. It might be a maximum of HP? Rainbow Fish. Because before it was a pretty large amount of HP. Hmm. One second. Light healing potion, nice. What is that, dude? Like an absurd rune bear? Nice. I'm afraid of that, dude. Hi, uh, you're spooky. Oh, it's Ursa the boss. Ah, uh, shit. What is this one? Attackers take fire damage versus life steal increased by 8%. It's a Reaper statue. Okay, hold up. Let's move this here. What's this dude got on him? Can I dispel it? I cannot. This is fine. End your turn. You. Make a skeleton. I love skeleton. And drain that thing's mana. Yoink. And cast this. We love that. You. Make the god bloom. 
Or good bloom. Whatever it is. And a bird. We love birds. And put some living armor on my boy. And then make him have some venom skin. We love venom skin. How much health does this go? Oh my god, that's gonna be insane. We love this. Hi, Tim. I need you to do something for me. I need you to become horrifying. Thank you. Now light this man on fire. And now really light him on fire. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. Now end the turn. Let's just get a... Let's get a normal heal off over there. We want everybody to be basically full. Heal up Robin. There we go. Nice. Double hit. Oh, that double hit's going to be so strong, dude. It's going to be so disgusting. Oh my god, look how much damage you took. The flame shrine reflect is enormous. This boss is just going to die. He took like 160 damage per hit. <laughs> Use the shrines, Chad. Always use the shrines. I probably should have moved you back. That was a foolish mistake. This is fine. Wom, 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 wom. Boom! We love it. We love it. Flames of summer burn through me. Well, the boss almost blew himself up there, which was hilarious. We love to see that, don't we? Yeah. Good gaming, sir. Later on. See you around, bud. I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to run away. Oh, we're good. Everything is good. We're gonna end that. Let's do one of these. And one of those. And one of these. And we'll do that. So that our, our lad no longer takes a shitload of damage. Please survive. This is good. Winter is your end. I bet he dies. <laughs> That's so funny. What a death, dude. Okay, so... That did a percentage of his max HP every time he hit something. That was hilarious. Use- yeah, yeah. 100% just use the shrines. The shrines are just overpowered and fun. Oh, look at that ring. That's for a tank. That's for a tank. Oh my god. I got all those fortunes as well. So, let's go find our tanky boy. There we go. We're going to get rid of these. Warding amulet. There's another 9... No, 13 armor and magic armor and vitality. And then another one. And now that's 13 as well. I wonder why it's 13. Oh. Did that update when I... That was 9 and 9 and now it's up... Meh. Oh, it must be the passive, yeah. Alright. Cool with me. That dude just got tanky as hell, look at that. Sick. Sick. I'm gonna make it so that our... Hunter heals herself, I think. I think that's the way to do this. Elder Branch. Nice. Yeah. It's just more damage. You know? Rockbreaker of the Mortician, though. 
He's already using a, a two-hander. Let's give him another two-hander. But this time it makes his dude stronger, right? Actually, I, I feel like giving him a, a staff. A staff makes the most sense for this guy. That int staff is just more interesting. What we really want is we want this on our healer. There we go. Because that has 7% holy power. Just makes more sense. Just makes a lot more sense. Oh my god. Alright. 1813, 26-20. So we want to get the one that reflects damage. There we go. That's a good good use. Dude, he's just getting broken now. He's becoming God. Look at all of his statistics. I'm loving it. I really like how, how this is going, actually. I think the direction of this game is very, very cool. This is multiplayer too? Yes, you can play up to six people, which is sick. That being said, hard stop time. I have to go and do house stuff. However, this game is phenomenal, and I'm going to link this in chat. We do have a link for this. If you want to get it, go use this link. Do it. Do this link. Wait, is that... No, that's the wrong link, damn it. One moment. There we go. Now it's working. Don't click on that. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, definitely check this out. The game is cool. Stolen Realm is actually really, really fun. I super enjoyed this, and I can see that the system is going to get insanely deep as we go forward with the game. Insanely deep. Um, I didn't expect it to be that deep. The combat system is incredibly deep. And the thing that I really like is this. Those fortunes we unlocked, which we unlocked three fortunes, right? You can have up to four of them as your characters get stronger. That's fantastic. Yeah, it'll be access denied for that. So this is good. I'm I'm really excited for this. Of like how deep this can possibly go. So yeah. Let's go find somebody to raid. I'm gonna see who's on right now. Ooh. Ooh. You know what? I know who we're going to raid today. It's somebody we haven't been able to raid before, actually. Actually, there's two things we could do. Let me think about this. Someone we've never raided before? Or someone we have? Choose. New? Or not? New or not? New or not? Someone new. All right. We're going to raid somebody I've been watching for a long time. How long have I been following this guy? Ages. He's currently playing Helldivers 2, which I like the game. We're going to be raiding King Gathalion. King Gathalion, who's a cool dude. Do not spoil the raid. The man doesn't know it's on its way. Do not spoil the raid. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Seriously. He's very fun. He's very entertaining. I used to watch him, and then he switched platforms, and then he switched back to Twitch. So I'm glad to see him back. Yeah. He's a good dude. He's a really good dude. I don't think he knows... I don't, I don't think he even knows that I watch him. And I have for many years. <laughs> so... I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you all later. Bye, everybody. Also, I wanted to let you know, and uh, it's before I go. Wolf is wolf smells. It's true. It's true. One of the moderators. Unfortunate, right? Deeply unfortunate. Stinky. Truly stinky. And by wolf is wolf, I mean Zaphiroth. Because they're the same person. They're exactly the same. It's true. Both smelly. Both smelly. Unfortunate. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs>